That's it. Let's go. I can't see anyone. How's it going? Song name, it's a banger. Glad you like it, man. The song is called Ghost. And you can find it under my name on Spotify. There's also a link in the YouTube description. <laughs> I have a Sim5 album, and there's three more albums coming actually soon. This is one of them as well. Back to Pen RF. I was actually thinking about just respecting now. But I think I'm gonna try the lower tiers a little bit. I'm gonna do like one tier one, two, three, four, etc. It's gonna like see how it feels with the patch. And um, yeah, honestly, I think I'm kind of over twisting blades pushing. Honestly, <laughs> it turns out that apparently pen shot is actually better. But apparently there's a bug when you lag out the game that you somehow kill stuff faster or some shit. I'm not sure. Like Dark Side didn't really explain to me, but he was trying some stuff after watching that Chinese clear on tier 17. So we're gonna check that out. <clears throat> Where do you get the songs from? Yeah, this music that is playing right now, as I just explained, this is... Uh, I collaborated with Low Wave Records. They uh, created some music 
for me. Which you hear right now. Which is copyright free, you can use it. Otherwise, I mean, I just, you know, I find music and put it in my playlist, so this is how, how it works. <laughs> I just, like, I did it on YouTube usually, but I'm converting to Spotify. I have it on both, though. I have my playlist on both platforms right now. Okay, let's do like a, a one, a two, a three, etc. I'm gonna craft like one of each. And see how the ramp up is. So that's what I wanna do right now. Oh shit. All these random sigil I've and grinded here last time. Is the planner updated? Um I only did some slight tweaks. But I will do that after stream. I wanted to do it last night actually, but I didn't really get around to it. And if I, after the planner right now, the guide will be out of sync basically. So I'm gonna do that um, after stream. Okay, uh, let's probably like a. We can put a, a combat fortune, I guess. Let's see, since they nerfed the monster damage now. Okay, we got this, we got this, we got Ranger. Okay. We can do this stuff. That looks kind of sus. <laughs> He's okay. He's happy. I see a new new patch, fake news. Ah, the, the patch was uh, like yesterday already sometime. like. 18 hours ago or something like that. I just haven't played before until then. Or since then. 15 hour XP from tier 3, not enough or buff. Yeah, the buff is pretty significant though. Like once you go higher tiers, it goes up really fast. So I think they kind of like want you to, you know, not necessarily push all the time, but kind of like get close to your push tier and then just grind that out. Instead of doing the low tiers, which I definitely think is an improvement. I felt like farming like tier 3s or whatever was really boring. And now, for example, if I would farm like tier 9s or tier 10s, I think it would feel a lot more exciting. But yeah, it only really works out for the better builds, I think, you know. Like if you play like a druid or, I don't know, how consistent Necros is. I know Necros played like a tier 14 at least, but can you consistently do that? <coughs> Apparently every 5 tiers there's a more significant jump in monster HP. Yeah, I can believe that. I also felt that pre patch already. Tier 10 was kind of like a, a ramp up. And maybe it's similar for tier 15. But honestly, I, I went to I went from 14 to 15 and I, I almost did a 15. Um, on not really the optimal map. So it was still fine. But it could definitely be that like every 5 tiers there's a bit of a jump. Watching someone do a T5, just ran through it. Yeah, I mean, like T5 is probably like, you know, not even T100 Nightmare Dungeon. So he's gonna like blast through it. Moins Storm and Ivo. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Uh, 50 subs of a die, by the way. And 25 members to YouTube. So you go back to those. Yeah, it's starting tier 1. Did I did open them one already? No. Okay. We have a common portion, I think, of the setup. Yes. Yes. Round 4, 9, 14. The highest free jump tier you can do. Yeah, that makes sense. I was also expecting that, you know, at least tier 9 would be something to farm. But I actually like to see that uh, sheet. Can you link it? If you actually have some data on that, it would be cool. Yeah, okay, this seems very easy for sure. Could even do damage to me? I wonder. Let's see the Bloodseekers at the end, if they do like any damage. 
Tier 10 was much slower. I'm gonna try that as well, like tier 9 versus tier 10. And if, if there's like no significant ramp up in Griffix speed in the same, ma uh, same way, then I guess it would definitely be worth it to grind out like, you know, the, the pre-5 increments basically. So I guess it also means that tier 25 is going to be like, you know, extra tough, right, compared to like tier 24, for example, because there's like the next breakpoint of like a 5 increment. So we're probably not going to see like a legit 25 clear. Like if people are already kind of like hard stuck on like uh, tier 20, and the glyph is just not enough to like really make up for that, since no one is going to hit that level of the glyph. Did anyone try to poison it? Was considered OP of the glyph? Yeah, I know some people have been playing it. I think Boiler and Moxie and stuff. And apparently some people have cleared like relatively high. I think the main issue that it has is that you get through the run really easily, but then the Bloodseekers just uh, destroy you. And if you don't have a protection shrine for the Bloodseekers, you have zero chance. Apparently. Even with the damage nerfs. And even the you know, like on a high tiers, I guess the protection shrine can be kind of close to be enough, so... So yeah, while it does have the damage and it's just like blast everything, even before you level the glyph a lot, it just doesn't seem like it's like consistent. You doubt your rogue can clear 325? Yeah, that's what I just explained. I mean, first of all, you're not playing a barb, so you're definitely not going to clear 25. But even barbs would not clear 25, it seems. You know. Like the glyph... Let's say someone actually ranks up the glyph to 50. It gives you something like double damage compared to having like a one glyph or something, maybe. So yeah, that's like maybe four tiers or something. And uh, when Rob cleared, uh, what did they clear 19 or 20? Yeah, he was already like, you know, glyph level 20 or something. Actually, I think I have this. Okay, here, this is like a sheet I found. So I'm not sure who posted this, but someone did it on the... On the Discord. So this is like basically the damage gain per glyph level. So at glyph level 50 you have to jump because you have increased radius. But yeah, you start at roughly times 1.8 multiplier or something. And then once you reach level 50, it's gonna be like a times 3 multiplier. So it's like a gain of like, you know, from rank 1 to rank 50, you're talking about like maybe a 2 tiers gain or something like that. Because it's like 90% HP per tier roughly, it seems. So yeah, even if Rob cleared a 20 with a rank 1 glyph, once he reaches level 50, which I guess he might, he's gonna go like maybe to 22. And then he's still 3 tiers away, with a potential extra jump at 25 in terms of monster HP. So, TLDR is not happening. Turn down the music. Oh yeah, actually I just had a Spotify for the intro. We're gonna go to this now. It's a bit loud, I guess. But yeah, again, if you are looking for the music, exclamation mark Spotify or on YouTube, it's on the description. I guess it was a bit loud. Let's do this. You can't beat T1. Do you have a 100 character? Or what build are you playing? Let's do a 2. Actually, let's see what the monster level is like in tier 2 and tier 3, etc. How it ramps up. I guess it should be something like plus 1 or even plus 2 monster levels per tier. Is that the elites at level 25 have over 1 trillion HP? That seems a bit excessive, are you sure? Ah, uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, let's say, let's say you can do like a billion DPS, which is relatively high. Billion DPS is a lot, that's very high. Maybe that's like some extra ramp up, honestly. A trillion, a trillion life for elites? That seems like way too high compared to like the regular scaling. Okay, this is plus two monster level, by the way. 
So yeah, it does get plus two, it seems. Like, I'm not sure how much HP, like, you know, for example, the tier 15 leads have that I was fighting. But I don't think this was anywhere close to, like, you know, 100 billion or something, I guess. Because I would never kill that. So, if it if the monster HP doubles every four tiers, it would only, like, double two and a half more times. So, let's say, let's say like, a times 10, like, a tier 25 is, like, roughly times 10 of tier 15. So yeah, there seems to be like some other stuff going on. Maybe they have like some extra weird scaling, you know, after some point. Rob couldn't kill regular trash monsters. <laughs> yeah, it could be that tier 25 is just like extra hard, so that basically no one beats it. Maybe they did that actually. It's kind of interesting because they made an achievement for it, right? There is an achievement for beating a tier 25. But there's no reward for that achievement. I think that achievement is like a tier 1 and a tier 20 that is like a title reward. So if you beat a 20, then you get a title. But yeah, I mean, there's an achievement for 25, but I mean, this is literally impossible, right? Without exploits. This is a tier 2 right now. I'm doing like tier, tier by tier right now just so I kind of get a feel. Seems like the blood seekers are way more chill. You can also like really grind this out for like good gear actually. Like if you grind these lower tiers in like 2 3 minutes, you get really good gear actually. Although not as much as Nightmare Dungeons, I guess Nightmare Dungeons might still be better for a gear, but you get generally a bit more higher loot here, I guess. Nightmare Dungeons can give you like down to like 8... 860 loot or something, or 870 or so is like the minimum, I think, in Nightmare Dungeons T100. And here we get 900 plus only. So loot is better, but fewer. MZ relies heavily on armor and resistances. Yeah, I mean, resistances should be capped once you hit like level 70 or 80 maximum. And then armor basically should also be capped at that level and then stay capped, for, you know, forever more, basically. So in this case, yeah, 13.6, 13.7k is what you're aiming for, far but far. Which is exactly what I have right now. Can move the can move the current here display right now while we're doing this here. What vampire replaced meta? Uh, a curse touch. You need one of the two. You need to have the vampire curse for the flowing mains. I just don't really like playing with Metamorphosis on this build, to be honest. It's like very clunky, I feel. But I wanted to experiment a bit more. So I think before we respect to Penshot again, I will... Um, I will try Metamorphosis one more time. And then I know if the Bloodseekers will be great. Yeah, my suggestion for Bloodseekers would be to kind of like mega nerf the damage, let's say like even minus 50% or something. But you always make them leech together. I think that would be uh, way more interesting, you know? So you can fight all three at once instead of doing this like a 1v1 strat. And I think that would be way more fun. And there's also like some buggy stuff going on, like teleport from Bloodseekers, just like insta one shots here, no matter what, it seems. So there seems to be like some really good bugs at that, for example. And potentially other abilities as well. I see people like getting their only one shot. Still doing two minutes. Two and a half. Let's see if that stock teleports on me. Come on, shots me.
Leave me forget items on ASD, you have to go elsewhere because no real crystals. Yeah, I mean, if you found quite little, I guess that can be an issue. But I can still get the yellows and salvage them here, so. Depends on how much I reroll, I guess. Okay, let's do it four. Last night, I'm pretty sure I got teleported on and one tapped. Yeah, it puts a whole new meaning to Teller Stomp in this game. <laughs> Think the Polarized Druid can do AOZ? Uh, yeah, Boydor told me that uh, Polarized caps out somewhere at like tier 8, tier 9 or so. It seems like apparently at tier 10 is like a bit of a, bit of a significant jump. So without like insane RNG, that will probably be kind of it. So for now we put like a bunch of the Druid builds down to C tier, I actually made like an update on the tier list on Max Roll. Gonna go over that in the video like tonight. I stuck at 9 of Pulf. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you get like Omega RNG with the shrines and stuff, I guess you can probably go a bit higher, but yeah. And or maybe if uh, Varion, you could do some shenanigans, you know, to get like Colony Shrine or something and just cheese your way up a little bit. But I mean, at tier 10, it's kind of like the point where the shrines start falling off really hard. So, like tier 10 plus, you know, like the only shrine that kind of does something is like Blast Wave at that point. After, like, at least when I do my pushes, like Condit is actually a downgrade for me. Blast Wave is still an upgrade because I can still do DPS and get the extra damage from the Blast Wave. And protection can be really nice. And all the other shrines are just kind of worthless. Because um, the shrines scale with monster level, and the monster level barely goes up, basically. So the shrines don't really do more damage on the higher tiers. Okay, this is a tier 4, I believe. 150 monsters. So it's like the equivalent of like a Nightmare Dungeon 96 right now, I guess. You can really rush for this stuff here, I don't know what it is. That's for sure. You see here, the artillery shrine basically just decimated the entire pack here. But if this was like a tier 15, the artillery shrine would do nothing to them. Greed shrine, best shrine. You can get greed in there, right? Do you actually do you actually drop gold when you have a greed shrine in Avatar? Does it drop gold? Yes. <laughs> That's kinda cool. You get 50 shock cookies that I rip. Sure, I can do 50 shock cookies instead of 50 subs. We have tips for the rush level for beginners. You're stuck in some levels. Well, kill monsters, you get XP. But I mean, I'm not sure what exactly like, I can tell you. Do the seasonal quest lines, so you turn like, all your powers. Then farm domain tunnels or season theme until level 45 or so. Then go Nightmare and find Nightmare Dungeons. And that's the end of the story. Okay, now we have level 154 monsters, and this is tier 5. Also, it's laggy as fuck. I have 200 MS, man. What the fuck? Yo. Are the servers laggy right now, guys? What's going on? Oh my god, it's Omega laggy. Look at this shit. Is this stream lagging? Nope. It's a service. Look at this shit, man. 
What is going on? See, I'm running a mess. I popped a, like a hit like man. I don't want a Milok right now or something. It seems like Omega scuffs right now. <laughs> the blast time explosion. Very good. But you can definitely farm higher now, way more easily, and you get more equipping speed for it, so that's kind of nice. Good. I think I actually didn't proc. I just wasted a scroll. <laughs> Let me see. We didn't proc. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, let's finish this and relock. Hey, you have two scrolls. I found a oh yeah, I found a scroll somewhere. While doing whispers. F, dude. Paper wasting. Roll the lag affliction. <laughs> yeah, apparently, like, are afflictions actually a thing? Is this confirmed that afflictions actually exist, by the way? Because I've not seen a single affliction, like, in action. And even on, like, tier 15 sigils, it says zero afflictions. Oh, I wanted to actually check how much damage the crossbow does. Is there another crossbow somewhere? Yeah. Let's see how much he does. Where is he? This guy is missing me, man. I knocked down a crossbow. Okay, that's like a third of my life. Oh my god, dude. What is going on? With these fucking servers. Okay, fuck it. We're just gonna restart this T5. Oh, he's gonna go T6. I'm not gonna craft another T5. Look at this. <laughs> does Blast Save scare if banished? I'm pretty sure it does. Because for me, Blast Save doesn't do that much, but I think for like the barbs, it's, it's actually still pumping after like tier 15 plus. Wait, I have 100 MS now. Wait. 80 MS. Now it's back to normal. It's just an instance? It's like the instance server broken right now or something? Let me try this again when I go in. Uh, my portal disappeared because I walked out, dude. You got one shot of T in T2 with 16k health. F, I mean, to... it wasn't a hardcore, what? Yeah, I think my instance is buggy, look. It's like Omega laggy. Okay, it's just me luck, I guess. This is a BlizzCon mount I'm using. F, pots. Hello, Joao. Did I manage to reach the final floor? Nope. And neither will anyone else, I think. I thank you. Okay. Please don't waste another sigil. Thank you. Can probably see death and see first. So the same build I post on Maxo. Yeah, I did some slight tweaks, but otherwise, yes. Hey, Captain J. When we log in, more PoE. I might actually do more PoE. It was pretty fun yesterday. But uh, that will be late. I mean, we're starting quite early today with the stream. So I'm probably gonna go ham here today, like, you know, try to patch, try to push a bit, whatever. And, uh,. Okay, let's pop another X there and hopefully don't lose the sigil. 
Seems like the lag is fine again. Yeah, the thing is that uh, when I made my Twisting Blade setup originally, I figured it would be way harder to survive and it would be like way more slow pace. But it turns out that something like Shadow Step is actually really useful even in a push because you can just like skip packs that are really bad and you know get through the map faster and you know that helps you out a lot. And you can also like activate your metamorphosis or like you know, the, your tibbles will. Stuff like that. Actually, I'm very excited to play Rogue Builds next season, when we're not forced into corn points or Tibbles Will anymore. But something like Tibbles Will can still be really useful, even for like, you know, inner side or preparation builds. Especially preparation, I think it's gonna be really interesting if you like, go for like, go ham on like Shadow Step. Oh, these monsters are like level 155 already now. Interesting. And this is only a tier 6. It's already back to normal on the monster level. Really? Really, yeah. So the monster level ramped up really fast in the early tiers. So if you're not armor capped, you're gonna really notice that. Going like tier by tier. And I can also notice like they do a lot more damage already. Kind of getting back to normal it feels. Did Selig Emmy get nerfed? No, not yet. Season 3 will get nerfed. But people are not really using it anymore, and they also didn't really expect it would really be the, the way to go. Like these immortal builds, I, I think they just give up too much in terms of damage to really go as high as they could. Okay, I'm really excited to try pushing with um, Combinant Fortune Shrine actually on TB. For the more poison procs, that could be kind of interesting. Oh, we're actually getting a gift of 10 now. It was great. Look at that. Do I feel like my child gets stuck after Shadow Step? Uh, not really. You should have removed the delay of the Bloodseeker. Yeah, just had a spawn you instantaneously and you insta die instead of. Dying four seconds later. That'll be cool. You get it all the time. I'm not sure what is causing this exactly. I feel like sometimes I have some weird control issues with my character, but I don't think this has to do with the shadow step. This guy pumping me. It's just like a normal trash monster. It's boom, 50% of my life. Feels good. These guys are actually pumping me, man. Vampires. Four legs every day. I just had like some legs. I had to re restart and lo lose my potions. Was kind of sad because I used the uh, competent fortune potion, the lucky hit elixir. That's a pretty juicy one. Actually, next week we're gonna get the 15% life, 15% lucky hit elixirs. This, those are gonna be insane for our tour, at least for some builds that we are in lucky hits, like this one. For TB, this is actually ridiculously good, this elixir. 15% lucky hit, 15% life. So you definitely wanna stock up on that one. 
Okay, we're taking a lot of damage already now. Close damage or vulnerable. And that depends on the builds, but for many builds, definitely close damage. Close damage has higher values as well, I think, than vulnerable anyway. And vulnerable is not necessarily always up. But I mean, for some builds that are not always in close range, uh, vulnerable wins, I guess. Like, for example, on pen shot, I would definitely go vulnerable over close because um, I make everything vulnerable very easily with a cursed touch and prey on the weak. So, like, one shot and everything is vulnerable forever, basically. Humans, please. Oh. Let's see, tier 6. I'm not sure if I want to, like, want to free them. Ah, they're getting quite tanky now. Looks like that Shad Misery either was out of range or it doesn't go around corners. Kind of interesting. Oh, level 10. Hopping. Hey, Felipe. I can't understand Portuguese, unfortunately. Okay, I can I can definitely see like this was a tier seven right now, and we still have two more tiers that are nerfed so far. But it definitely feels kind of tough already at this point. Like I was kind of like in danger here already, trying to speedrun this. So like tier five, six was still kind of comfortable, but now it's definitely getting rough again. I guess realistically, something tier nine for XP would probably be the way. This was a really shitty map to be fair. Tier 1 to 9 is a lot easier. Yeah, it is. I mean, Tier 9 probably just a bit, you know, like it kind of like ramps up back to normal basically at Tier 10. But Tier 10 apparently also has some extra jump in difficulty that was already there. How's the update? Yeah, the first few tiers are super easy. Like 1 to 4, I'd say, are like really easy. So you can at least, you know, grind it out a little bit on the lower tiers. I think, you know, few people are immediately gonna have many issues there. But yeah, after that, uh, the ramp up is hard in the first 10 tiers for sure. You can notice. P9 and 10 is night and day. Yeah, let's see. This is a 8 we're doing now. So after this, we're going to do a 9 and then we go to 10 and then we'll see the difference. Definitely yeah, kind of tough here, man. Fucking lunatics everywhere. At least I can see them. Compared to pen shots, I can see them here. On pen shot, it's so yikes to play this monster type, man. Because I don't have CC against those lunatics. They just explode. How much do these spiders give? Not worth it. Killing all these little spiders? Probably not. Sorry, Simic. How far can you make it without Uber Enix? Ah, uh, the same, minus one here or so, I'd say. 
Google Nix are not that impactful. Like, I'm not even running my Shako, you know? I've not even played the Shako so far. I've tried a little bit. And now that they nerfed the monster damage, I might actually put a Shako on like Penshot. Let's see how far I can go. I mean, this might be a bit different, like, you know, if you were like a Doombringer and a Grandfather and a Shako on a Barb and a Metal's Heart. I mean, this is four Ugo Unix you can potentially use in the same build. Uh, actually, yeah, I guess you can. So, obviously that can make a bit more of a difference than like in my case, like, you know, I'm running like the Doombringer and that's it. And Doombringer is very helpful for like defense on a rogue, because rogue is just like squishy in general. So, but it doesn't mean like, it actually decreases my damage. So potentially if I get a good, really good run, um, you know, I would not need the Doombringer to survive basically. And I just have like literally a damage downgrade from running a Doombringer. I guess, realistically, Doombringer is an upgrade on, on, under most scenarios because of how much more offensively I can play. But there are definitely cases where I get like a really easy run and I would not have any issues. I already see that the runs are slowing down, but it's a tier 8 already, so I'm getting a lot more XP than... Like, we were doing like 2.5 minutes, like, you know, tier 4 or something. And now we're doing like 4.5 minutes, like tier 8. Definitely worth it, I think the glyph XP is like significantly higher. I didn't actually check how much glyph XP I got exactly. Do I want to one in freedom? This might be a bit tough. Okay. Wah! Seriously, man. Ah. Wait, did he die? Wait, how did he die? Wait a minute. He was poisoned up down to like maybe 20% of his life. How did he die? The fuck? Did he have so much poison on him? I didn't see it. Maybe. That's strange. Has, uh, by, the, by the way, by chance, has anyone tried chance to execute non elites on these guys? I mean, these guys are not considered undead. Maybe they're not considered elites either. <laughs> we kind of hilarious. Where can I get a Paragon board for Ball Lightning? The one on Maxwell doesn't have AOZ Glyph. Yeah, it's only in the AOZ variant. So I'll go to the variants and the progression. There's uh, Paragon bots. We didn't put it like in every single variant because, you know, at this point when you do AOZ, I guess he's gonna have the AOZ build. And you're not gonna play like, you know, the other builds basically anymore. Or at least, you know, you don't really change your Paragons, I guess. A friend of mine got Andaria in a nightmare dungeon. Holy shit. For real? I wanna see a screenshot. It's the first Uber Unique I've heard of that didn't drop from Duriel this season. <laughs> if Duriel. Significant XP buff enough to make some max level glyph now? No, no one's gonna get a max level glyph. But um, at least a 50 glyph is thinkable. Did hear that Coralos is barbed due to domination bug? Yeah, it happens to a lot of people. Domination and also fortify in general apparently just kills you on hardcore. Okay, tier 9, let's see guys. Level 50 is 82 hours if you run plus 10 of 8 minutes per run. 82, man. I mean... Quite a grind. It's kind of like the uber unique grind, I guess. 82 hours. It's kind of similar to like grinding a Shako and stuff, I guess. In like a 4-man rotation. 
Like in my case, how many hours have I spent on Duriel? Probably roughly like 100 hours-ish. Yeah, I guess so, right? It's like one Duriel, roughly one hour. Three Helltide buff. I found like almost, almost everything three Helltide buff. So let's say one Duriel, one hour, times four. So four Duriels in one hour. I found 400 Duriels. Yeah, so I spent roughly 100 hours on Duriel basically to get 400 runs to get my Uber Nix. So I could spend like another 100 hours to get my Glyph to 50. So it's not that crazy, but you know, it's like basically an entire week of like all day, every day grind. And that's just one character. At least the Uber Nix I can use on any character. So, blah, blah. That's probably what I think about it. God, many second cold spiders. Can you get grandpa of a different class? Uh, only a necro and bark. Uh, stuff gets slower now. But I mean, I can probably do like, at the very least like T8, what did I just do a T8? Like four and a half minutes or so. So I could probably farm more than, what is that, eight minute per run, tier 10, that someone just said. So maybe I could do even like a 50 hour or 60 hour, like, you know, level 50 glyph. Probably pretty big. We'll see, maybe I'll do it, maybe not. Maybe I'm not really motivated. But I think I'm gonna do this with Pen Shot, honestly, and not with this build. And then there's still the chance that it's just like ripped to some random bullshit, you know, it's hardcore, so who knows. Protection shine was really nice <laughs> in this moment. <laughs> Gotta say, I really love not playing Metamorphosis on this build because I have rapid gambits actually working. And I can just evade all the time. I have like extra evade charges and it just resets all the time as well because of the dazing. Feels good, man. You can just evade any way you want. And this build is also pretty fun, like when you're actually farming and not pushing, this build is way more fun. It doesn't feel that fun in pushing, I think. But like even on this pace, it feels kind of cool, like jumping around, doing your thing. Oh my god. You're gonna die. But you see these runs are already slowing down here, this is a T9. And then at T10 we're gonna see like a significant jump, I think. Let's see. It's probably gonna be like six minute run here. Like four and a half minutes previously. And it's not like the worst monster type here. It's kind of dangerous with the cold spires right now, but since I'm doing it fast, it's not too bad. Although funny enough, I'm almost doing it at the same pace, I would have to do it on like a push. Like usually you want to have like, let's say, four minutes for the Bloodseekers on a push. At least for my builds. I guess other builds might have more single target damage or so. Might be able to like fight all Bloodseekers at once. Stuck. Okay, the Latsy guys don't really seem that dangerous anymore though. I can probably do like 1v2 even on like higher tiers, let's see. That would be pretty helpful. 
We're gonna do at least two of them at once and not kite so much. I can save already like a minute or so on a push. Yeah. Okay, what is that? Obelisks, man, pumping. Make sure you don't send in a teleport because teleport is one shots you, no matter what. Yo, summary. Thanks, Thomas. Can I raid Luciana's TB build? I mean, it's effectively like 95% uh, this build, so good job, Lucky Luciano. Okay, so is he done? Let's reset the potions though. How come I don't use metamorphosis? Yeah, I will experiment a bit more. But I didn't like, like, metamorph feels so clunky, man. Like, you have to, like, metamorph for every single enemy in the fucking pool, you know, to apply the flowing veins. That, that is really clunky. I don't like this at all. And it has, like, this, it has, like, a minimum range that is, like, kind of far. So every time you have to activate your evade, you, like, you know, you have to, like, uh, you have to go very far and then you reposition all the time. So it's kind of annoying. What's up? Not now. Hmm? Not now. What do we have? Meatballs with spaghetti. Meatballs with spaghetti? Hmm. Sounds very tempting. I know. Hmm. How about in around like 20 minutes? Or 25? All this time I was cooking. Now I want to go blast too. I go blast. Goodbye. Well, you're gonna yeah. I pressed the wrong button, guys. Fuck. <laughs> Oof. I want to press escape. Also, the boss is coming in five minutes. We must eat meatballs and spaghetti. Yeah, that's fine. I'm waiting until the um, potions drop off, I guess. Also, let's do a spirit dance here. 5% dodge can be helpful. Armor or damage reduction is a priority. Armor, always. I've seen one build. I've seen like a low life Sorg build with like triple damage reduction from injured. That kind of just ignored armor. I guess that works because you have so much damage reduction, like straight up. But realistically, always armor first and uh, resistance first, and then the rest. You know, thanks for the uh, offer, Kenskos. <laughs> How's it be doing compared to pen shot? Which one do you like better? I definitely like pen shot a lot more. And it seems like Penshot is actually pushing higher right now, although that might be possibly based on some really weird bug. So Dioxide has been investigating this a bit, and it seems like somehow you deal like extra damage when you lag out the game, and Penshot does that pretty well, with like the poison and trickshot and everything. Uh, so we need to investigate this further, but apparently there's some, some fishy stuff going on when you like intentionally lag out the game, basically. And uh, Pensha can actually do that. No thanks to Willy for the sub, dude. Damage numbers back on boys. <laughs> yeah, doing more damage by lagging the game. It's like console D3 bullshit. I'm not sure exactly what is going on. So, I need to ask Dioxide. Maybe I can, like. Okay, Dioxide streams very late, right? But uh, maybe I can, like, ask him or, like, go in a stream later or something. Or, like, call him. And see if he, if he can, like, say anything about it. Well, actually, it's weekend, right? If he streams earlier. Does, does Dioxide stream earlier on weekends? Maybe he's gonna be here earlier. Okay, let's see the jump in tier 10. Oh my god, my fucking cold, cold spiders. Oh, 
Probably gonna start skipping some of this shit here, like those champion packs with nothing else in there. Seems kinda wasted. And he's hanging spiders, they're just literally just chilling there outside of the pool and just keep barraging you, man. They don't even walk to you after they shoot it or so. They just like stand there and keep firing, man. It's so crazy. It's fucking cold spiders. They're so insane. Look look at this. <laughs> Holy dude. They're really dangerous monster type. I'm actually more scared of these fucking spiders than the Alex. That's that's something. I think the Lunatics actually one-shot me, so... Uh, this one is like very slow now. You can probably complete, like, if you can complete this here, first try. So, that's, that's, that's a pretty good sign, actually, if I can just do a T10 like this. It's a really shitty one. It's literally the worst map, and one of the worst monster types. I guess it's only beaten by, like, you know, vampire, snake, bullshit or something. So... And you have spiders, which is like a bit of extra density, which is kind of nice. And with the monster damage nerf, I do feel like I'm surviving relatively well. Oh shit. But if you want to do this... Without Doombringer, you would have trouble, man. Look how close I got to dying already a few times. God. Man, they're fucking off screen. Look at this. Look where they are, man. They're like an entire screen away and they're shooting at me. These spiders, dude. It's insane. I can't even see them. But... Shrine, Lethal Shrine, oh, that was something I guess. Actually Lethal Shrine helps with uh, Bursting Venom procs a little bit, right? Ah uh, no, it's not based on crits anymore. Yes. This is a poison puddle from the monster, it's not for me. I just, <laughs> I just jumped into the poison there, hoping it was Bursting Venoms. It looks almost the same.
And I got like three minutes of blood seekers or so. That's okay, I guess, on a 10. I should probably get a potion. A lot of potions. Thanks, Gora, for the prime, by the way. Appreciate that. The new ring for Rogue feels good with TB and smoke grenades. Ugh. I mean, it only works if we don't have a Doombringer, I guess. Because we don't have any aspect slots for it, really, that I can give up. But yeah, it might be a replacement for Doombringer. Sort of X-Files. I think on my setup without Doombringer, I just put an X-Files ring, but... I guess it would work with the new ring. It's kind of like has a defensive value, similar to how Doombringer works. But realistically, I don't really see much of an advantage, because, okay, you can see the bull at the start a little bit more. But if you just walk in there and you throw a smoke on it, like half the pull is already CC'd anyway, and then you like start attacking and then your shared misery just spreads it like instantly and basically to everything. And after five seconds we become unstoppable anyway, so what's the point exactly? Can get another shrine maybe. Yeah, look how fast the days just spreads and then it's just keep attacking. Not everything is instantly days, but most of it, and this is already good enough, I think, for most purposes. I think I would prefer to have something like, I don't know, X-Files, this is for damage or so. Okay, two minutes, that's not very long. Oh, I came alone. <laughs> Easy. I gotta hurry though. Fucking lightning man. No vampiric. Oh wait, vampiric doesn't exist anymore, right? Easy. And what days? timing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but you see the ramp up, right? Like the tier 10, tier 9, this was like significantly high. We did like tier 8 in what? Four and a half minutes? And this was like almost a fail now. Okay, really bad map and stuff, but yeah. You don't want to fail around, right? You don't want to go through a run for 10 minutes and then actually fail it. Like you lose the powder, you lose the upgrade entirely. So when it comes to like grinding out a certain tier, I guess you're looking at like farming something that is like Roughly half of your push tier or something. Well, maybe not half, but something like minus five, I guess. Like minus five is probably like somewhat realistic, right? I've pushed like, I've cleared a 12 with this already. Now I did a 10, okay, on a really bad map. So I guess the 12 is not that crazy yet, right? But this build can do like a 15 or so. Minus five is like 10. Maybe minus seven. For like actual blasting. How do you fit in a Dario? Drop Might for Disobedience. Yeah, basically the same way you fit in a Shako. Like, I have the Shako set up and you just replace the Shako with an Andario. And in that case, yeah, you equip Andario, you get a Disobedience. I would probably keep Cheats, actually. Uh, sorry, I keep Might and drop Cheats, maybe, on this build. But either way, it works, I guess. Like, Might is more consistent and Cheats is like a bit stronger when you have it on the Amulet. But well, I can do Disobedience Amulet and Might here. Get the meatballs and spaghetti. Ah, uh, we have like another 7 minutes of potion or so. So I think I'm gonna do like another T7 or so and see how it feels. 
I didn't actually check how much uh, XP I got exactly. That's comparing a run reward with Sigil Powder. It doesn't say so, but he gets Sigil Powder, yes. He gets more Sigil Powder than he put in, like a few hundred more. So you can grind out the lower tiers and actually go up in Sigil Powder. And then you can only craft 31 of these. T7 is 5,800, and T10 was like 11,000 or something, right? So it's almost double. But I mean, it's also like much safer, at least for like hardcore blasting. And I also get more sigil powder, get more loot, which, well, I don't care much about, but who knows? Maybe I get something. I think like something like 7 or 8 is probably what I want to farm on this build right now. Just to like make it smooth and consistent. Like these T10s or 9s can definitely get kind of scary. Either in, in the time or in just like, you know, how much the monsters hurt. If you like permanently farm this at least. So we'll see, I guess. Yo. Almost one shot here by the red ghost. Look, if you get something like this here and you have red ghosts and like T10 and they live a long time and then these rafts just like pump you. Hello. Oh, thank you. I thought you were blasting. Put it there. <laughs> Aww. Enjoy your five carries also, by the way. Yeah. I just wanted to have a good time. Now it isn't so bad, T10 is a big jump, yeah for sure. So I think I'm gonna like try like on one or two more runs. Like look at how fast this is this? Like one and a half minutes? Yeah, over half already on a really bad map. Oh. Good map, bad monster type, I guess. But maybe these ghosts are actually somewhat valuable if I manage to like just blast through them like this. I'm not sure, like progression seems good. But yeah, if you like three minute runs on like something like seven, eight, that's that's good. And this was, how much? 5,800 XP, So let's, do, let's say we do 15 runs, 5,800. We're looking at like... 80k... XP per hour. That's quite a bit. When you die on hardcore, you have to reload with glyphs. Yes. <laughs> and also, you have to level from 1 to 100 and also get uh, new Uber uniques. So, uh, enjoy. I oh, almost go for 11 actually. It goes a lot faster. What is exclamation mark store, by the way? And glyph level is literally on the screen. Subterfuge and Malice. This would be like... This would be like the Poison Trap Rogue Amulet here. Subterfuge and Malice. Yikes. Unfortunately, that build does not exist. So how much does this? Like 3 minutes, right? Pretty good. Need 7.4 million in total, so... 92 hours at 80k per hour. Are we sure about the 7.4 million? Like, is that confirmed? I can't really know that. Back to Diablo, no more PoE. I never said that. We have Red Ghost again. And there's like, no space here with double suppressor. Wonderful. And like AOC is easier now, they reduce monster damage by 20%, so everyone has like plus 25% EHP. 
And also the first nine tiers are easier now as well. So and also they made cliff leveling faster. So it's actually somewhat realistic to get uh with the level 50. How's the leveling compared to season one? Uh, it's around twice as fast. For some reason, the death set is forty percent faster, but it's actually twice as fast. This is mafia now. It's kind of strange compared, uh, considering that you know people kind of like faster leveling. They kind of like undersold their changes by quite a bit. They're saying it's forty percent faster. I'm not sure why they did that. Pots tier 20, I'm waiting for new. What? Zero pots tier 20, who did that? Seconds of Kanye. Is it enough? Ah, easy actually, I understand. Yeah, it's kind of like a nice tier where like, the pines also do a lot of work. 11 already. Look at that. Oh, yeah, Z with Bones Van Echo, which is better, Grandfather or Wand and Littlers? Uh, absolutely no grandfather. <laughs> grandfather is like, you know, some funny low end thing for Bone Spear, but I mean, Little's Wall is like required for Necro to live in, in any kind of hard content, I think. It's kind of sad actually how much they force Necros into Little's Wall, I think, but this is how it works. Are you on two potions? This is a hardcore elixir, the second one. Okay, can I see that uh, table? The XP table and stuff? Someone mentioned like uh, Rob made something, I wanna check it out actually. F. I need to get a napkin. Doombringer is a must for Necro. I don't think so. I think you can get away without Doombringer, but it will definitely help a lot because Doombringer makes your shields bigger as well, right? With um with Little's Wall. It just gives you like a lot more EHP, which is kinda nice. But I don't think that people are actually running Doombringer a lot on Necro, but maybe. But Little's Wall is definitely required, I think. Little's Wall is just too strong. Okay, do we have a link somewhere? There, let's check it out. See this. Mm -hmm. 
bisschen. Oh, there's like a lot of random stuff in here, it seems. Ah, the camp. Ah, this is campfire news. Okay, there's like a lot of stuff in this sheet, I see. Okay, increase monster level, assumed HP scale, hundred percent on from tier four to tier five, and hundred percent again. Really, every five tiers is like hundred percent jump. That would actually, it's actually crazy if that's true. So this means like a five tier, <laughs> two twenty five is assumed five hundred percent. Holy shit. So is it like two, three, four? Wow, so five tiers is times four basically. Okay. Kinda interesting. Considering that there's like no actual jump in the rewards, right? Like you don't suddenly get like, you know, tier five or like tier let's say tier ten is like, you know, double the chance to get Uber Uniques and double the glyph XP or something like that. It's just like double HP, but you don't really get like an an increase in the reward. Was another stock today in Abattoir, F Shiba. The best farm for Sigil Powder. Uh, speed farm, tier 60 or 70 in Iron Engines, and do all the events. But realistically, just like grind out the lower tiers of Abattoir, you know, something that you never fail. Like, you know, do like tier 5 or whatever, tier, tier 4, I guess. Just do that, and you get Glyph XP and stuff. What is this? Two min. Lead monsters seem to have six trillion HP. Really? <clears throat> Actually, six trillion. But then I think the scaling must be much higher than what it says here. Okay, I can. Let's see. How much does this get up from tier fifteen? So I do. I can do tier fifteen. Let's say. And then from fifteen is like. 17, 18, 19. This is 20, and then 21, 2, 3, 4. So the times 43. So if it says 6 trillion. So this means like a tier of 15 elite has 140 billion? I don't think this is accurate. I don't think they have that much HP. 140 billion? I don't think I, do, I don't think I can do 140 billion on my rogue. I didn't look at the numbers exactly, but that seems excessive. Okay, how much DPS do I do? Let's see. In like an AoE poll? I don't know. Let's let's say I can do like optimistically 50 million DPS. So in 20 seconds, I do 1 billion. So in 2,000 seconds, I can do 100 billion. Now nah, the 6 trillion doesn't seem accurate at all. And I think 50 million DPS for Rogue is optimistic already. I think a 6 trillion is not accurate. Or the 500% scaling is not accurate. One of the two. Uh, I'll post a link in the chat sheet here. Like, where's that 6 trillion number coming from? Who, who gave that number? You couldn't kill small trash at all with Hoda. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I want to see this, actually. But I mean, he, he probably went in with like someone else, right? I heard that some Chinese guys like opened um, 
the the tier for him because they exploited their way to 25. So was he solo? Tier 25 ARZ showcase. Okay, let's, let's, I guess it's this one. Thanks for the opening. Okay. Okay, it's two men. And he's going in alone. Yo, first try gets fucking poison spiders and skelly. Second best monster set. Alright. So it does barely get better than this. Thanks, Vulcan. Okay, but it's still double player HP, right? Because they opened with two players. Right? So it's double HP. Okay, he's doing like 26 million crits. On overpower, 360 million, 180 million, 300 million, 400, 500 million. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this HP scale, 500% is like way higher than that though. Yeah, they really wanted to make sure no one could choose 25. Oh, he's using Medit Heart though, okay. Wait, can't he survive this? Without Medit Heart? He does kill small monsters, he does get a little bit of progression, you see. What is he talking about here? Yeah? Still immortal on T25. Yeah, I mean the monster damage does not scale at all, I think. I, I think it's literally stopped scaling, like, completely after like T10 now, basically. Since they changed it from the lower tiers. Final thoughts, second tier, okay. Wait, what is it, first T25? Ah, uh, yeah. Does he have spiders again? No, this is... Okay, this is drowned. <laughs> it looks at Iris. Yeah, the, the HP scanning is... I mean, the 6 trillion might be accurate, because he literally doesn't kill anything. I wonder, like, uh, how long does it take to do, like, an exploited clear? Did, did anyone do like an exploited tier 25 clear with Hydras? I wonder how long it took to kill the Bloodseekers, probably like an hour or something. <laughs> yeah, but this is good, this is exactly how it should be. It's just kind of weird that only the last tier has this extreme ramp up, and before that, not really. Right, people are already beating tier 20, tier 20 or so, legit, or close to tier 20. And then, you know, the last, literally the last tier has this insane ramp up, so they just can't finish it. Which is kind of strange, you know, there should be like a more steady progression. I also don't understand why there's like this jump every five tiers, you know, there's like apparently like a 100% jump every five tiers. I think that makes no sense. I think it makes not, I mean, yeah, maybe it does make some sense if there was some kind of like special reward in every tier, right? But it's not even that. Here, look, tier 9 is 3.4k glyph. Oh, sorry, 9.1k. And then tier 10 is 11.6k, it's like plus 20%. And then you go from 10 to 11, it's also like plus 20 something percent, 25. So, you know, there's not even a jump in the reward at all. There's no loot, nothing. So you get like the plus one monster level, I guess. Actually, the monster level increases here already. One before at 19, and then at 20, and then this is 160. And here. He also rises every right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Dude, it's like Omega random. What the fuck? Why is this four and this is six and this is five tiers of the same monster level? This is one, two, three, four, five. Maybe this is a mistake here. Yeah. Maybe this is actually. 
I didn't check now, I'm recording. Is this 157 on tier 10? You hear Rob in the background? You should. I mean, it's it's good that it's not beatable. It's just kind of stupid that only tier 25 is like literally un unbeatable. And like, you know, we're going to see maybe a tier 24 clears, but there's zero chance that everyone's going to do a tier 25, basically. You know, this last tier is just like not feasible, basically. And that is really weird. I'm not sure why, you know. Why couldn't you just like space it out a bit better? Okay, kind of interesting. Is there anything else? House of Tia Tillis. Okay, it's just a bunch of builds. Oh, actually, how does this um, compare to the Maxwell Tillis? This is the same. <laughs> okay, for some reason, I have S, plus, but okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, it actually looks like fairly similar. Infamous, I think he moved up now. Wizard Sorg, I think, is a bit higher. Like, we moved down the Druid a lot. F? What? Wait, where's C and D? Why Why does it just continue with F? <laughs> what is this? Okay. Dude, Fawns is actually pretty good. I think Fawns has done, like, tier 12 already and stuff. Like, this is actually not F. I mean, this seems bad, though. These, like, Frenzy and Leap, whatever, some some memes. But Fawns is actually kind of legit. And I guess Roman probably as well. Okay, Immortal Barb. Okay, it's like some random stuff here. Alright. Interesting. Hear me out, tier 25 single player clears without any reward being the change to take a single item and change every affix to what you want. And great reward. That does literally nothing and it's not achievable. Great. Oh, hey Rob. <laughs> Don't recommend those. Yeah, it's fine. I was just like looking at it. Yeah, it was kind of interesting to see the... Um, the glyph scaling and stuff and the HP scaling. Hey, let me open that again. Do you listen to me right now? I, wait, are you live? Is Rob live? But yeah, um, I don't think this number is accurate. Like the 500%. This seems like way more looking at this. Because we have we have seen tier 20 clears, right? And then it's like probably like a bunch more tiers you can try to push. Maybe this number is not accurate. Or maybe just this one is not accurate. Because I compared it to like my tier 15 clears and you have 130 times or 140 times more HP if you go by these numbers in tier 25. And I tried to estimate how much DPS I do. And I do nowhere near the DPS required to reach that value basically to beat it. Like I think this 500% is like way more on the last tier at least. But who knows. Maybe there's like extra scaling here. Yeah, it's, it might be like way more than that. Maybe they, they, just, they just took like tier 25 and they made it like, you know, times 100 or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let me do this again. So I can do a 15 on pen shot, let's say. Yeah, and then we have 16, 17, 18, 19. And then we have 20 and then you have 21, 2, 3, 4. And then, so here, times 43. And if you say like, okay, they have 6 trillion life. Divided by 43, the tier 15 monsters would have 140 billion. And there's no chance I kill 140 billion HP on my rogue. Like, I, I like you know, optimistically estimated like 50 million DPS, and that would take like, you know, 30 minutes to kill one guy. And it take more like one minute. So I think these scanning numbers are kind of off. This is at least what I can say. I try to push 24 today. Wait, did you unlock 24? Yeah, wait, you have a 50 glyph already. Oh shit. 
Yeah, I mean, 50 Glyph is like roughly double damage or so compared to level 1, maybe a bit less. Right? It's like, yeah. So it's like 1.7 or 1.8, and then level 50 is like 3. Okay, it's like plus, plus 60, 70%, I guess, compared to level 1. So there's definitely like two tiers, maybe three tiers. But if if you fish the skellies, okay, I'm not sure. Okay, I, since I'm here right now, um, does your monster and map experience line up with this? I wonder. So I made to see the monsters and map combos. I think the skellies and red spiders are by far the best, followed by the poison spiders. And then, okay, the big open maps are clearly the better than the, the narrow ones, I guess, because they can make bigger pulls. But yeah, it's basically just this monster type, I feel, that I'm fishing for. And maybe the poison spiders that are kind of okay. Because extra density. Not good enough to 50 glyph. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting stuff here. All the meatballs, they're amazing. Nini's a great cook. Diablo yeah, 4 is about working to work to work. <laughs> work to get a materials, to work to clear. No, no, not really. Like, the out of 4 you're supposed to, like, have the end of the journey at some point, right? Like, they stressed this point a, a few times already in, like, interviews or in the like, campfire chats. It's about, like, limited power progression and stuff. Not like the Diablo 3 of the unlimited Paragon. But right now, what we have is unlimited Paragon grind, you know? This glyph is basically the Diablo 3 Paragon. And that's kind of stupid. I think Quitan is good on Klaus with Poison TB. Yeah. But lucky hit might not be so bad either. I mean, if Quitan, you have like the higher chance to get a 75% extra poison. And if lucky hit chance, you get more bursting random procs. Not sure which one actually wins. But I usually go for exactly this combo here. Dissing Blades, Slow, Crit, Attack Speed. Maybe the Attack Speed could be lucky hit chance as well. Now that I think about it, at least with Ravenous Aspect. Or ravenous uh, vampire power. Driving vampire power, dominion. You mean domination? And it's not useful. I mean, number one in hardcore, it just kills you, so not a good idea, because there's a bug. And number two, it's like a waste of a slot. Like in my case, for example, I do more damage when trash monsters live longer, because I have more density and, I, you know, I have like more lucky hits and all that stuff. Trick shot aspect. On pain trading shot. So you actually want monsters to live longer and not shorter. When you fight the leads, you want to have density around them to do more damage. Kind of like a developer free with area damage almost. Just that arrow damage does not exist in this game. But you still have these kind of effects where you scale with density. When I think of replacing Shadow Step on Penshaw build or Smoke Grenade and using Metamorphosis, nothing. Like, just dash is not good enough to activate your close quarters, I think. Resilience instead of Undying if running Undario. Mm, not a bad idea, honestly. Might work. If you have like insane healing from Undario. I heard that Undario doesn't heal you as much as it says. But I mean, if you can. <laughs> if you have to damage to do like tier 15 plus, I guess it, Undario heals you quite a lot, actually.
end up opting for crit potion because it has been next out the game with ball lightning. Mm. I know ball lightning is quite laggy. Pain shot also kind of gets there. So victimize is going to get fixed this season. Mm, if it was, that would be really powerful. If, if you could run victimize on rogue, you could probably push similar to the barbs right now on pen shots. <coughs> but yeah, we go all close quarters, I guess. I am losing Shaka for this build. Yeah, because Shaka requires you to run disobedience. They have like less damage reduction in general. Shaka makes it much squishier. Like I'm already kind of sweating sometimes in the higher tiers on this build. So Shaka does have its downsides. But on the other hand, we are making stuff in Stobble really fast. So I might replace Cheat's aspect, put disobedience, keep might, go Shaka. It might be somewhat acceptable. I have like less damage reduction while they succeed and then more damage reduction when they not succeed, I guess. Which is actually kind of nice because usually when they not succeed is when I take the most damage. Yeah, Shaco has 20% damage reduction like Might, but you also need Disobedience. So you lose two defensive aspects to get a Shaco. That's the thing. What's wrong with Victimize? Um, it's bugged right now. So the extra... The extra damage from Vulnerable, like the scaling, it doesn't work. I think it only works for the main target, but not for uh, all other targets or something. So it's like, you know, it's just not getting like a times 3 or times 4 multiplier because it can stack a lot of Vulnerable damage. You see here right now, it's just 93% increase from my Vulnerable. And I don't even have Vulnerable stacked very much. And this effectively doesn't really work well. Hmm. Thank you so much for the subgift, Sansei. Okay, I'm almost done with food, by the way, guys. Let me continue. <coughs> Top Rush build, Scarlet Sky is bad. Yeah, it's bad. Unless you don't play combo points, but then your build was just bad this season because of the Tabots will bug. If you play like an inner side barrage build, I guess, you can you can think about Starless or preparation build. Oh another sub. Hi Drafen. Thank you so much. So room to try exploiters. You can do exploiter aspect. I never really saved exploiter aspects, but I got one with 34%. The thing is that at least for rogues, I think Exploiter's Aspect is not really the way. Because first of all, you're kind of squishy when everything is like not CC'd anymore. Like you have to kind of play very defensively. And you lose like half your damage anyway, because you have so much damage with crowd control. I have like 400% damage with crowd control or something. So I lose like half my additive damage when they are unstoppable. And then yeah, I get a bit of damage back from the Exploiter Aspect. But realistically, you don't really want to DPS hard when they are unstoppable. That's kind of the thing. It's still like a DPS upgrade, but not by too much. I am playing Shared Misery, yes. But monsters are more unstoppable than CC'd. They are unstoppable for 8 seconds and CC'd for 5 seconds. So, like almost two thirds of the time they are unstoppable. Which, you know, speaks to exploiter aspect, but again, as a rogue at least, you have so much damage with crowd controlled that you lose when they're unstoppable. I don't think it's really worth it. So yeah, you can do it, but I don't think it's really the way. In this case, I mean, if I remove Ravagers and I put an uh, exploiter there, that would probably be the thing to put there, honestly, without a Shako. If you have a Shako, you put Shad Misery on the boots. Without a Shako, 
yeah, Ravagers can be replaced with Exploiter, and you go Metamorph. I wanted to try some more Metamorph today anyway, so I might actually do that anyway, and just see how it feels. <coughs> I do eat food, yeah. Food is usually what you eat. I'm not sure if you eat other things that are not food. Wouldn't recommend. Okay, enough now. Okay, actually, let's do this here. Yeah. So let's go Metamorphosis again. I think before I do like the unstoppable thing, I'm just gonna like, try keeping the Ravager and try to not to use it that much, basically. Compared to before, and more focus on your yeah, Metamorphosis. So I need one Ferocity, one Eternity. Do we have any slots? No, no, no. Okay. Let's remove her Divinity there. Yo, Sansa, thanks for the bits, dude. That's just life, yeah. We went live uh, yesterday already. 40k almost the cap. Um, For like tier 25, yeah. But realistically, it needs something like 30.7. For like you know, tier 15 ish. Careful with this one. Very potent. You need one and one, right? Okay, I've metamorph. Yeah, what's my other amulet here? Metal heart, explosive worth. This has umbers. Damage reduction, distant. And I kind of low roll, see, also the all is slam low. This is kind of like not really what I want at this point. This amulet is definitely better. Also, has a close reduction. It's actually so nice that I rolled this off distant to close reduction. That will make it so much safer with um, Pen RF. Can't wait to try Pen RF again, actually. Maybe go Shaco this time. I'm gonna have Big Dam. Yo, Season, thanks so much for the sub. Okay, so as I said, I'm gonna keep Ravagers on the boots, but I'm trying to not use it. I wanna see how it feels when I don't have Ravager, but you go to Metamorph instead. I think you can also change this. We have 4% more crit, progress. Because Rapid Gambits doesn't work with Metamorphosis, apparently. Okay, okay. <clears throat> I need a sigil. Can I show the skill tree? Again. <laughs> okay, I just showed it, but here you go. How do you get infinite energy for Barrage? Well, the easiest way is just play combo points, as you should this season. If not, I mean, it gets a lot more complicated. You can check my... I'm not sure if it's still in the Discord, but if you go to Discord, on my Woody Builds channel, there might still be the Barrage Death Trap build. So you can check that out. But basically like Umbro aspect, Ravenous aspect, you know, chance to slow on hits, and pain and grease, these kind of things, and then you can get like a lot of like also inner sight kind of specialization. But it's like a very, very costly investment to try to get an infinite energy. Okay, let's just do I'm gonna try another tier 10 right now with metamorphosis. So we beat like a really bad tier 10 earlier. First try. So let's try this again and see how it feels. Tier 10. Metamorph. Okay. Let's pop a potion. <coughs> let's do this again, I guess. And the 5% dodge. Kind of nice. 
42k attack power is a good. Uh, it does not matter. Never look at attack power, I guess. Okay, this is also kind of bad map with pretty bad monster type. Man, it feels so clunky playing with Metamorphosis. I like it so much more, man, playing just Ravagers. Like here, like I'm in a suppressor bubble, <laughs> and then I have to use my metamorphosis, and I just like, like I, I go too far and I'm out of the suppressor bubble again. All my damage like disappears. My God, man. I might do this though. I guess it is an option, but yeah, I don't like it, man. Like this constant moving around and stuff. Really? I'm sure it hit me now. But I was probably too focused on the metamorph stuff. Sucks. So my ability is nice, but damn, my damage is low. What do you mean my damage is low? It's like tier 15 viable build. It is a rogue, and I'm not a barb. What do you mean damage is low? Yeah, I, I really don't like playing Metamorphosis, I gotta say. It feels so clunky eh? compared to Akira's touch on his build. Same on like, the other build. And then, yeah, I guess, I guess if you want to get a Shaco, you have to do Metamorphosis, because you need to shout Misery on the boots. <coughs> I'm gonna put that in the guide, I guess, as like, an option. Either Metamorph or Akira's touch, but I like Akira's touch a lot more. I'm honest. I just feel way safer doing this. Use the alembic, the crucible, whatever you like. <laughs> A fine balance there.
Next season, every class will feel bad without meta. I disagree. Why well, don't use x file ring? Uh, it doesn't fit when you have Doombringer. x files is what you use when you don't have Doombringer. Should I try Throne and Liberty? I've heard about that, but I don't really know anything about it. <clears throat> Rax says Metamorph is bugged and doesn't program with hitballs. What? I've not heard about this. Maybe he's talking about the resource gain, but even that is not bugged. It's just, it, it does exactly what it says. So if you are unstoppable, you can't benefit from the 50 primary resource gain again. You have to like let unstoppable drop and then get it. So maybe this is what he means, but this is not a bug. I think this is exactly how these pens are supposed to work. You have to let it drop and then get unstoppable again. Hi, Mike. Well, anyway, I am um, just gonna play a bit more TB and then he's back back to pen shot, I think. And then I think I'm gonna try to like kind of like find like the sweet spot, like how does TB feel on like T7, T8 grinding or something. So we're gonna do like a, a, maybe a few T7, a few T8, and then we're gonna respect to pen shot. I just like playing pen shot a lot more in abattoir. It just feels better. Not because it's really stronger, but it just feels better. So that's good. T10s, yeah. Just wasted all the social power we got earlier, I guess. So let's do like three tier sevens, three tier eights. Also keep in mind I was using a Lucky Helix there, yeah, which is pretty premium. Which I wouldn't need on Penshot. How many of them do I have actually? Ah, oh, we have 25 common fortunes. It's pretty good. And next week we're gonna get uh, the Midwinter Elixir. The Midwinter Elixir is gonna be really powerful for Timmy though. 15% Lucky Hit, 50% Life, so it's like GG. So... <coughs> Hey Jack. I only have 47k sigil powder. I actually had like 80 something k when it started, but we've been wasting a bunch for the push and stuff. Where's my Spotify playlist? It's in the description on YouTube. There's also the, the Simfave music that, uh, that I own. It's like at the start of the playlist. Go check that out. I've been playing this on my intro lately for like the stream start. Okay, we are good to go. Let's go. Should I air Z and duo? I might do that at some point. But on hardcore, hmm. The thing is I need to find someone who's like exactly as strong as me. <laughs> so probably like a, a Sorg, but the Sorg lags it out, I guess. Or like another rogue that is like really decked out. I mean, who who could I do duo with, basically? I don't know. Like, what are the highest clears on hardcore on the leaderboard? I guess I can check and uh, see like who's really high. Maybe I could do some human action or something. I definitely don't want, don't want to go with a buff. Buffs are too powerful, and also they give us fortify, and the fortify can just rip randomly on hardcore. So no thanks. Alcora. And yeah, Alcora is like Bob main, honestly, like made another character. And I was just wondering like which class would I even do this with?
Not bad back music. The core can carry me. I don't want to do carry. Like, we're talking about duo, you know? Like, you need to find someone who's, like, a, as strong as you, basically, for duo. Like, exactly, pretty much. And that seems, like, almost impossible, man. I mean, I, like, the thing is that Rogue actually has, like, three different builds, so I can do it with, like, another Rogue, you know? There's, like, pen shots, there's TP, and there's pure Rapid Fire. They're all, like, kind of close. Actually, it would be kind of interesting to go with, like, a Rapid Fire Rogue, because they actually use Cold. So you could have, like, a... Uh, one of, one of the guys that freezes, and you can both go with Fisher Finesse. So that would be kind of good. Just getting like physical damage. Uh, how long was that? I forgot to check the timer. Another time. He's funny. Yeah, I like Dokora. He's a nice guy. Shout out to people with Ubers actually trying T14 Plus on Hardcore. <laughs> I mean, I have an Uber equipped. But not a Shaco yet. But now with the damage nerf, yeah, it might be a good idea to go Shaco on Penshot. Because he's like a defensive elixir still to get more HP and stuff. Or Iron Skin. Maybe I can get away running Iron Skin. And be armor capped with Shaco. I need to check. That'll be the best case scenario, I think. If I don't need disobedience, we can keep Might and Sheets, or uh, I guess Might and Umbers, even. Let's throw it away. I might also try the Fist of Fate strat and see if that actually feels good. Especially with Shaco, that would make sense, maybe. This is actually really smart, fast and smooth run, yeah. It's like, okay, it's like the GG monster type actually, this is the red spiders, skellies. This is like the best monster type, guys, this is what you're looking for when you go for a push. It's by far the best. You can see it. Like, the monster sets are really imbalanced. Why not Andy's a pen shot? Because I don't have one. I'd really like to try Andy's so though. I think Andy's a pen shot. It depends, like I have not gotten, gotten confirmation if you can actually proc Andy's multiple times per attack. If you can proc Andy's on every single time you hit, I think that could be pretty ridiculous a pen shot, but I don't have one so I can't really say. And the thing is that, yeah, the damage of pen shot is still relevant and the, the damage of the poison and stuff. And if you have an Andarials instead of a Shaco, you lose 4 ranks on your pen shot and you lose 4 ranks on your imbue. So you lose double like 20%. So you know, Chakra gives you like 50% DPS or so that they have to make up for with uh, Andy. Again, I didn't check the timer. It's kind of stupid that it doesn't tell you the time at the end, you know? Like, I'm so used to, like, okay, you finish the DR, and then you see so much time left, right? And here, it just doesn't tell you. And I keep forgetting. Hmm. 
He never saw a build where Anis is Biss. Uh, it's Biss on Poison Shred and on Stormclaw right now. For the Blurred Beast scaling. Seven minutes left, thank you. And yeah, I think for Pen Shot it could be Biss, but I have not seen it in action. Can Solo the Tens wanna group up? <laughs> what class are I doing? Hurt. Fucking Banshees, man. You're playing Barb. Are you a hardcore or what? I don't know. I just want to do like, a bit of testing right now to like figure out like the optimal tier or see like you know how the scaling feels on the lower end here. Dario Brock happens on your character, which makes the best use for range builds. That is true, but you don't play ranged and pen shot really, at least not here in Abattoir. You kind of like face tank stuff. You can do a bit of range and stuff, but when it comes to like, you know, the big AoE pulls, you're kind of like right in there in the middle. So you can definitely play around on Dario's in that way. At least to some degree. The question is just do you get more than one Dario proc per shot? That is important, you know? Like, if I shoot into a pack and I get 20 Andara procs on one shot, that's obviously a big difference compared to one proc. But someone with, like, pen, pen shot and, like, Adarial needs to confirm that, I guess. Like, if I can do, like, one pen shot and I produce, like, a, you know, like a 5 million poison tick or something on everything without poison imbument, that would be GG. Yeah, but... Does that actually work? Does it's confirmed? Okay. Oh, that's really good then. Now I'd really like to know like how much damage can Adarius do on one single shot when you have like you know, let's say a pull size of 20. Also, I would have to confirm if uh hmm. can you like double proc on a single hit? Can I like can I like trigger And then dial for my pen shot and then hit the same target again with a trick shot proc and then get another lucky hit. I've actually never tested that. Okay, I think it's the best that up here is the Well, no, something you can grind in like three, maybe four minutes. Thanks, Heffa. That's two tier eights. So the 240 run, that's kind of nice. How's to be feeling about the pen shots? I like pen shot more. It's not necessarily much stronger, but it seems like a bit stronger actually, turns out after all. Than TB. Originally I thought that TB would win, but pen shot seems to have like more potential with like certain things, but it seems pretty close, to be honest. You can play both. They're like within one tier, I'd say. Okay, it's tier 8 now, by the way. Can link on video on YouTube. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do about it. Like for some reason, links are not working on my YouTube chat. But I know Xario. I can just open the, the video. I'm gonna do it after this run. God, second cold spiders. Leave me alone. Look how many there are. <laughs> Insane. This is like barraging me, man. Like, you know, course, you guys are scared of the call spell, man. Look at this. This call spell is just pumping me. I don't care, dude. But there's like a, call, a, a cold spider. I just fucking die. Everyone's complaining about call spells. I don't believe it, man.
can share Sam some information about my music playlist. I can share that you can type explanation my playlist to find it. So synthwave created playlist I created myself. Based on a maxo leaderboard and shocked how few druids there are. Yeah, I wonder where the druids are, man. Kind of sad, actually. Where are the druids? Guys, stop into clear as the druids. I know Boiler has been testing like, a bunch of different builds. Maybe it's gonna like give us a few like uh, uploads or something soon. So 10 seconds. Alright. Whoa. So I'll fix this here. Uh, Polarize seems to push up to like tier 9 or so. It seems to be about it. Can you do rapid fire of Tracing Blades? Uh, if they ever fix Blade Dancer to not be bugged anymore, then I think Tracing Blades rapid fire might be the way actually for all Tracing Blades build, yes. But currently there's no need to include rapid fire because you have high single target damage with Poison Imbue. That is only because of the bug with Blade Dancer. But yeah, rapid fire is like the solution to everything, basically. Most rogues and druids have either stopped or switched to one of the two broken classes. I don't think so. I don't think that many people just suddenly, you know, pull like an a sork or a bard fully geared out out of nowhere, unless they already had it before this. No need to, can you like chill out a bit? Or nicer? What's that name? Let's see, guys, shadow step on your head, instant one shot. Was it a shadow step or was it a teleport? The shadow step doesn't do that much to me, I think, but the teleport is like instant one shots everyone, it seems. Teleport is like completely bonkers. Not sure what's going on there. Shadow Step, interesting. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm stuck here. What's going on? Yeah, I like T7 a lot more. Like, I can actually notice the difference here between T7 and T8 a lot. T8, uh, T7, I was like doing like 3 minutes or faster pretty consistently, and T8 is just kind of getting scuffed sometimes. So, T7 is probably like the sweet spot for me right now. For TB to farm. 3 minute runs or less. It's kind of nice. Yeah, sometimes like stuff just doesn't die. Sometimes I like, don't get my first venom procs or something, and it feels a bit clunky. Now we're kind of popping off there. One shot by Leap Barb. Notice Vegan stack. Leap, Kapal. The Leap doesn't actually do that much damage, I think. But yeah, without this Vegan stack, you can like just like jump on you and that's it. If you time it well though, if you know it's a Barb, you can like yeah, evade away. It's a bit tough though.
Good stuff, Bob, stomping through the walls. Yeah, I mean, that's a feature, actually. You can do it as a Bob yourself. If there's like an underwater path, like here, for example, I could like jump to the left now as a Bob. This is like a formal run. Yeah, tier 7 is, I guess. Both the tier 8 runs so far were pretty scuffed. Yeah, one more, I think. Yeah, so I have one more after this. So I want to compare this to Penshot. I wonder how fast I can farm with Penshot. I think TB should be faster than Penshot to grind out these tiers. But I like to, to, to Penshot a lot more. Maybe we can go higher on Penshot, honestly. Could try. Hey, Panda. Both of them died. Awesome. What is better? Minus damage or percent armor on Emerald? Now I have minus damage of 10.6k. Uh, if you have 10.6k, you can run Disobedience Aspect and be fine. And even if you roll armor, you might not have enough afterwards. To hit cap, but it might be close. So maybe with some further tweaks, you can hit cap at like 13.6 or 13.7. Have the red ghosty things shown up? Red ghost exists, yes. There's like, I think, one monster set that has red ghosts. And there is a single pen that can trigger multiple times. Okay, now. How, how big of a dot can you produce if you don't have poison impairment and you just shoot into a pack? Well, let's do it on a target dummy. So let's say you have like your 1000% lucky hit build, right? Like you, you proc on every target. You can shoot on 5 target dummies. How much does the dot do with one pen shot? Come on, Darius. Yeah, I think the Darius could be insane, because the base damage on the Darius is pretty high, it's like 20,000 or something, right? On the dots. That's a lot. Mm, the spider maps, I love it. I wonder if at this tier I could actually run Shadow Imbument and just grind it out of Shadow Imbument. <laughs> probably, actually. It's probably low enough for Shadow Imbument to do work. Oh my god, what kind of poison do I have on me right now? Every other class got a broken ass build and I'm sitting on the beer rouge like like what? Just casually like the third best build in the game currently or so. Yeah, this is a really good T8 run. But I think generally T7 feels better. Oh, 
Oh, I'm using different skills than the one I put in my LZ guide. I'm confused. Uh, because experimentation. Like the guide I made is like much more defensively oriented. But now also they, they can reduce the monster damage and stuff like that, so it's like much easier to survive. And I think I'm gonna switch it to exactly the setup. This seems to be like a really nice compromise between offense, defense, and you know, mobility and everything, so I think this is just kind of what works best. Isn't poison trap bad to be? Uh with a level glyph it will be better, I think. But right now we don't really see those results. Like highest I've heard of a poison shred doing is like a tier 12 or so. But the, the poison shreds are like extremely inconsistent. I think they just can't survive the Bloodseekers. So you go you, you go through the rift really fast and then you just can't kill the Bloodseekers. Which is kind of funny because originally I imagined the poison shred guys to potentially be like used in groups to like insta kill the elites or like the, the boss or something like that, right? But it's exactly opposite. Like they actually get through the rift really easily. And then the Bloodseekers spawn and they just die. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So yeah, apparently if you don't have a protection shrine, you just can't do it. Unless you get like very lucky, maybe. Okay, we're gonna do like, a, I don't know, three more runs or something, then my potion will run out. And I think I'll do a respec to pen shots. We're gonna see if I can farm T7s or so in a similar time. Probably not. But I'll try it anyway. That's the three months. A dragon running X Files. Yeah, only when you have um, no Doombringer. So Xario taking close to 1 million per tick on 5 dummies. Okay, Andario. Is that with one shot? 5 dummies, one shot, 1 million tick. That is pretty good. Is that enough though? Mm. It's questionable if it is enough. We got a glyph to 20, and in no way doing this to 50. Yeah, same. I'm like at 11 now on a glyph or something. And then <laughs> 20, man, holy shit. Yeah, I'm like 50, 60 hours away at this pace from a level 50 glyph, I think. And then what, you know, I can go like plus one here or something, so bleh. Blah, you know. One shot, two million take. On how many targets? On five. Four million. On five targets. Wow, okay. I guess it's like normal target on me, right? With like do we get AOC build or what? Okay. So There's almost 1 million per target, huh? That sounds... That sounds good enough, actually. If I have like, you know, 20 targets, I do one shot, it takes for like, you know, 15 million? That sounds pretty good. If you ask me, actually. And the answer to X-Files is... X-Files... Replaces Doombringer. Or rather, Doombringer replaces X Files. At least on TV. Potentially do both. Just try and run Andarius on ball lighting, it works great. Yeah, ball lighting should also like, produce pretty uh, massive lucky hits, right? But I think like the the way to really scale this on pen shots with the lucky hit chance, if you like get it on like every single hit, sort of trick shot aspect and stuff, it can be pretty nasty. And I would really like to try Darius if I have one. I need to level up my Sorg to hundred. And then with some Durials with the Sorg, maybe also get a uh Avarion.
I, I wonder if you're gonna see someone actually do like pen shot with Anaris. But yeah. Also, in freeze pen shot builds. Uh, I'm not sure which one we're talking about exactly, but if you're talking about Frostburn builds, nah. I think Frostburn is not that effective, even on a rogue. I can lose too much from like no real glove. You lose the X-Far ring, you lose the crit, you lose the four ranks on your skills. So we're talking about like minus 30, 40% DPS, which is basically what you gain back from freezing stuff with Fish of Finesse. And then, you know, like half the time stuff is not even frozen because they are unsolvable. So yeah, it's not really not really great, I think. It's gonna make it much safer, but it doesn't sound great. And honestly, Penshot is already like the tankiest rogue that they can play, basically, so I don't think you really need the freeze for defensively. Oh, Glyph of Old 12. Wait, is that 12? Yes. Crazy. It's kind of strange how the XP is so much higher now. No x files proc of Andiros. Yeah, I knew that already. Tier 50 cliff will not get you through 25. Some people are saying high 50 plus. Now, nah, even a level. Like, even a level 200 glyph on a barb will not be enough for uh, tier 25, for sure, I think. It's just not enough. But I mean, no one is even gonna get anywhere close to that, I think. Okay, maybe with like 24 7 leeching, like a month, from like, you know, people just grinding out like tier 15s for you or something, and just get like, you know, say a million plus XP per uh, hour or so. I'm not sure what is the max the, the, the XP required for like a level 20 cliff. But yeah, maybe for like leech for like 300 hours straight with like 1 million per hour, maybe it's enough. The Chinese player almost being tier 23. Yeah, but we, we learned that uh, tier 25 has like some insane extra HP scaling, like ridiculous insane in scaling. So. We will be. We will see a tier 24 probably, but we will not see a tier 25 the way it looks like now. They just made it sure that it's basically unbe unbeatable. So apparently there's like an ins insane jump. It seems to be a jump every five tiers already, but tier 25 is like an extra jump basically. I wish you could buy sigil powder. Tier 25 is basically like the scale linear until tier 40, but they skip 26 to 39. <laughs> yeah, something like that, I guess. It's kind of funny because they still put in an achievement. I guess the achievement is a trap, guys. I think they're gonna take anyone who gets the achievement and just ban them. They're like, this can't be right. No one can do this. And that's correct. <laughs> Some guy has the same suggestion about ban. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, this is how it is. I hope we can keep the glyph at the end of the season. That is not happening. We gotta win force, man. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to try the Sky Hunter one more time at some point. I'm gonna see if I can do something with Sky Hunter. Like if you have like a you know a small corridor map and then kind of like bounce back and forth. They left it in free Vampiric Suppressor Bloodseekers for tier 25. Yeah, Vampiric Suppressor and then Fire Enchanted or something. It's gonna be great. Oh, Obelisk is even better, man. Obelisk, like triple Obelisk spawn on you. Ah, uh, Eaglehorn. Yeah, sorry, not Sky Hunter. Yeah, I'm talking about Eaglehorn. Man, too many unique bows. You play the Hotface dead enough? Ah, oh, it's, it's a really good move, the hotfix. I think that there's still like, some work to be done, especially with Bloodseekers. Could be like a lot more uh, fun. But now I think the Bloodseekers are not like fun enough. A lot of people just like they randomly die to them anyway and these kind of things. A bunch of bugs. Really bad balance between monster sets and maps. So there needs to be like, you know, more of that as well. Too many unique bows, all kind of trash, yeah. I mean, maybe Sky Hunter becomes actually like a bit more viable in the future when uh, close cross combat is not really a thing and potentially we get like a position buff. Um, I think I think that one is just like bad, you know. It's not just that close cross combat is like so powerful, but also that key passive is just like weak. Especially when you play comp point builds, which is like most builds really on Rogue, even without the will bug. Like, if you made it so that your basic skill can't eat the procs, that would be really good, actually. Because basically what would happen is, you can play, like, for example, Puncture. Oh, shit. Still in the explosion. Ah. Uh, I was just about to finish the last run here, man. I was, like, talking too much. <laughs> but yeah, basically what I was going to say is, um... Let's just keep the portal here, actually. So... If they made it so that Puncture does, or like even Heartseeker or Forceful Arrow does not eat your precision stacks, then you can actually play, for example, combo points and get like, you know, your 8 shots of Barrage, you can get your 8 shots of like Rapidify or even 9 with Cunning Gem. So this means that you have always like one attack where you stack up precision, and then you have another attack where you have 5 precision stacks and the entire attack is buffed and repeat. You know, it would always be like 1, 1, 1, 1. You know, one stacking, one using, one stacking, one using. But right now you can't do that because your puncture or like your forceful arrow or whatever just eats your precision stacks and you know it's kinda of shit. So the only time I ever used precision was when I was not playing call points actually. Like for example on Rapid Fire build, I was using precision and I was just like playing like preparation, right? It's like the old Rapid Fire build with Shadow Clone. I did exactly that. I just made sure I didn't use a basic skill at all, so my basic skill would not eat my precision stacks. Because very often I would end up exactly like this, you know, one to stack, one attack to use, one stacking, one using. And uh, then that actually kind of made it made sense. But yeah. I think in general, like, position could need like a bit of a buff. Victimize is interesting, but they need to finally remove the lucky hit of this. Like, this should not have lucky hit, it should just be a flat chance. Basically, do free area damage, and then it would make some sense. Exposure is fine. Close quarters needs a nerf, and then momentum is also kind of fine. But maybe momentum would be more interesting if it didn't have a damage reduction component, but maybe something else that is like offensive. I think you could make a tanky rapid fire build. Ah, rapid fire basically has the same defense as like pen shot, I'd say. Just with like slightly less umbers procs. So it can still run like the same like cheats. Might, Umbras, combo, and you're gonna be fine. 
Yeah, you have a bit less uptime of like slow for cheats, you have a bit less uptime of umbras, but generally Amplifier is doing pretty well. And the last one I proc. Ugh. Let's just pop another one here. And then respec after this. My eyes can only watch so much. What build will grab a T25 solo? Uh, none. T25 solo is not happening. But yeah, I mean, hold up above is uh, the strongest right now. It's like even beyond ball lightning. Ball lightning has a problem that you know, it's kind of laggy. And the best monster type in the game is like the red spiders of scalies. And there, there's a lot of density there, which is why it's so good, partly. And ball lightning just lags out, basically. So ball lightning kind of has the damage, but I think it's a bit worse in Hoda, but it also has a lag problem. How did it change its feel? Very good, I gotta say. At least on the lower end. Like the, you get much more glyphic speed now, it's much easier to farm the lower tiers. I think that was a pretty good move that they did there. I'm gonna try to push my barb yet. And I did, did like half an hour of barb, I did like a tier 8, like first try with double swing. Kinda nice. But I'm also kind of scared to push the bar because there's like bugs where you just die under certain circumstances in hardcore. There's like multiple bugs. There's like one that I cannot really prevent. I guess I could try, but it's gonna be kind of scuffed. I'd have to move my fortify entirely. Which is kind of bad because then we have like much to pick up on the bar tree. Sounds like it's a real end game. Can't wait for next week patch. <laughs> <laughs> What's the bug on Barb? Now it's like a bug of fortify. So when you have fortified, you can just die straight for your chi death. Like even when you're when you're not even taking lethal damage, you can just die when you are fortified and you get stunned. Apparently that happens on softcore as well. But on softcore, I guess people don't really you know notice so much. But yeah, it can happen on hardcore and then boom. So. And yeah, I mean, there are, you know, like, the Bloodseekers can stun you. Um, you know, certain monster types, like the Snakes, stun you a lot. You know, there's like uh, the, the Kazura. I'm not sure if it works only on stun or on like, any crowd control. It might work on other crowd controls as well. And there's a lot of crowd control going on here, based with like, all the elite affixes on Bloodseekers and their skills and stuff. And then, yeah, F. Yeah. But people keep losing their Hauka characters left and right right now because of these bugs. What's the sudden AOZ? Uh, you try to farm like a tier that it can complete like, you know, comfortably in like 3 to 5 minutes, I'd say. So for most people, it'll probably be somewhere between like tier 4 to tier 9. Try to avoid like the multiples of 5 because there's like a bit of a breakpoint. Has Blizzard said anything about 45 bug death? Nope. Was the press not supposed to be removed? Only the Bloodseeker suppressors. Normal suppressors are still there. Oh, attack speed, lucky hits, pen shot. Should we save this glove for like a pure pen shot world? Is that like a thing? Not sure. My eyes can only watch so much. Time to respect. I'm gonna do a pen shot again, guys.
I haven't played Diablo 4 in 11 days. I've been playing a while. Season of Discovery. Yeah, Season of Discovery looks really cool. And if there's extremely low level cap, it would be very easy to get to like level cap and do a bunch of stuff. And then kind of like wait for the next patch, right? Maybe I'll jump in at some point. Did they say like when the next patch is coming? When they like raise the, the level cap and stuff? Okay, so there's Rana here, number six, cheap shot, tricks, cunning. Let's see. Let's see, I have to remove this stuff. Okay, what uh, number is this? This is number three. Which I also have here. So we could just keep this as it is pretty much. Although I puffed in from this side, and here we're puffing out on this side. Which does not really matter, right? Two, four, six. Actually, I think this is. Oh, we, we do three sides here. Okay, so we puff out there. Sure, I guess. So we do four cunning, five exploit, and then six Lerana. Is this number six? No, it's number No points. We really have efficacy. Diminish. Might not need diminish that much, if you're honest. I could do versatility, which I think I actually had here. Okay. No of end for this.
Kinda strange. Okay. Let's see what he can do. Wanna we'll get this? I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's all points. Not sure where they're going to come from. So not a good good here. I could do canny. It's non physical damage. It's fifty seven percent and then ten percent. Which is probably basically the same as like versatility. Or what do we have there? Effic efficacy. Yeah, this is definitely better. Ten percent. The armor and everything. Very strange to put an ink lift there. The way this looks. Two, four, six. How's my armor? 14,800. Okay. Okay. So I remove this and we put trick shot on it, right? And go fist of fate. These are current gauntlets. Cold and shadow, fire, cold, poison. Fire, cold, poison. Wait, you have two times the same boots. Oh, it's a shared misery. Okay, here. Wait. They all have the same risk. Fire, cold, poison. And funny enough, they're all rolled to poison as well. What the fuck? What happened here? <laughs> okay. Hmm. Let me check which one is the easiest to roll. This has Ravager, this has Shell Misery, and this has Ravager again. And we need... Yeah, we need Ravager on the boots, actually. I have Colts. But this is cold shadow, so this doesn't really work anyway. Fire, lightning, poison, cold shadow. I think this is more like it. I have the wrong thing on it though. Okay, we're easily in territory where we can run iron skin and we're gonna be capped. It's okay, no fist of fate here right now. Oh actually it's weird as we have a condemnation here. Is that an upgrade? Compared to the one I was using all this time? The percent doesn't matter. Has a lot more basic attack speeds. Crit doesn't matter that much. Core doesn't matter. 
Finish of Duel is fine. A bit more DPS. It's actually a better combination here. Yeah. I was wearing the wrong one. Seven fifty-seven tier nineteen. That's sick, dude. Holy shit. I think twisting blade split is bad and poison pen for high tier. Uh, I thought so initially, but it seems like it's more even. You will be there. The stars okay, we need to try to find like another chest armor. This is lightning and shadow and damage reduction, but it's only eight hundred. This is kind of bad. Fire poison close. That's not bad. It's made a like cold lightning shadow. No. No. This one has cold close distance with pretty good rolls. Kinda like this chest here. Yeah. It's pretty high roll and everything. It's nothing we do this. So the question is, do we gonna uh, are we gonna do umbers or mites? I guess we. Cheese is nice. I think I'll keep the thirty-seven point seven point five here for now. Maybe replace this with umbers. Umbers is kind of strong. Okay, what's my resistance is anyway? I have to do this. 29, 29. That's actually so close, I just realized. My lightning is not capped because this is too low. Fuck. It's actually kind of sad. But could we fix this? Fire, cold, poison. So, what if we just take one of these other boots? Oh, we need 40%, not 30. Yeah, so we can't do it with the gems. We're not going to be kept on lighting either way or what? Wait. Dude, this lighting roll is just too low. That sucks. There's a damage reduction on injured. And attacks reduce the weight cooldown. It's barbarian, so I can try to imprint this. It has fire, cold, lighting, remedy, poison, shadow. It says cold shadow. And fire, lightning, poison. They're all fire cold, fire cold, and fire cold, man. Blah. Let me check my mule. Ring with inherent lighting rest. Yeah, sure, let me just get another like 500 million gold ring real quick. That sounds easy. I'm gonna try a full puncture build on Darius on X Files and Bursting Venoms. I can try that for the memes if you want, but that's not gonna be much more than that. Okay, this is fire, cold, lighting, so I'm missing poison shadow. I have cold shadow on my chest. Man, who asked for that resistance upgrade again? 
Who was that? I need names. The season two patch of resistances. I have like 10 different pair of 15 boots, man, and none of them fit. <laughs> and on some of them I can actually roll a res. That's insane. Hey, Helen. This one could be fine, but it's only 794. But if I take this and I roll... Uh, Fire, I guess. No, wait. It doesn't. It me more speed. Fire poison. Okay, this one might work actually. It has the attacks reduce the weight cool damage. It's probably fine. I think I'll try this one. You have to roll it to. Uh, Lightning. Now it's time for Bulldog, Kane, Wolf. Running off Bulldog. <laughs> How's the new hotfix? Ah, uh, it's much easier now to complete Avatar on the lower end. Okay, this thing has perfect rolls here, so we should be fine. So you get lighting on this thing. Cold, shadow, fire, poison. Yeah, well, perfect roll for a movement speed on eat kill. Twice in a row, almost. <laughs> that would actually be ridiculously good as well. But yeah, not, not for what they're doing here, I guess. Here's lightning. Is that enough? Missing 14. Oh, it's going to be really tight. Is there a spreadsheet for Glyph? Uh, I might have just opened somewhere. Some Rob. Here on the second tab. My eyes can only watch so much. You need steel work? Let's see the bar make that. 69.4 lightning rest. Wonderful. Missing 0 0.6, man. Which may or may not happen when I start putting more points here. Okay, let's pop an elixir and see how my resistance. Uh, my my uh, armor looks. Fourteen thousand, so we are a bit overcapped of Felix here. Let's move this and this and this and this. Thirty point seven. This is only four points. Six thirty nine, we miss the one and two. So you get two points somewhere. I guess the only way to do this would be here and here. Okay. Gotta try a few more rolls and see if we can get higher. We rolled the same lightning res again. Oh my god. <laughs> That's kinda hilarious actually. I mean maybe I shouldn't overdo it. It's fine. It's half percent res. This is fine, fine. Poison's like way overcapped. Why is poison so crazy? What the fuck? We have poison and poison, this is why actually. <laughs> okay. Could get away without poison, just putting like one gem actually. 
have like one more damage reduction mod as well. We have like a like another pair of boots that has like fire, lightning, something. But they all have like poison, right? Actually, they have rolled poison. But I need another chest for that as well. I have to put back a few armor rolls for uh, the missing, a few armor paragon things. I don't really have the points for that. So I think I'm gonna try this. I have explosive worth on this for some reason. There's a rabbit germ. Okay. Oh my god, I need to unequip this thing. Everything is fucking lit up here. I don't think I need this. I'm gonna keep the deadly venom there. Maybe siphoning strikes. Uh, I think I keep the siphoning strikes actually over this. Siphoning strikes will be a lot of healing actually in some cases. Go with this. Ah, uh, I didn't. I popped the iron skin like so now I didn't go for my fist of fate. So I'm gonna try it without fist of fate first a little bit. And this has the same powers. So minus two ferocity or eternity and plus two divinity. This is the same powers as CB. Make a slidic rogue build. Uh how about no? It's just live, yeah, since last night, actually. What do I give up for siphoning? Uh, I, I had like two points in Concussive here and like one point uh, from Innovation that I removed. So that gave me three points. I just left this now and see how it feels. There's a bug of Meta Ravenous that you may want to know about. And what is Axaya? It's not giving the correct attack speeds. With Meta and Ravenous. What do you mean exactly? The XP requirement from impossible to nearly impossible. <laughs> yes, <laughs> pretty much. Again, yeah, kind of sad about the lighting rest, but I'm willing to roll those boots a bit further. Let's see if I like the attacks reduce if I cool down more. So we lost a close and a distant reduction roll here. We have Harlequin. We lost a Might for Harlequin. And this needs to be an Umbers now. Let's put Umbers. So 
So he has two of them. This is Umbral, actually. Lots of Umbral. So let's take this. Uh, we could actually try it without Umbers first, but they don't have any Dark Shrouds. I need to actually pay attention if Umbers is better than Might. The meta proc servants doesn't give the correct attack speed. That is so weird. Do you have like some some movement speed penalty penalty while using metamorph? I mean, I'm not really trying to proc anything with metamorph to be honest, but I guess it happens, right? If you like have to use metamorph to trigger flowing veins and stuff like that, and randomly get a ravenous proc. That's <laughs> very weird. How can I do so many bugs into one vampiric power, man? Okay, so we got this. We got a Shaco. Trick shots. Uh, we have passive in points right now, actually. Yeah, this should be an X Files right now. I forgot about that. I wonder if that messes up my res now. It should not. Somehow I have. Wait, how? Is that twelve percent? Oh, it has forty-one all stats. It gives me one percent res. Huh? Easy. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna check that out in a second, Sario. Oh, actually, let's do it now. Also, we were talking about Andarios. So people are saying that Andario's pen shot can give you like like a million tick per target almost. If that's true, then Andario's like ne is like actually bis. Metamorph plus Ravenous is bugged. Okay, let me check it out, yeah. So Xaria. Must no bug. Okay, let me turn this on. We have a good song right now, but gonna wait for later. Xayo doing God's work again with some testing. Let's check this out. Only a bug with Ravenous and Metamorphosis that I just found out yesterday that I don't think is well known and is probably affecting a lot of people's characters because I know this is a very common combination for a lot of people to use. So what's going on here? Well, what I'm supposed to get is, it says Ravenous here, I'm supposed to get 63.9% bonus because I'm supposed to get 40% of my total movement speed. And if we look at my uh, attack speed right now, Need something we can see that my Coast attack perhaps. speed bonus is 29.4%. So if I start hitting the dummy here Goodbye. and I proc the buff here, then my attack speed bonus goes up to 93.4%. Three percent there. Can you hear that properly? If I and we can clearly see how fast I can attack here with this buff up here. So that's the little buff that you see right there. And I attack for it. So here's my kind of normal attack speed, and then there's my ravenous attack speed. Yeah. Damn, you have a now, nice voice. <laughs> let's see what happens when I use metamorphosis. To proc I forgot this. to cross the hills. So more than it's five two nine two seven hit chance, so it can proc it. So I go through, I proc it. And now notice that I'm not attacking much faster. I'm attacking a little bit faster, but not anything like, again, if we look back at this attack speed, all right, way faster. Right. So let's actually look at the stat sheet and see how much attack speed I'm getting. So I go through, I check out my stat sheet here, and I'm only at 53.3%. Now there's something even worse here, which is that if I proc it using metamorphosis, and then I start attacking Does and I'm touching it, like so, by heading, that my attack speed doesn't go back up to what it should be. It's still <laughs> bugged. So in order to unbug it, I would Beautiful. have to actually stop attacking, wait for this buff to go off, 
and then <laughs> this is so I scuffed. My, I mean, the good thing is both my pen so shot my and my TB build actually I'm not gonna run uh, I'm gonna run a cross touch instead of metamorphosis anyway, but this definitely seals the deal. Thing here at 53.3%, so I'd have to actually let this buff go off and then start attacking, and now I get the correct attack speed bonus. So what is going on here? How is this working? Well, if we go into our vampiric powers here, then what's actually happening here is instead of getting 63.9%, uh, if you do the math, I'm only getting 23.9%. I'm not getting 40%. I'm using 40%. So what's fuck. happening is that it's only scaling off of my bonus movement speed and not my base movement speed. So if I go into my uh, stats here, my movement speed is 159.7%. So I'm only getting a gain of 40% of the 59.7%, not the 159.7%. The 100% base movement speed so doesn't... So basically while you're so evading what, so with Metamorph, you don't have the base movement speed. And it's probably it's kind of funny. Character a lot. So you're going to have to... I mean, if I'm if I'm honest, I think that Metamorph having any lucky hit is actually a bug anyway, and this is like forgot to remove that. They kind of like did some weird, you know, abomination of like an evade thing that is actually a skill, but not really. And somehow it ended up having a lucky hit, and you know, some builds abuse that really hard. And for this, in this case, it's actually like a downside, funny enough. Play around it, or stop using Metamorphosis, and make sure. Is that, that moment. <laughs> you are using it, that when you go into a fight, that you make sure you proc Ravenous first before you Actually feels pretty good right now. If you guys want to make sure that you guys hear about all the other tips and tricks as I find them out, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Okay. Nice short little video. Yeah, so you miss exactly... And how much you get of your... You miss 40% you said, right? Yeah, you miss like the base attack speed. Yeah, the uh, base movement speed, forty percent of your movement speed you get. That's hilarious. And then it snapshots. That's the best part, man. Like if you, okay, have, Xavier, have you tried um, getting ravenous first and then snapshotting the, the the normal ravenous and then metamorphing around? Does that work? I guess that should probably work as well, right? It is rough. Yeah. Actually, that was a nice run here. 127, but I was even like half FK. Interesting stuff. I want to see also the video about uh, Andarials. Uh, I'm going to link this in chat, by the way. There's a little Sario here. He's doing a lot of testing and stuff. So he's on the Ariel video. Here I'm attempt. I'm just like a full build guide though. Okay, I don't wanna like listen to a full build guide. Have you done like, any like actual testing where you can see like just the testing on Darius? Or is it like part of the Here video I'm somewhere? Attempting. Is it like timestamps? Let's see. Why on Darius? That's what I wanna see. One thing is that you might wonder like why am I using in Darius? Why not Shaco? And I'll demonstrate just how well this actually works with our setup. So if you've never used Andariels, basically Andariels, it has That's this Andariels on YouTube right now. Hit it'll be 20% chance to chat. do a Poison Nova, which does some damage. And if I just hit Bob is at 50? Like so, Damn. that's the proc that you see there. And it does maybe about 20,000 damage if I use my Tabalt Will and freeze the mob and get it to proc there. All right, well, now it's doing more, right? About 300,000. If I was to just like sit here and spam, then maybe we get it up to, let's see here, maybe around like a million or so. Right about there, so a million two hundred after some procs. So it does pretty pretty decent AoE damage, okay, but with the Tabalt Will and with Cunning Stratagem, when we use our Penetrating Shot, we have a 950% chance of the lucky hit. And what this Good will number. do is it'll actually proc it on all of the mobs, I believe. So pretty much every mob I hit is going to proc Andariel. So if I go like this and then I use it, 
Notice, boom, I'm already up to 2 million damage just off the one shot there. 2 million poison problems. Okay, how many did this hit now, though? if I so I could really kind of go at it here. 3, 4. Okay, let's see. And then I could add in poison in view there. And then we can really start getting our poison damage very high. Is that poison viewing, right? Yeah. yeah. And let's try that though without the poison damage. If I was to just go like so, no poison in view here, just in Dariel's. Alright, so we got to about a 5.7 million poison tick there. And that's just with five mobs here. Let's try that's this out towards here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to group up some mobs, and I'm just going to shoot them with just pen shot. I'm not going to use poison imbuement. No, so I'm not using poison Yeah, and I pull like this. And is this a spider map? we're still wrecking the mobs very quickly. And we can see what type of ticks are we getting here. It's not even here. spiders. So I saw, I think, up to about six to seven. Yeah, there's some six million ticks there going off, poison ticks. So even without using poison imbue, if we group up enough mobs, we get so many procs that... It does quite a bit of damage. All right, let's talk about how we start engagements so that we don't die right out the gate. Okay, so one thing that I like to do is I like to start with simply poison imbue. And I like to basically hit the mobs and then shoot them once. Boom, like so. And what this is going to do is it's going to spawn a bunch of poison bursting venoms and it's also going to freeze the enemies. And this is going to get our armor stacks up immediately as well as freezing them and yeah, we don't actually pass it on pinch us the following so i'm doing right now well i'm pretty similar pace actually i was kind of worried that it would be like significantly slower playing pinch shot up, yeah. then i jump in playing pinch shot versus tb point, i mean now i can go just tb was also like around three minutes per run here this is like 235 or something buffs, and then i can just lay into them and then once you see them lose uh the free Okay, Xavier, what is like, the highest poison tick you've done with uh, only shooting with Andariels without pen, pen uh, without poison imbuement? That would be kind of interesting. If you have like done any kind of testing in like really large density. But this was kind of cool. Yeah, I'd really like to try Andariels if I had one, man. But I don't. It's bad. Back to Durial Farm. <laughs> For Gravenous regularly, we apply Gravenous Metamorph with Silver correctly. Okay. So the Metamorph bug that we saw earlier, so it's just like, okay, Gravenous Snapshots. It's kind of like how Flurry one-shots, right? Uh, snapshots. If you if you just get one combo point Flurry, and then you lose like a free combo point Flurry, it snapshots the one as well. Actually, there's like a second bug with Flurry. I'm not sure if that was actually fixed. I reported this like a long time ago to Blizzard, and I think this is like filed as a bug. I'm not sure if they ever fixed it though. But there's a second bug where sometimes you get like both bonuses. You can have like a one combo point and a three combo point bonus sometimes. But you cannot combine two combo points or something. It's very strange on Flurry. That's some really weird shit. But you can combine one and three sometimes. But only in the right order. I think you have to do one and then three, but you can't do three and one or something. I did eat my spaghetti and meatballs, yes. They were amazing. Open will be. <laughs> Wait, is that the Xario? Thanks for the sub gifts. We have Doombring and Coronation with us Blade Dance Cigar. Uh, on Glove or Ring? I mean, you have. Pestilent points, Percy Venoms, Blade Dancer, and then Corruption on the 200. So if you run x -Files Ring, you have to drop x -Files Ring on uh, TB. I guess the cool part about Adaris is also like for these kind of runs here, 
It actually had a kind of consistent like poison damage output as well. Like here, I just like shoot, Rock and Darius a bunch, and have a bit more AOE clear. Feel. Because sometimes I actually run out of poison beams when there's like just like two spread out enemies. Spaghetti Bolognese is superior. I like Spaghetti Bolognese as well. But it's basically the same stuff, you know, it's like almost the same kind of meat. Slow run here. I'm gonna try some T8s or T9s and see how all that feels on this build actually. Got a soul brand, guys. Wow. Hey, Jerusalem. That's a 923 soul brand. Certified non durial drop. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Anita. Yeah, I'm keeping track of the time a little bit. We're doing eight now. Good monster set. Oh no, it's not. I thought I see red spiders. I thought it's like the GG one, but it's not. It's a snakes fallen spider combo. Is he easier? Yes. I reduced monster damage by 20% and made also the first nine tiers a lot easier. So, just more tanky in general. I'm running Shaco now as well. I'm gonna try Shaco a bit on the higher tiers as well. Maybe that's just gonna be like nice to like squeeze out uh, another tier or so. I'd really like to do a 15 or a 16. Maybe we're gonna push a bit later, guys. But for now, I'm gonna use my elixir a little bit. Because it's uh, running for a while. And then I'm gonna like relock and see what kind of Fist of Fate I have, because I wanted to try Fist of Fate. I don't think I have a perfect Fist of Fate this season yet, actually. And it feels so much fun to play this build right now. I mean, not that I dislike DB, but I think this has become my favorite build now on the Rogue. It's so cool. Actually playing some range with like, you know, a dynamic playstyle. I 
think I want to go mind aspect though. It's okay. Did the update come out? Yes, update is out. That's okay, I'm an Albert. Got our official powder. Yeah, do the reset strats. Just like go out, wait five minutes, go in again, and resets. But you can't have a portal. So you have to like run out basically. Or the P to like a waypoint. We get a flurry build that's viable next season. Yeah, flurry is definitely a bit on the lower end on Rogue. I wish that would improve a little bit. Jump in and get knocked down immediately. Rebrap is a favorite build. It's all super fun as well. I like it as well. As well. At least in the current meta, it's like too slow, I think. Like, you know, so many builds have like insane screen clear and stuff, and flurry rapid fire. Like, you have to build the calm points, and you know, you have to do single target damage, and yeah, okay. It's very small AOE though, melee. It's kind of like a downside of this thing. At least with Hoda Bob, you have a kind of like a similar small AOE, but they like, kind of like just like one bonk stuff, right? You don't do like combo points and all that. And then, well, Hoda also has like times 50 the damage, I guess. So, let's not forget that. It's a fast one, yeah. For a really bad map. There's a T8. This actually seems to go better than TB. Interestingly. I kind of expected TB to be like just better on farming, but this seems really fast. I'm gonna try T9 after this, like a few more runs. Let's see. To be fair, I do have a Shaco equipped now, which um, makes me a bit stronger. Which is like easy for the farming tiers, I guess. Rogue stronger than Druid this season. Uh, because it will bug, it is. Yeah. Without it, it wouldn't really be. Another 8. What about Eisenbeer instead of Dash? On Rapid Flurry? You could do it if you wanted, yes. But I like the speed.
Jo, look at that progress. <laughs> I wonder if I can do a sub 2 minute run at some point, man. On a really good run, I think it's possible. Get like enough leads and stuff. Oh. Like a nice artillery shrine somewhere, so have, like some speed and like better clear. Like 2 minutes, tier 8 would be sick. What recently? Uh, no. I'll just do like, you know, chill farming runs basically. I just respect to pen shots like, you know, half an hour ago, so I'm just like trying this out a little bit. Whoa! Oh, here we go. <laughs> Yo, the Sorak man. <laughs> but I didn't have any CC on them. Fuck. <laughs> so much about that. Wow, the frozen orb, man. Perfect hit. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Uh, I'm running out of scrolls, so I gotta be careful. I should not lose them on. I, I accidentally a fat finger one earlier, and now we lost one. Boy, they're like very far. Yeah, they one-shot me because I didn't have um, any CC up on them. I didn't have this debilitating toxins, I didn't have cheats, I didn't have slow damage reduction. So how much did I lose actually from all those? That's debilitating. Right. And then cheats, and then... Okay, I'm not sure if I had um, Umbers, I probably didn't have Dark Shrouds either. What is this? 90.2 and then 2, 2. What else do I lose? Uh, exploit weakness, I guess. So 1, 2, 3 and 8. Anything else? No, no, no. Yeah, so we take triple damage when I don't do anything to them. Yeah, so it wouldn't be so bad if I had hit them with anything. But it's like triple damage. So this is why. And also it was distant on top of this. I have a lot of close damage reduction. I have close here. Okay, I've only one close roll and this has nothing. But yeah, this will be like another, like... It's like almost quadruple, basically, at this point. Like, if I'm face tanking them, I take like a quarter of the damage. <laughs> With like everything up. And this guy just walked up to me and did a frozen orb and one shot me. I think I really have to do something about like all these conditional damage reduction effects. I don't think there should be so many conditional damage reduction effects, like this close, distant bullshit, and you know... Like some of these conditional damage reduction effects just scale so much. And they're not consistent enough, I think. Wait, off home. My eyes can only watch so much. The game is too conditional in general, yes. I mean, I think the atomization we work in Season 4 is probably gonna, like, help a lot of that. But, yeah. I wonder if they're gonna even, like, take care of something like this close and distant damage reduction and stuff. Is that cap on damage reduction? Nope. Damage reduction on Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah. 
Why do I always proc it in like pretty much the last round that I'm trying to do, by the way? It always happens like near the end when I'm like kind of done. I want to like relog and stuff. Okay, iron skin. No, we want scroll. We have 13 scrolls only. Uh oh. It's not very much. I guess I could have ran away to the bottom instead of using the scroll. They were like both far away. I could have just dashed away, I guess, but. Vampires have crazy damage after the nerf. Yeah, we just experienced that. God, this is far. And the level sorg to rebuild scrolls. Yeah, I mean, at some point you kind of have to. And I definitely want to keep a few like leftover scrolls because, you know, if you keep patching stuff, I definitely want to be ready to like jump into abattoir. But there's like another argument to like run might aspect instead of umbers aspect. So I wonder if I should have put the umbers on the amulets. For a 90% chance, it would help me a bit with. Uh, with rapid fire procs, I guess. Actually, I don't want to see like how realistically can I get Umbers procs. Well, which out it it's always going to head up stomp me like one shot again. Not the frozen orb. Oh, that sucked. Let's try a 9. I want to see if I can actually farm 9s comfortably on this. Ah, oh, he's another Umbrus. Good roll. Do we have a Might Aspect? This is 6 seconds. 6. We have a bunch, actually. So, why not? Wait, how did this umbers just become 58? It was 57, and now it's 58 when I extracted it. What? Oh no, it was 87, right, on Amulet. Okay, it was 87, now it's 58. Okay, never mind. It was at times 1.5. And then the rounding, no decimal. Okay, here's 87 again. Okay, so this... Let's do this. Everything is fine here. Okay, let's do like 89 and see what happens. Did I try the Kaldos Fissure combo? Uh, very briefly, and then I was like, nope. I mean, there's two problems with that. Number one is you jump around when you do Kaldrops. Number two, 
you can barely make monsters CC it anyway. Like, you know, you have only 5 seconds of CC until elites become unsolvable. It's not very long. So you want to use that just like DPSing as much as you can, basically, instead of like, you know, going in and, uh... You know, like, stuff... Like, you know, you walk in and then they're, they're dazed and then you have to do a like, drops and then you have to jump, shadow step in again and then, you know, like... One and a half seconds have already passed, you have like three and a half seconds left to actually deal damage. Like, it's like very scuffed. And it's like just really inconvenient to play as well, so... And you also lose six skill points that you have to get somewhere. Or like, I don't know, at least three skill points, I guess, for Fridget. It's just like scuffed, man. How does he use an aspect or so that removes the jump and then it's actually a good skill? Or an, up an upgrade even on the skill would be nice. Well, did it just like jump into the firebomb and it was just fine? Looks like it. Yeah, T9 seems a bit too slow, yeah. Kinda like consistently just like one tap stuff, even when I don't get tables with blocks and stuff. Which is a bit of a downside. I think for farming, Fist of Fate is also not to play. Because it's just too inconsistent. But for pushing, it could be really nice. Yes. Okay, I lose my armor now. Uh, in like a minute or so. So let's see if we can finish this one. Also, we're gonna be in danger here. Hopefully, hopefully we don't get too many rogue or barb bloodseekers. Yeah, T9 doesn't feel convenient here, it's like over 3 minutes already. Kinda shitty monster set, okay, but it's gonna be like at least a 4 minute run. Better like, pretty chill sub 3 minutes on T7 or 8. I feel the ramp up here. Right now. Protection shine though. But I cannot click. I took up on FK armor. Not that good. I'm probably taking like roughly double damage right now from physical. Barb to tier 24 already. Looks like 25 will be done soon. Nah, I don't think so. Where's the 24 clear? Can I see that? Is that a video? 24 is crazy. But 25 is not happening, I think. Apparently there's like some insane HP jump in 25 compared to 24, so... I'm not that FX is not bugged anymore. That was fixed. 24 just got cleared. Can we see that? 
happened live. Ralph is watching a Chinese streamer. <laughs> That's cool. Times 25, tier 24 HP. Yes, <laughs> I don't know how much, but it's a lot for sure. Yo, yeah, Napster, thanks for having us. But is there like a, something special on the build, or is it just like this whirlwind holder thing? Level 50 glyphs gives 250 and damage increase. Yeah. Wait, that's actually more than what we have on this. Wait, really? 250? With like the bigger radius as well, right? This says free, yeah? I guess it's a total damage though, right? Does this this showing you the total damage? So times three. Which board is this on actually? This is twenty-two nodes and then two and two, I guess. And this is twenty-eight nodes and then two and two. So it's six more nodes. So I'm not sure which um which board it took here. Let me see this. So probably cheap shot board because there's 28 nodes. No, mate. He probably took like this board or something. Chinese guy did it with keyboard and mouse. How come that he's pushing like four tiers higher than like what we've seen here? Like what is it what is happening? Okay, got a 290 first of fate. I guess that is acceptable. How do you use the weight cooldown with skill? I'm using flicker step. You don't have to use flicker step for the cooldown reduction. Any boots can have that. It's the attack reduce weight cooldown mod. Is that the twisting blades? Nightmare Dungeon T100 push. You're struggling. Uh, what's happening, Napster? Hold above the 24, apparently, in China. And these buffs glyph does 350% damage increase. <laughs> Wait, he has like an insane glyph already done. Then he must be like way past level 50 already, what the fuck? So he's probably also doing similar to what like Bob is doing, I guess, with leeching from people. The self grinder does like no way. Yeah, there's like a, a difference of a mouse and keyboard and controller with the woven thing. Apparently you can like animation cancel the whirlwind better on controller and uh, do like faster spins or something. And get your get your stacks faster and do more attacks basically if you play with controller. Rob has 170k attack power out of combat. Yeah, it just looks like really lo a lot of it. I mean like grandfather contributes a lot to that and a high level glyph and stuff, this is why. The tweaking, the animation to make hold animation lose 0 0.2 seconds. Oh, 0 0.2 seconds is a lot, honestly. It's a lot more holders. Do we have like a perfect trick shot somewhere? We have but one here. Okay, so we can Take my other ring and then put trickshot on it. This one instead of pestilent points. 
Although it has resource generation, man. We don't need the resource generation. We quit life. Yeah, this resource is pretty useless. This thing would be nice, but you have to just a super low crit roll on it. We have another ring. Should try to buy one from trade. If I can get one. That's like close, life, crowd, crit. Yeah, don't have one. Did it open this already? No, right. Yeah, let's try a tier 10. I don't see how the tier 10 compares to the tier 9 we just did and stuff. We have to put like another iron skin in there. Such poor equipment. Let me help. Let's do this. So we can't do 42 anymore. The 10 is unchanged, minus 20% damage, yes. The 10 plus is all unchanged in terms of almost HP. I would try TB yet. I just respect back to Penchant actually, but the last two days I was playing TB. But I like Penchant more. It's more enjoyable. I'll start doing a bit tanky. Let's still really chill around here on good map with these monster type though. Duplication glitch. Uh, I know there has been like a new loop from like a few weeks ago, which I'm not sure if it has been fixed yet or not. But I guess it's just that also like you know now people don't really farm the that much anymore compared to before because everyone is doing AOZ all the day I guess. Maybe this is why people are trying to sell it cheaper. 
because demand has really dropped now. Also people are quitting because AOC is not really enjoyable for them. That's actually an extremely chill T10 I'm doing right now. So weird to not look at the Apex anymore and then, you know, check for Empiric. Rose me, man. It's like a four minute run or something, right? Or four and a half. Pretty good. <laughs> Crossbow is 840. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Shade Slayer. Is there any tips to find better gear? Nah, it's just like. You know, large numbers basically, the more loot you find, uh, at some point you're gonna get some good good loot. Duel is not necessarily the way to get up, unless you do like literally like a thousand runs or something, then you're gonna get some good loot from Duriel eventually, outside of getting lucky. It's just like, you know, find many items and check them out. Keep doing 11. Build is online, yeah. Let's make sure my build. And again, yeah. You know, I don't like it. Is Poison Rock a good one to use on Darius? Yeah, we actually just like checked that out earlier. So on Darius with this build in particular here, it seems really strong, especially for pushing. Like high tiers of big density and stuff. Okay, we're doing 11 now. Let's see. This is Skellies. Uh, seems like GG Monster Dive. Or what's the combo? Oh, it's a cold spider. Okay, I gotta be careful here with cold spiders. But it should also be a red be. I wonder if I can one shot in 11 right now on this map. Lagging. Is it the same leg from earlier or is it just because of end shot now and density? I'm not sure. I found a 15 miss. I can feel lag. But yeah, looking at this man, I'm destroying. Should run a T15 later. Somehow I messed up with my poison reset F. That was my protection shrine man. I'm 
actually destroying it, even these uh, elites here in like 3 4 shots or something. It's insane. Why is my damage so high? Poison proc man, what? Oh my god, I'm messing this up a lot. So pretty comfortable, like one shot there. We're like two minutes ahead now. But they're starting to get tight again. This is like an okay monster type right now because I can actually survive the spiders. I do have to play a bit more defensively though, like this. Yeah, they still hurt. God, man. There's one spider here in the corner, man, blasting me. Oh, wait, am I running the right poison upgrade actually? Not sure. Do I have mixed poison endurance? I think so. Always beautiful having suppressor and dude there's so many elites there. We miss 
<laughs> you need to kill like one of them or something. <laughs> gonna head Iris. Holy shit. Look at the, look at the progression. <laughs> That's an Iris. I don't think I wanna do one with three here right now. Okay, let's see actually, what do we have? Okay, we were running mixed. Oh, they all stopped. Oh my god. Great Walla. Maybe 1v2 is okay, but I don't think I want to do 1v3 right now when I pushed here. It's been like one minute of just running. Nice. Okay, let's try this. Okay, that works, I guess. Let me make sure that there's like no shadow enchanted or something. Shadow enchanted are kind of dangerous. man yeah i walk out of the door and he just walls me in <laughs> it was crazy <laughs> maybe i could do one three as well but it's kind of greedy i think with harlequin equipped but without it maybe i could kind of ravages i'll save that one When the new SD updates coming out? They, are, they came out yesterday, actually. Like 20 hours ago or something. I'm running Iron Skin, yeah, for the armor. So I still have 19.6k 9, 9, life, which is kind of nice. And then Iron Skin for the armor. So yeah, I can only sustain the armor with Iron Skin right now. There is a way to do this. And you have like perfect armor rolls on Amulet and Chess. And then skulls, and you get like all the armor nodes here, and you buff them with like you know, buffing glyphs and stuff. I'm actually doing that already here and here, but it's very hard to hit that armor requirement. So yeah, I can pick up something like this here, and then you could like go all the way up here and get this glyph. And even then, I mean, this is 350 base armor, and then 400, 500, 600. 650, 750, yeah, and then we are almost there. Or if you buff this one again, like if you put like another buffing glyph on the Cunning Spider Gem board, I would have to move the entire exploit weakness board. We also lose again, like 150 armor there. Hello. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's possible that armor cap on Sorg? You can, but. Not realistically with like good gear, because usually you have like tables and shako or whatever. If you have like endgame setup, or you have meta tower stay like even. Some both socks are running that. You can do it with disobedience. So that's like what most socks do, I think. Okay, let's try it at 12 again and see if we can do this first try. But we're getting to a point where it probably counts as like one shot like a tier 12. But let's see. And we have cannibals, vampires, oh boy. This is probably not doable. Let's see. 
good over map at least, so maybe I can ignore the vampires and just kind of like focus on the other stuff. But there's not too many vampires at least. this as well. How much time should we have for the vampires? Like two minutes? If they're not like super dangerous vampires, I guess like two minutes is probably fine on this tier. But like one, maybe two, one pack and then like kill the other guy alone or something. A single lead pack so far. I have only six potions. I think I forgot to refresh, refresh my potions, so let's see if I can solve this. Oh my god, man. Here come the vampiric and the vampire. Like, all these guys are vampire elites, man. F. Let's go try to hit his uh, blood boy somehow. I'm still getting ahead though, interestingly. Fuck it. Oh, I got like a na nasty knockdown there from the goat when my shadow stuff was on cooldown for two seconds. Ah, that was a bit greedy. But look at what he got, guys. I can't open it. What monsters do I avoid in hardcore? I don't avoid hardcore. I don't avoid the ghosts very much in hardcore just because they're ghosts. I just avoid them because they suck. Just make it play too defensively. I can't do the ghosts. They're just not good for pushing. Hmm. Scrolls, scrolls, uh oh. But we're actually on a pretty good path here. This was not, not such a good monster set. The map is really good. It's like the best map, I think, even. I would say. I like the temple map. Monster set is kind of mediocre. The cannibals with goats. And vampires, man. Vampires are actually really bad. And I was going. I was on a good path to like kind of one shot this tier twelve. If I, if I hadn't died there, I would have the damage to do it. But we are playing a kind of greedy, squishy setup. I want to try the fist of fate though. Maybe do it now. How much armor do you lose? Oh, they have the same armor. We change Galif and TB Rogue. Come 
Uh, Glyphs are really touched on TB Rock, I think. Okay, we have 41% damage proc. Nah, actually, this is. It's actually not that little now that I think about it. 41%? It's like 4% DPS. So, I'd say this kind of makes up for the loss of attack speed roll. We have the resource proc that does basically nothing. I guess you can move this one point here if you want. You get something else instead. Good alchemical advantage. Although... Hmm. That's like a focus and crit knockdown. Wait, we don't have weapon mastery. I only have two points there. Okay, I guess you do that. And then if they immobilize in the days. I think the immobilize and the days might actually be downsides. So I have to be kind of careful. I have to pull stuff together first and then do my thing. But okay. And I think I was gonna like take my ring now. My stats on the ring are actually way better, right? If I use like my normal ring. This has life, which I now don't have. And then a crit, which I right now don't have. We lose cooldown and lucky hit. Both of these are pretty irrelevant. We gain resource, which is irrelevant. We lose all stats. Okay. So we're going to miss this like half percent lighting rest, right? So let's see how this works. And this resource generation could be a close damage or vulnerable damage, I guess, would be even better. Crit, crowd, life, one would probably be the best ring. And I think instead of the 25 trick shot, we're gonna put a 24 trick shot. We have like a 24 somewhere on this ring. And then we'll see how it feels. And if it feels good, I'm gonna put like the 25. Or we're gonna try to buy another ring and put a 25. So much like it on a glove. Yeah, it's kind of funny. No witchcraft here. Only honest magic. All okay. Should we try another 12? I'm gonna try another 12. Let's just see what happens. Hello, Yangye. Oh. What was the timer when I get out? I think I was like over five minutes already, right? Oh, we can check if it's reset, actually. Can grab a bit of incense. Let's get ten. Shots MC not playing out. What's a better drill build? Pulverize or Tornado? Yeah, Pulver and Tornado are pretty close, and Shred wins. Oh, it is reset. Okay. Oh, we got snakes. Snakes and vampires, let's go. Kek. Yes. Okay. It's like really bad. It's like one of the first, yeah. We have a good map, so let's see what we can do. Staggy again. We're like sliding around and shit. What the fuck? Why does that happen so often today, man? It's like the third time or something that I just like start lagging here. Look at this shit. Get insane. Oh my god, man, these fucking blood bonds. It's kind of surprising that we're actually on time here. With this bullshit. So maybe there is something to fist of fate here. 
I, I can't defeat this blood ball, man. Look at this. I can't. <laughs> it's insane, dude. Without poison, I have no chance. Yeah. Before I waste our time here, let's just reset this again. Let's open a nice plate. Do a five minute timer. It's like worst mobile type almost. Fucking vampires, dude. Yeah, Blood Boy is uh, insane, man. Like, I just shot like five pen shots on them, they got him to like half HP, and then eventually just despawn. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, I'll be a B, guys. Just gonna go to the bathroom and stuff.
Alright, I'm back. Did I bail into the TB runs? Yeah, I respect back to pen shot. I like pen shot just more. And it seems like they have kind of similar performance, so. I think I saw enough of pen with TB for now. And we had perfect 5 minutes timer, so let's go in. What's up, Josie? <laughs> A team with full pie, but only one in dungeon and the monster is tougher. I'm actually not 100% sure about this. I think if it's just in a party, the monsters are already scaling higher. Okay, this is a tier 12 again, guys. Let's see if we can do this. Really bad monster type again. Snakes and demons. I want to experiment with like a uh, fist of fate and see how it feels. Dude, fucking snakes. It's so weird to play with Fist of Fate here, I mean, you like, actually have only these like small fights and trying to finish off a guy or something. Even these like very long fights at the end when I'm just trying to kill them. It's like very RNG. And sometimes I get like these big nukes here and I just shoot into a pack and boom, direct triple damage. Take one, skip one, okay. Oh man. It's a bigger pulls or so, but it can't be really do this on this map. It's like so narrow. They're kind of staying on time though. This is a pretty good pull here. Maybe we can handle this. This is shrine. I don't see it. Pretty cool.
Actually, it just makes me realize. Is there... Is there like a double dipping of Fist of Fate and Poison Imbue? I wonder if there's something going on. Like, can he high roll a 300% roll? On the damage of the attack and then also get the 300% on the poison? I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, at this point. Because sometimes I feel like my poison just kind of like melts them really hard. And I don't understand why. And I wonder if this is actually what's happening right now. Yeah, this guy just got poisoned up from like 10% to 0 in like a second. After I did like a nice rapid fire nuke. I have to go investigate this on playing dummy at some point. Do it. Should be worth it, I think, with all these fucking snakes here. I think I reset the pack above. Which is a bit sad. So slow. Did it reset? It did, fuck. I'm too far. Oh, also I realized we get normal percent damage, right? It actually doubled up some poison. But that's another thing on the Fist of Fate. Ball. Two minutes. Maybe one of you on this guy? Oh. Should we try all three? It's gonna be a bit rough though. Somehow my, my scroll didn't go off and I pressed F1, even though it wasn't CC, that was kind of strange. Let me go to a testing dummy, I want to check this. I should have just tried like immediately 1v3 them. This was kind of shitty because he engaged me when I was not like, you know, set up really, I was prepared for it. Okay, let's take these things. Fates of Fate scale all attack damage 1 to 300, there's nothing isolated in single damage type. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm saying is, basically, I wonder if there's like a double dipping going on. Let's say I roll a Fist of Fate that rolls like, you know, 10% damage, like 0 0.1 on the attack. And I wonder if that same 0 0.1 applies to the poison itself to only give me like 1% damage of the poison, for example. Or if I roll like 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5 again, if I only get 25% of the poison. And similarly, if I roll a 300, if I get like, you know, a times 9 on the poison. So I want to see that right now. Let me see what happens.
Could try stopping in consumer for bosses or help split them. Yeah, I guess uh, you can like disengage them more easily. Yeah? That's true. It might be worth just having like one point in concealment. Actually, you can just do that, right? I have like Shaco, so I can just like swap in concealment and then split them. That's a good good point, actually, Xario. Thanks, casual bro, by the way, for the phones. Okay, so let's see. Oh, that's not too bursting venoms. I guess this doesn't matter. And we have this doesn't matter, this doesn't matter, this doesn't matter. Okay, first of all, what is my regular damage? We have like a bit of a diluted number because of the damage proc here, so I gotta be careful of that. A super boss. But let's see first of all how much damage do, do I do with just like shooting. Should I try this with pen shot or with rapid fire? Doesn't matter. Shit. Okay, 840 ticks. 220. 280. We also need to get the number of the hit itself. Also, let's move this. Let's move this. 20. Why is this guy? Okay. Let's reset this instance. Do I think the changes are enough? Hell no. Hello, Magnesium. Hello, Bassett. How has AOZ been so far today? Really good, actually. I went on TB for a while, drawing out the lower tiers and stuff, then I respect the pen shot. And uh, we actually were like able to like almost one-shot all the way up to tier 12 again. I'm like, trying with Shaco right now, and I'm also trying some stuff with Fist of Fate right now. I need to, like, uh, I want to see if there's like some double thing going on with Fist of Fate, so I need to, like, see first of all, like... Okay, how much damage do we do with, like, a pen shot? 730 non crits. You're going for non crits, right? Yeah, let's do non crits. 780. So Wait. Why do these like do 450 now and stuff? Is that because of resources? I don't have Edge Master's aspect. Why did the first few shots do like 530? Oh. 50. What? Why is that such a variance? And why is this guy not? No oh, fuck. Uh gonna equip some other pants. We need two divinity. Tassets of the dawning sky. Four, <laughs> 2 times 404. 410. 420. And now this is 560. It's like plus 40%, man. Where is that coming from? The fuck? Let's move this first of all. Okay, 
it seems like 330 to like 390 or so is like my pen shot damage. Okay, let's see the poison. 117. Uh, four. Kind of funny. So the shot that staggered the boss was not amplified, actually. So you do the damage first and then stagger it. Okay, I'm 15 again. Seems pretty cons consistent. Okay, so it's like 330 to 390 base pen. And like 100 to like 115 maybe, base poison. Okay, so now you're looking for a high roll with Fist of Fate. And you wanna see if, okay, if I hit like for roughly 1k, I wanna see how big the poison is. So it's gonna be like around 300, 350, or is it more than that? That's what you're looking for. <laughs> it's actually independent. I did 8 damage with my poison, after doing a 770 crit. And this was 480 and this is 24, so we did like a times 1.5 on the shot and we did like a times 0 0.25 on the poison. Interesting. Yeah, this was 1300 and we did 92. Wait, we got an actually insane high roll here. We get like pretty much base, uh, maximum on the pen, and we get less on the poison. So it seems like there's no double dipping. But I still want to see if I can see a poison over 400 damage. Here's 200. Yeah, it seems like the pen shot and the poison are rolling individually. Yeah. Yeah, I just did 92 damage to the pen shot and do 330 poison. <laughs> yeah, this was 17 pen shot and we do a regular poison, 100% roughly. Okay, it seems like there's no weird double dipping going on. They're just, they're just both roll individually. And that's it, I think. Like, even after all these shots, they have not seen anything above 300, really, on poison. I mean, then, like, then, like, one poison take that was, like, near Maxwell, I guess. Maxwell should be around 330. Here's a 309. Okay. Kind of interesting. It actually makes Fist of Fate relatively strong item, as long as you have like long fights, because it buffs the poison immune by on average fifty percent. Versus a regular glove that gives you four ranks to skills with a shaco equipped, it's only like twenty one percent damage, and it still buffs the base skill by roughly fifty percent as well, on average. But you lose attack speed and crits. Where's my other glove? So if we equip these gloves, we should potentially get up to like 300... Uh, no, sorry. 100 and we should get like 125 to 130 poison ticks. And the pen shot should be like 400 to... 450 or so. Like 160 poison. That's a bit higher than expected. 
There was an overpower, I'm not sure if that matters. It was a crit overpower, this. Ah, uh, 60 poison again. What the fuck? Ah, uh, here, 128. So I guess the overpower actually works. Did the overpower actually improve it? No, not, not exactly. I had like 160 ticks and now I had 130. It's not plus 50%. It's 140. Hundred eighty seven, what? Why is that so much? Maybe I didn't benchmark enough earlier. Nine twenty nine. Will I do any PoE today? Uh maybe. I might log into PoE here and there, but I'm not like super crazy on PoE right now. Okay, set this off again. Okay, it's also 136 sticks. Maybe it was a little bit too early though. Other than one. Other than 20. Okay, I think the conclusion is that there's nothing weird going on with Fist of Fate and double dipping. It's just that sometimes, like, basically your base shot can do little damage, but your poison still rolls high. So that's really the interesting part here, I guess. So I keep trying this a bit more now. Why is it sword helm, then the weapons, and then the pants? What kind of logic is this? Where's Bar B tier 24? Yeah, I was waiting for the link actually. Let's check it out. Is there like anything interesting to see? Oh, it's not a video. Is there a video here? Shako, Selec, Fury. Okay, it seems like standard holder. Pick all the stuff. It's not running a Doombringer. Is it running a low life build? Ah, oh, it's running low life build. Well. Yeah, here's resilience and this, okay. 6.5 million. <laughs> okay. Yeah, apparently, this guy has like a little 50 glyph already. He's having overpower damage instead of crit on his gloves, that's kind of crazy. But I guess it makes sense of Red Fury. Is he doing Whirlwind? Yes. I guess he might actually be able to get like Red Fury pretty much every holder, right? After spending 100 Fury in 3 seconds. So the holder itself costs like 70? Does that work? I guess it's just been barely long enough so that you have 100 and you have like a crit and overpower almost like I said. Now at least crit every time basically. So you don't need any crit I guess. Doesn't have crit there. Yeah. Billy Billy. Let's check it out. On a shitty map. I want to see how often he actually does not crit. I don't think I can up to quality. So what are the crits here? Yeah? Our power, 1.3 billion. Yeah, look at this. Look at how he's decimating these elites here. Yeah? 1.7 billion and stuff. 1 billion. Look how he's like decimating the elites. And then now see what Rob was doing. Well, it says something about bug there, by the way, Monka. Did he find some weird stuff or what? What is this? 
Barbarian King 2.1 full blood version. I guess full health. Oh, it's, it's not a low life build after all. He's not low life. 20 second floor, no lag. No lag, bug, world first. Ah, no lag, okay. Yeah, apparently, uh, apparently, I said something weird going on. If you lag out the game on purpose, you kind of deal more damage somehow. Dark side, I can investigate this with like, the pen shot clear that we saw. And apparently, the Asian servers are more laggy than the other servers, and somehow they can like, make use of that. But I'm not so exactly sure how that works. I hear 23, 24, so this one. 24 solo. Okay. Let's try this one. Twenty-four floor, no stuck bug. <laughs> First pass in the world already at the limit, far ahead. Okay. Ten minute run, so I guess it was like pretty close. I can't even identify what which ones of these are. I think these are poison spiders. I think it's skellies and poison spiders. Which I guess is pretty equivalent to skellies and uh, red, uh, the red spiders. Does anyone know what's going on with this lag bug? Exactly. Kind of funny, man, how much damage these guys do. Yeah, 850, 1.3 billion. And then, like, normal crits are like 50 million, you know? And then, when you overpass, it's like literally times 20. It's crazy. But even on this tier, it's like decimating the late zone in like half a minute or something. They use the lag to snapshot their stats. Okay, what stats are we talking about exactly though? Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what lag bug is. But there's some lag where somehow he would get like extra damage or something. Right to the end, he showed his damage is over 500k. So that's how he's doing like these high hits. Is there actually any holder that does not crit? No, right? He always crits with like this whirlwind plus holder combo. He always spent Hunter Fury and always crits. And he never non crits. That's crazy. Back to 850. I mean, if it's like in combat. Then 500k sheet damage is not necessarily. And this, this might just be a barb thing, honestly. And like the sheet damage is extremely high. You have grandfather, you have damage while berserking. You know, there's like a bunch of stuff that plays in there that gives him insanely high sheet damage. So is this like unusual? 400k? He has only 10.9k armor, man. What? The fuck? Yeah, I think this uh, sheet damage is probably not really anything special. It means not lag bug, it means not using bug. Yeah, I understand that, that he's not using bug. But I know there is a bug. There's like something, like you can lag out the game and you get like a benefit. But I'm not sure what exactly. Actually, it's 40 seconds left, man. Crazy. Now, it would be very interesting to compare this barb now going into T25. And in T25, it's just like, there's like no damage. <laughs> and he's, still, he's just crit for 4.4 billion there, casually, on the last crit. Man, Cosmic would be proud. 
Whirlwind Hoda, man. That's exactly Cosmic Pulse's build from D3. Now it's actually a thing. It's kind of hilarious. How long did it take for the Bloodseekers, actually? Uh, like a bit over three minutes. And he was actually playing this. He was playing this with Banished Lords, right? Or did he like, swap it at some point? And I see his health is moving. So he doesn't have Banished Lords, Talisman. Uh, he doesn't have a uh, Melted Heart of Static, I mean. Do you see any other class clearing 20? I mean, Sorks will do a 20, I guess. That's it, I guess. Rogue's gonna get somewhat close. No, he's like almost dying. Holy shit. Wow, look at his HP, man. He's like almost dead like three times. Yeah, he's actually trying to do all of them together. I guess he have to, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's just like a good thing, it. Because he's almost dying, man. He almost died while equipping it, too. Kind of funny. Wait, is it with controller or not? Actually. No, this is with a cursor. Okay, he's doing a cursor. Is it 24? Huh? He's missing house of his gear. He not buy and really farm. Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, you know, I have no idea. It's kind of likely that this guy is like, you know, buying gear or getting gear from people and uh, apparently he's at level 50 plus glyph as well, so he probably was leeching XP from people as well, as like, like Rob and stuff. So, I'm not sure how, how the community works in, in China. But when in doubt, they use everything they can. So, this is, this is usually how it works. At least on a high end. It's like a cultural thing. It's like kind of crazy. I was actually just like one freeing the Bloodseekers, but I guess Method Heart is pretty OP. It barely even takes damage. Like, all his resources. <laughs> he just tanks them. And then I guess once there's like only one or two left, he like switches back to Vanish Lords. I want to see when exactly. How oh, is he hitting this hard? Yeah, he's a barb, man. I don't think he has anything special in his setup. Just like, you know, perfect gear and everything. Level 50 glyph. <laughs> Wait, I wonder when he's switching. I guess once the two guys are dead, then it's like safe enough to switch back to Banish Lord Stalisman. He's watching. Right, hello. <laughs> These are actually Chinese guys, right? It's not, it's not Taiwanese, right? This is Chinese. Billy Billy. Kind of funny considering the game is not even released in China officially, right? Did he switch back to his amulet now or not? Oh, it seems like he did not. I guess he wanted to make it safe since he had enough time. He just made it safe, not, not switching the amulet. Oh, now I switch back. Yeah, it's crazy to see like the 4.4 billion at the end. I wonder if it's like a bigger crit. Probably somewhere he's doing like more than that, even probably over 5 or whatever. They can't play Blizzard games in China. Yeah, not officially, but people are still playing it, as you can see. Uh, GG, man. I would really like to see a clip of a tier 25, the same barb in tier 25 on the same monster type. I would like to see how uh, how that works. This is the live streaming side, right? This Doo Yin. Yeah, it's like the, the Chinese Twitch, basically. Ah, hello. <laughs> we can do a stream session now. 
Ni hao, guys. <laughs> okay. Well. Did Rob clear 20? No, Rob did not clear 24. Or oh, maybe he did now, I don't know. This, this is a Chinese clear here. I saw Rob in like a T25 and he could not, he could not do any damage to anything, man. T25 seems to have like some insane jump, so... Like if this guy... Like this is like basically as good as it gets, I think. Like... The map is good, this is the best monster type. He seemed to have decent pylons, decent RNG, he was fighting the Bloodseekers for only 3 minutes, like, it doesn't get much better than this. He had like 40 seconds left, which is good. But if uh, TF-25 is actually any noticeable increase in HP, which it seems to be, there's like no way that anyone can do 25, I guess, even with like a 40 stack glyph. If it's like more than like 100% HP jump, or 200%, I, would, I don't think we're gonna see a clear. T4 is available on Steam, and Steam is available in China. That's actually kind of funny. So is... Uh, is T4 sneaking into China with Steam now? It's kind of hilarious. But I mean, this is clearly, you know, way before that, right? Like, you know, people have been playing in Chinese servers already. I'm not sure how to do it, but yeah, apparently there's a way. Okay, Rob said the guy told him he needs 10 or 20 times more DPS to clear. Okay, that's... <laughs> Just get like another times 10, you know, or 20. It's fine. Good luck. Yeah, there's the achievement. Let me see the achievement again. Uh, is that here? Challenge? No. Where is it? It's a feat of strength, I guess. Yeah. Complete avatar of the tier 25. Why why does this exist? You know? <laughs> I wanna get this one though. This is a kinda cool title. But I have to play Bob for this. End to suffering is a cool title to be honest. How do you get that much DPS? Yeah, it's just like hold up Barb. Um there's like a new tech that people are doing where you spin with Whirlwind and then you do a smash. This guarantees your crit from your free or ring. And you also stack uh, Earth Striker, so you get like more guaranteed all powers. So you can do some big bonks, basically. And the rest is just like the typical overpower shenanigans that Bob's are doing. You see the bug of attack speed and vampire powers. Yeah, I saw that earlier. Okay, put this and. Oh, what did he remove here? Yeah. I think it was this and this. The fuck? Why are these projectiles flying here? From these NPCs? I don't think this is intended. Tension. <laughs> oh man. Okay, we have another. Wait, did I actually reset this thing? Apparently. A lot of people are bidding LZ25 with exploitive Sorg Hydras. Yeah, basically, what we were able to do is we were able to spawn Hydras and get infinite progression. And then, if you spawn the bosses exactly at a 10 minute mark, the timer bugs out and you have infinite amount of time for the Bloodseekers. So you don't have to kill anything, you just spawn Hydras, wait until 99% and 10 minutes have passed. You spawn the Hydra, and then the bosses spawn on exactly on 10 minutes, and you just kill them in like half an hour or something. Hey SK by the way, nice to see you. So you just made the tiers go up way higher and cut the progression. No, I don't think they need to do that. I think they should have just done like maybe a bigger step per tier or so, so you hit like a wall a bit harder. 
I don't know, they could have made like 50 tiers instead of 25 tiers as well or something without like this weird like, you know, 25 being like way harder. Yeah, I guess that makes sense as well. Luckily, they rolled back these exploits for sure, yeah. Yeah, I guess... I guess if I were a blizzard, you know, you just take everyone that has this achievement here and just ban them, you know, easy. Nah. Realistically, I don't think there's a really reason to do that. It's more important that actually we find these kind of bugs and we see these kind of like exploits and stuff so that they can fix it, right? I mean, right now, nothing really matters, right? There's like no real competitiveness here and stuff like that. So I would, would not really expect any bans. I would expect bans for like, you know, it's kind of like duping and these kind of things and RMTing. But yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like some weird bug and okay, people use it and now they fix it and this is it. So. I guess in this case, it doesn't matter much. It's more important that we actually, like, you know, fix these bugs. Hey, Maka. I think I'm gonna do more 12s. Let's do more 15s, guys. I think I'm gonna push a bit. With, uh, with the fates. We're gonna do slow push though with like the five minute timer. So I think I'm gonna go around and do stuff. Yeah. Actually, can we get the other glove in here as well? This might be better when I go like do whispers. <laughs> hey, Wang. Thank you, man. You know, Freedom Ball Season 3 will be separated by builds? I don't know. I'm not sure if they said much about leaderboards. I guess it's going to be by class and by team size, but probably not necessarily by builds. Yeah, it will be hard to make like a build base. It could be something like, uh, you know, filter by what did the most damage maybe or something like that, potentially. Like, okay, you know, pen shot, flurry. So this could maybe work. But I guess, for example, for rogues, you could very often end up in a situation where it's like shadow imbue and poison imbue and then, yeah. But something like that could potentially be, uh, like, you know, it could be like a way to do it. Where we not hold about is exploit. Now, where we not hold about is not exploit. But there was an exploit where, you, but it just explained to the Sorx. They spawn Hydras and get progression, like for free, basically. Is the armor kept lower in tier 6? Yes. A little bit. Maybe like a few hundred. But tier 6 already has a kind of 50 something monsters, I believe, so not really much. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. It's push time. Yeah, with the Hydra, you still have to kill the Seekers, but uh, if you spawn the Seekers at exactly 10 minutes, then there is no timer. You have infinite amount of time for the Seekers. So people are clearing tier 25 like this. That's how people had a tier 25 unlocked already. They did it with Storks. They just did a Hydra exploit, and then they time it. And you kill the Seekers in like, you know, 20 minutes if you want. You can do like 1v1 every, every one of them. The rogue T16. I, I saw a rogue like T17 even. I was here. Yeah. But I still want to learn what's what's up with that lag bug. Actually, I need to see if like Dark Side answered that. I was like asking Dark Side about this. I oh, actually he answered. Basically, it seems if you group up enough monsters in a tight enough area, the game freaks out and do a billion damage during a lag spike with pen shots. The more calculations you throw in during the time pen shot hits, poison imbue and anlis, the better the chances of this explosion. You don't need anlis though, it just hit enough monsters to cause the server to freak out while bursting in as poison imbue is active. Only works with pen shot with trick shot aspects. Okay, so he actually showed me this screenshot here. 
of the lag explosion. So apparently under certain circumstances when you have like you know a really tight ball of monsters and you produce these kind of numbers, somehow you deal like ridiculous amounts of them damage. And this is also how this T17 was cleared on Penshot and why there was Death Trap in the build. The Death Trap was there to lag out the game more, not to actually do anything else. So I wonder if this T16 now also runs the Death Trap and stuff. We can, we can check it out real quick. We're still updating the board, yeah? Of course. It's not loading. Wait, is this TikTok or is this Duyin? What is this? It has a TikTok icon. Is that not the TikTok icon? Brain wash cycles again. <laughs> this looks like TikTok icon, no? Am I tripping? Yes, it's the same icon. This is is it does is it the same company? Oh, it's not loading. Let me try to press F5. What the fuck do I have to do? Ah, this is why I press on escape. Do you have to do like puzzles now? Borders? Are we in? It's mainland China TikTok. My god man, let me in, what the fuck? No. Yes. Okay. Oh my god. Where's the mute? Wait, it's a TB rogue. T16. Okay. But it starts on the clear, so what's going on? Yeah, okay, I mean, you know, T16, like T17, it's not like really too far away. Even without like these lag explosions and stuff. I think if I push enough, I could also do like a 15, 16 on TBA. Okay, it's just not loading, man. Fuck this. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, there's some weird shit going on. That's, that's what's happening, at least. Like bug seems like D3, nuts, kind of nice again. Fair of nice didn't have any lags though. I'm doing tier 8 for Ultimate Glyph XP. Yeah, for me, tier 8 is pretty good. But right now we're pushing again, actually. I want to do a 15 now, so let's go. Oh, wait. Wait, did I actually go in there already without anything? At least in the previous run. Uh, this has Undying. Okay, I need Ravenous. And Flowing Veins. Good thing I checked this. <laughs> okay. Are there any changes I'm considering for Penshot and Z Planner? Um, I'm trying out Fist of Fate right now. There might be a bit of merit to this, but I'm not 100 convinced right now. We sent Dark Side a video about the Penshot. Oh, this is also from UX Aria. Okay, interesting. How did you find that? Nope. Would any Fist of Fate change anything on gear? Uh, no, I just replaced X Files Ring with Fist of Fate basically. Mm, I think we're gonna do this real quick here.
time for some random dual grind, I guess. Actually, next week we can actually we can do the midwinter blight between the runs. That's gonna be really nice. Like on Tuesday we're gonna get a patch and then can just do midwinter blight in the five minutes wait time. I have actually something to do, I guess. Because midwinter blight is useful for the elixirs and stuff. Maybe maybe there's some other cool things that we can get there. Knows what's happening around here with a large amount of monsters. Ah, interesting. What could I drop to get the death trap in there? I guess we can we can go the blade shift strat and then remove one of our agility skills. So we keep like and we drop dash for a death trap and go blade shift. So I could try that and see what happens, maybe. I wonder how strong this like explosion actually is. Because the clear I watched also did pretty good damage even without it. Uh, seemingly, it just seemed to like have insane damage. Shine buff works for Arvarion, yes. Not harm isn't sure if it increases damage. I guess it will be kind of noticeable though, like, you know, how fast can you kill, like, some elites, basically, just, like, shooting into a pack. And, okay, the problem is, like, with pen shot, it's kind of hard to tell, right? Because of trickshot aspects giving you density scaling. It's kind of hard to predict uh, everything. What's that sound? The gloves? Great attack speed, rapid fire pen. Item power doesn't matter. We're gonna random cruelty elixir. I just get shrine duration on every gear. It only rolls on boots and on amulets. And on amulets is definitely not the slot you want to have shrine buff duration. So it's basically only boots. But then yeah, I can get 24 seconds of your shrines with 30 seconds cooldown, I guess. I want to see if I can do 4 minute resets. I'm just going to go in. It's 420 now. Just testing. It is reset, actually. This was less than 5, minute, five minutes. Interesting. I'll try this again a bit more. Uh, should we try this? It's not a bad monster type. Both one PK armor, by the way. Oh my god, here's, here's a lag, man. <laughs> I thought he's such a big pull, man.
Okay, it's bad. Okay, I'm gonna try to like uh, minimax the resetting a bit. Maybe we can do like four minute resets or shorter. Let's go out again. The yeah, suppressor still exists, but they moved it from the Bloodseekers. I'd recommend Dagger or Sword besides Coronation. Uh, for range, for sure, Dagger on melee. Either way works. Usually I go for dagger because it's just faster attack speed. 230 is needed to reset. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. I've tried a few times and it did not reset even after 3 minutes. So that's why I was hitting 5 minutes usually. But let's try to like... Wait shorter and shorter a bit. It's 330? I mean it's 330. My dagger for range. And because crit is kind of weak and you usually use puncture. And well most of the time you have a close damage anyway and benefit more from the dagger. DPS wise and also you have faster cycles if you have puncture, so According to a video you watched, what was the video? How to reset, how to of the air. Okay, it says 220, uh, 230. Okay, we're gonna try. Okay, we already had 230 now, because we did in this dungeon. But it's gonna go in right after this dungeon and see what happens. So maybe the 5 minutes is actually inac inaccurate. I already mentioned this trick in my uh, latest video, like the, the Abattoir of Zia tier list for all the monster types and stuff. But I want to make sure that I have exactly the right timer. You can do only two and a half minutes, that would be really nice. Two and a half minutes is pretty good. I'm way too slow, man, for this dungeon. It's too long of a dungeon. So one of these guys. Okay, this was three forty five now. And as we said, okay. I don't know, way closer to 3.30. Let's go out again. Oh, I can watch these clips on Xaria, let's see. Can't show black bugs. Let's see if I can notice anything here. What tier is this? Can't show black bug. 12, okay. So this is with Death Trap. Oh my god, it's like Omega lag. Tier 12, huh? Let's 
The damage does seem pretty high, but you also freeze them. You have Frostburn on us. So I guess that kind of contributes with like a big burst. Do you have Noctis Eyes on us? Okay, let's see again. I think this might just be the trick shot, honestly. Glyph is out, yeah. I mean, tier 12 is not that insane. Like, I was I was basically one-shotting tier 12s. Like, not, not the monsters, but I mean, the runs. And this damage does not seem that crazy. It might just be that it looks kind of laggy and then like a lot of damage happens at once and they're also so clumped that the trick shot just does a lot of work. Okay, there's another one. Man, the fucking Caltrops. <laughs> ah, wait, you're not running Frostburn, you're running Caltrops. Okay, makes sense. Wait, they didn't even move. Wait, why did they not move? You put the death trap and nothing moves. They can't be moved by frozen, I guess, so what? Looks like it. So there's not even, not even like a good pull here. Look. Like nothing was really pulled together. Oh it is frostburn, okay. Frostborn and cultures. Yeah, this doesn't look that crazy. So Maybe there's no shenanigans going on. Maybe I'll try the death trap a bit. Okay, we're two and a half minutes out, by the way. I'm gonna go in. Let's see what happens. Oh, let's take. Let's wait for free. And go in. Yo, Faro. <laughs> Good luck with this wizard. That's one of Shaka Max. Okay, it's reset again. Okay, let's try to push it to like 250, uh, 230. I was waiting too long, man, all this time. So when exactly can we start the timer? I guess once we get the loading time. Let's see. Like now. Let's try to go in exactly at 230. I'm going to up my tears of blood lift. Nah, I don't think so. Like even if I like mega grind it out, it'll be like at least 50 hours, probably more. I'm not sure if I really want to do that. I mean, yeah, it will be like a few days and stuff. But honestly, I just kind of want to push and enjoy. I mean, it's only like 250 uh, or 230. Oh, expires in one second. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Just looking. Uh, look, there's the blood harvest. So that was kind of funny. And you get two whispers somehow. Real quick. What other can you find? Varshan and Green Grass solo. Not like 70, 75 or so. The common use the four marketplaces to get summoning mats. Yeah, I think a lot of people are trading mats. I've been also doing that. Why are you doing whispers? I'm waiting for the dungeon to reset and then like trying to min max how long we actually have to wait outside. So it might like fail it a few times now. We're gonna try to click exactly at 2.30 now. The new glyph is going to disappear after the season ends. 
It's a season thing only. Okay, let's go in. Okay, it did not reset this time. Let's go out again. So it's made like 2.45. Now, Erzy will, will leave at the end of the season, so that's going to be like one and a half months now for Erzy. Rogue is pretty weak, he got one shot at because it only 16k HP. Ah, oh, 16k is not so bad. With Shako and Doombringer I have 21k right now. 16k is definitely not bad. Nah, I saw the bar clear 24. I just think Blades Rogue fair and AOZ. Ah, oh, Tessin Blades good. Let's go back here. Next time I'm going to go with PvP I think. Yeah, I'm not sure if the Bob used any exploits. I don't think so. Apart from like... Like leeching Glyph to level 50. I think he had like a level 50 Glyph apparently. You have to farm Sigil Powder. Uh, well, I have Sigil Powder right now, but I'm... Trying to like really preserve it right now. With like only 40k or something. Where is it actually? Actually 56k now. How did it go up so much? Just on the runs I did earlier. Seems like it does go up a bit. But uh, either way. It's not very much. I can craft like 25 sigils or something. So that's why we wait the timer. I'm waiting for 245 this time. You see in the top left. Let's go in. To clear high level, this gives more. Yeah, I guess because I was finding like sevens and eights. Oh, this time it is reset, okay. So that works. Here, uh, two, 245 minutes works. And that's the reset again. So let's try to cut it closer. So like 240. Let's do the PP episode really quick. Should be fine, 240. Now Tears of Bloodcliff range increases at 50, not 15. So you have to grind to 50, which is something like a 50 to 100 hour grind if you're kind of fast. And I'm gonna have so many Varsha mats after <laughs> all this pushing, it's gonna be horrible. <laughs> oh, dude. So let's hope we get like one of the, the red spider monster types. And we can probably clear it. That would be nice. Then I have a 60 unlocked. 
Also, so 15 is actually like the big jump. And we have uh, that completed. And maybe I can do like another one or two or three tiers or something. And let's see. If I can like slowly push towards 20, that'll be cool. But yeah, it's gonna be rough. What are you trying to do with the dungeon reset? I'm trying to not get rid of the entire sigil powder that I found the entire season in the span of 30 minutes. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, PvP area and hardcore is very scary. There's so many people, man, it's like overrun. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. This is what I mentioned actually earlier. Like, I said, it's exactly what I said. I'm not sure if you're listening, but I said that, you know, it seems like the movement speed just, might just go down while you're evading. And apparently, this is exactly what's happening. It's kind of funny. I'm not sure why. Okay, I'm gonna TP in. Let's just directly TP in actually at like 2.35. Like this. Let's see. Okay, so it's 2.40 when the loading screen starts. Seems like it's a long loading screen, so it might be a reset. Yes. That's a nope. And let's start a timer again. Yeah, it seems like there's 2.30, it seems to be true, but you have to be a, maybe a bit over it to be safe. Hey, Humphrey? You're 97, have no desire to get to 100. I feel like there's nothing to do after 100. Uh, I think you kind of missed what's going on the last week. But fair enough, I mean... We don't want to grind it out and wait for next season, I guess. <laughs> or make an alt. idea what next season is going to be like. Well, it's going to be hopefully a lot more balanced and a lot more sweaty. T25 is currently not doable. Yeah, I don't think they want it to be doable. Not better grand hell tides. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, I guess we're gonna see some big buff or like improvements to hell tide next season. That'll be cool. Okay, hurry. Actually, I just realized I've never seen a good stat spawn here in the PvP zones after doing all those PvP bounties. I wonder if they can spawn. Someone would exploit it soon enough. Yeah, I mean, exploit, clear, 25 has already happened. Like, we're talking about like a real clear. Where a real clear is not happening on 1025. Okay, 2.30 has passed. Let's go in again. So this time we went like 5 seconds earlier or so. Seems like again, it's reset, okay. Yeah, it's really good. It's only like half the timer that I expected. Because it's a lot more intense. Let's try to cut it even shorter. Let's do like 230.
No, that's not the SJ25 clear. There will not be a SJ25 clear. <laughs> Unless they do like another patch or something. I don't think this is happening. Like tier 25 seems to be massively harder than tier 24. Apparently like a factor of 10 or 20 at least. So... Hello Gustavo. So build spec and crit chance or lucky hit. Yeah, I like to go for a crit because it improves the damage of the of the poisons as well. But it's not really such a bad idea to go lucky hit as well. Instead of crit chance, it's got like all in on on that as well. I don't really care much about crit chance. Legit clear the season in the 25 and season one of D3, that's like count. <laughs> the 25 man, in season one. Insane man. But this season two man. It's okay. Okay, 45 seconds. Thanks for us. Okay, let's CP exactly at 2.30. In there, so... Let's try this. It's like 2.31. And it's not reset, so that's too short. So I think I should do like 2.35 to be kind of safe. Maybe you have to be outside 2.30, and not like 2.30 in a learning time, so let's try this actually. Let's try 2.30 now, basically. I'm going in and then leave. Uh, I'm not trying to take damage from, from the guys. I'm checking what monsters it is, and if it's not the best one, I leave. Or the second best one. There's two monster sets that I'm looking for. The skellies and red spiders and the skellies and poison spiders. And everything else is just the uh, people leave. But you can play the poison spiders as well, I think. So it gives me like probably like a 1 in 6 chance or so to get it right. Actually, maybe it seems so rare because of... I, I talked about this in my video. So maybe the spiders just randomly roll one of the types. And it's actually just like one monster set out of like, I don't know, 8 or 10 or something. But then it randomly rolls one out of three of the spiders. So maybe this is why it seems so rare. I wonder. You're impressed they managed to carry over the concept of fishing from the three? Yeah, it's inevitable. I mean, if they like include this kind of like RNG, and it's like so imbalanced as well, like it's like super imbalanced. You know, between the different uh, types. The maps, uh, the monsters, like it's a mega imbalance. And this doesn't really come as a surprise, you know. And if we, it took them like, you know, a decade to kind of balance out the different maps and monster sets and stuff. And they can do it much faster if they want it here, but... It's kind of funny, just standing in the poison pool, it does like 1k damage to me. Okay, so we are at... 
15. But this is outside this time, so let's see. Going to be at like 227, let's say. Seems to work. So I guess it's 2.30 outside. Yes. This is a reset. Okay, spiders. Is it the right one? No, it's not the right one, it's the fallen. Almost. <laughs> yeah. So let's try this again. That was bad though. Yeah, but it's a fifteen. Even on a bad map, I could I could I could do this, I think, on the on the good monster side. I'm just waiting for that one. Why am I not doing it? Because I can't. I am too weak. I released a video about a uh, monster and map tier list, by the way, you can check it out. I explained a few more things there. and the harvest and go back in again. You can actually farm a lot of whispers like this. <laughs> You're gonna have so many whispers. <laughs> it's gonna be crazy. But I don't really want to do, you know, more durials. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with all this stuff. Here's all the spiders, man, I'm looking for. I need them in a dungeon, man. You have to defeat the little guys that come out as well. Ah, we're gonna be too late. No, maybe not. Perfect timing. So it's just two. 34 until the loading screen starts. Seems to work. Nope. It's Pen RF physical viable. I've been playing Pen RF physical in T100s, but not here. Here is all about poison. The mound is from BlizzCon. I think you can get it from the shop now. I'm using Pen RF, it's in the description bill. Crossburn and Fisher Finesse is nice damage, but is it worth for bosses? It's not even worth for non bosses, I think. I mean, it's kind of okay. But yeah, whenever you fight bosses and you don't have like insane boss damage on your builds, whatever you're doing, then it's definitely not worth it. It's a really fun item though, Frostburn. You know, if you really like the freezes and stuff, it feels cool, literally. Yeah, I actually respect the pen I have now. 
Oh, Dave. Why is Frey so bad on single targets? I don't know, ask the devs. <laughs> Rapid fire is like roughly triple or so. The thing is, with this kind of fishing, I actually preserve my potions and my consumables really well. So that's that at least. <laughs> like, I'm barely using... I haven't even used an iron skin now in the last 45 minutes, because I just didn't get a single run. And then I can just pop the incense when I go in and get him on. Exclamation mark horse, I think I have a child... Uh, a a command there. Some Piscon. I don't know the name of this thing or so, but I can probably buy it still. Does anyone know if you can buy the horse still? Has anyone bought the horse without having the Piscon ticket? Is that a thing? Nah, I saw the Chinese bar doing 24. It's not in the shop. So how do you get it? Let go, spend as vowels. Okay. So here we see proc of multiplier some pairing on board. Yeah, it's case of like all generic damage multipliers. Just so I can like one-shot stuff basically on later on here in outdoor content at least. Bless you. Have made it you. Yeah, we're starting strong here with two villagers, what's going on? We try. This guy just disappeared. My favorite breakfast. Oh. Hmm, I don't know. Bretzel. I like bretzels for breakfast. But not really a thing here. Well, it's just like any kind of like, you know, savory breakfast. So it's also nice stuff you can have. Oh, this vampire stuff is actually so good for this uh, bounty here. It's kind of funny how I can just like stay in here. If you do the Fist of Fate, I could probably stay even longer. Be like really chill. We don't have to, we're done. Super fast, actually. It's like the fastest five bounty thing I can do besides the PvP ones. The Hunter claim board was really underwhelming. I agree. Kind of a cool concept, but 
really terrible rewards. <laughs> also, like grinding for the two different, uh, like vampire powers, I guess. But the items and all, like, I think that could have been like much more interesting stuff. Like the fucking bag of Zier spoils or whatever doesn't even give you like you know actual uniques that Zier drops, right? Like how stupid is that? I thought I get like you know three uniques from Zier's loot table or something, and then I get like two random legendaries, and that's it. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Uh, are we going to the villagers? I don't think so. Fuck it. I think it's time to make a command here. Do we have something like this? Uh, the thing is just not there. What's going on? I'm going to have 42. Would be nice if Aeroziga had high rolled or max rolled affixes. I mean, max rolls would be pretty OP. Even high rolls would be relatively OP. But honestly, yeah, would it be? It's more about getting the right combination of stats and not so much how high they roll most of the time, to be honest. I think the right combination of stats is usually what you're looking for. I'll wait till it. Is percent damage on chest worth it at all? Hell no. Chess is pure defense. Never roll any damage stuff on a chest. Unless you're like extremely greedy and you wanna do like you know some some memes on like some low end content or something. Did increase my hard drop, right? I don't think so. It's just generally high. Yeah, we're just looking for a good mob set. We're looking for the top two uh, combo. <laughs> hey, Odin. Thanks for 26 months. Appreciate that. You know, Calm Aspect scales pretty well with the new glyph. Like the new glyph has no impact on how well in a calm scales though. It's just a 30% damage buff. I mean, that doesn't mean to make inner calm any better than it usually is, which is usually not good. Expert being on some Paragon boards. Uh, it gives me the armor I need. And also uh, 8% and 2 and 2 and 2% damage reduction. Which is all pretty nice. Uh, so the other option would be like Elvish Bounty for like a tiny bit more damage. Without an defensive upside. 
So I went for like 15% extra damage instead of 20% extra damage. But I have like a bunch of extra defense, which is really nice. And uh, I think I previously had like a glyph, had like a turf glyph or something. But not everything is always close ranged. So uh, the turf glyph is not really that great there. You could also do like another glyph, something like canny or so. But it kind of like comes down to like the, it's pretty a similar damage buff without the defense upside. So the, the exploit weakness board with the vulnerable damage reduction is pretty solid, I think. Because you make everything vulnerable all the time, very easily with this setup. Okay, let's see. It's TP at 2.25. So it was... Okay, this was like as tight as I can make it, basically. Let's see. Let's reset. It looks like it. Okay. Round. Nope. And he changed balls around, he lost a decent amount of armor. Well, I actually have extra armor on the exploit weakness board. There's like 200 armor you pick up on the way to exploit weakness itself. Well, maybe more whispers I can do here. Hey, Brandon. Yeah, I got this when I went to BlizzCon, the horse. What's the armor cap? I'm aiming for 13.7k in number two. It's kind of interesting, there's like a he random healing well where it says I should do an event. Hey, <laughs> <so> special. <laughs> you want subs, huh? No, no, no. This guy says damage resistance, but there's no champion anywhere here. Where's the damage reduction coming from? So like a bugged monster somewhere in the ground or so? Can you just stun the Bloodseekers forever? No, he can't. You can stun elites for 5 seconds, and then they're unstoppable for 8 seconds, and repeat. It's the same for all leads. Uh, I have considered trying Death Trap. Mm, actually, I could give it a shot with the Blade Shift and Death Trap. I wanted to try this, but realistically... Yeah, yeah, maybe. Can see. I think it will feel really awkward though, especially in hardcore. What game is this? It's Diablo 4, simple. Okay, I just tried to explain it, but you cannot CC. Like any CC works exactly what I just described. 5 seconds and then 8 seconds and still. Infinite Dash or reset some key passives. Yeah, sure. I also really like losing two thirds of my damage so I can get a few more death traps. 
Sounds great. Alright. Not bad. Yeah, close quarters is too strong. Like, exposure, death trap on this build, it would actually be really legit. If close quarters was in a state of last season, I think there would actually be a reason to play the exposure right now. That would be probably the best strategy. With like the death trap stuff, pulling stuff together, etc. It would be really powerful. But yeah, with like close quarters being the way it is, there's no way really. What happens if we go too much of an armor cap? Well, you just waste your stats on something you don't need, that's it. Nothing happens. With Malibu. Oh, 90 miles, thank you, man. Oh, this game is microtransactions, the video game. Ah, I don't know, there's not really much in terms of microtransaction here. I'm literally not interactive with the shop like a single time. Besides, like, opening it once to check out the. Booba Rogue Skin. Where can I find Armor Cap Charge? I'm not sure if there's like a good one. Other ways to lower the cooldown of Death Trap? Not really. He gets like minus 10 seconds when he gets a kill in the upgrade, but I mean, that is not happening in Outwar. And then there's like some stats that give you cooldown reduction for traps, like on Amulet and on Gloth, but you're not gonna run that. Yeah, 31.7k for armor cap. Okay, here we go. Nope. Okay, I wanna try the... Wait. Let me just get rid of these guys. So we are resetting. I was gonna like try like how it feels to go like late shift and, and all that stuff. I'm gonna keep my shadow step though. Like we literally need it actually because we don't have metamorph. Okay, so... We can also walk for enemies with this, this is kind of nice, I guess. Fresh is the duration. Which doesn't really matter, but sometimes maybe. Oh, we actually need like extra points, so maybe we don't care about the re duration reset. So like this. Dude, the lag is like real. Instantly. Not funny. Ugh. Dude, I can't attack, dude. Because of the face turn. Yeah, Blade Shadow is a bit faster though. We can do like way faster cycles, basically. Oh. 
This is what happens when you don't have armor cap, man. These guys are hurting. Man, I don't like this at all. It, uh, it feels very clunky, dude. I gotta say. It feels very clunky to play shift. Oh, no, man. I mean, this is kind of shitty monster type for this. But I'm not really looking forward to uh, fighting Bloodseekers and stuff like this. No, I actually wait. We have Shaka, so... We don't actually need like a point in dash that was kind of useless here all this time. So where do we put it? There. Oh, I didn't have one point in innovation actually. We should... Oh, we don't actually need that as well, right? We have resource there. Could do the 3% crit. 3% crit is probably better than concussive. But also not really. So we don't rely on blended poison movement. Because we do agile. It's makes a dodge. And honestly, I think I'm gonna go all in on agile. Let's try this. They should just piss. Yeah. I've seen like a high clear with it, but it just doesn't feel good, man, at all. Oh, it's an insane helm. Don't buy this one. Armor cap is fixed for all levels of avatar. Nope. Armor cap scales with the level of the monster. Okay, we can do like another run. Let's try like another run with late shift. So we do this, we do this. Um Take this out, do the pull. Let's go and pop an iron skin and see. And maybe get lucky actually getting the monster type. Copy him. Okay, this is red ghost, holy. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna say goodbye to this death trap strat. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> Dude, this was like 10 monsters. Why is it so laggy? What the fuck? <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, goodbye. Let me fix everything. We have one in siphoning. Yeah. I'm not gonna do this uh, lag strat. Fuck it. It's 31.7 armor cap for T25. Uh, yeah, basically for everything like tier 10 up, I would say. You want to have 13.7 or 13.6. So I'm just running 13.7 basically. And like, I don't know precisely the number, but it's around that. Oh, 
What's the main value of Blade Shift or Puncture? Uh, Blade Shift is uh, a bit faster. Has a has the fastest animation of all the rogue basics. Lux Fanta. Yeah, 15k armor and rest caps, they're getting one shot. I mean, on top of this, you also want to start stacking defensive stats and defensive aspects and stuff, you know, this is kind of like the baseline. <laughs> Young got held tight. Kinda of hard to grind health height though, there's like random two minute sessions I guess. Although if you do this like three times you might have a chest. So there's that. Yeah, it was exactly 2.30, let's see. I did not fix tables well now. Oh. Get these. Spiders, let's go. Pretty bad spot so far, but we are getting ahead slightly. Dude, no proc. On the single one. Get him. Should probably not click it. Wait, how does this uh, champion like half dead already? What happened there?
Yeah, I'm not getting bursting venom procs at all, it's crazy. Not sure how. I have such a large ball here. It's having like two times in a row now. Spider here, the spider heals, then break. Save this for the guys. They're pretty huge. I might need a blast or a shrine or something to catch up here. But the protection will be helpful. Okay, that's a good pull. Should we can spawn here? This will be nice. It's very far to the shrine.
Did it all get stuck there? Looks like it. Did it just see see me? Oh, I had to shine. Can't do it, man. I think I need like roughly a minute per guy or so, maybe a bit less. It was kind of like uh, getting to see it, like I was, my attacks are bugging out or something. This was that was strange. Ah, uh, was a good attempt. Was not really good enough though. We are getting close. But I need like at least two more minutes or something there. But we didn't have like any shrine really, right? We had like a colony I didn't pick and the protection that didn't do anything. Another day, another traveler. Uh, hard times for Rogue, man. Oh, new social crafts, I guess. So we can maybe do it like the next that happens immediately. Let's go. You will be back. The stars do not lie. Uh, we should also craft another few low sigils. How do you feel about the changes to AZ? Yeah, pretty good, but they're around like 10% of the way there. Why am I not leveling the glyph? Because for this you kind of need to be successful in your runs, and I wasn't. I think I should have focused a bit more on like making larger poles, I think. Glyph is 13, I think, or something. What does it say right here in big letters on the screen? Yes, it's 13. Oh, Chubby, let's enjoy it. If we aren't a bar, we're gonna struggle in Zier. Everyone struggles in Zier. Even the bars. Plans for the free PDR. I don't know really. 
a little bit motivated to go into PTR, and basically test nothing that is new in any way. I might install it though, just to like check a little bit on like you know the, the rankings and stuff. Snakes. Had to be snakes. Did I finish campaign PvE yesterday? Nah, I'm in like Act 7. I might log in again later and stuff, but... Let's see. But now I'm just opening new sigils, so I'm gonna use that for a little bit. Log in. <laughs> And it's kind of sad, we had like best monster set and a decent map, it didn't work out. But I feel like there were like too many small packs, a bunch of Imperial dudes that healed and slowed me down. And then we also had like too many like champions that I just, just lived too long. And I couldn't really like connect too many packs. I had like only like one really big elite pack, it was like six elites or something. That run, I was always like three or four elites maximum. Quickly <laughs> disappointed as a cloud. You have like a character ready, Sevki? Hey, Elon. Is Shadow viable in AOZ? You mean Shadow in or what? No. I mean, maybe for like the lower tier, for grinding, you might be able to do that. But realistically, no. Oh my god. We're going to do this again. I think I'm so tanky, I can just click these things. It's kind of funny. These guys do nothing to me. Look at this. <laughs> it's like 20 monsters that interrupt me. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. No web at all. Thanks for the prime. I have like 12.6k armor and with potion I have 31.7. Dude, snakes again. Which ones are those? I guess one is impale. What else? It's okay. See, no. Can scroll off escape drop from chest? I don't think so. I think it's only for monsters. As far as I know, it's a 1 in 4,000. For monsters. We got an exploit aspect, actually. Average bar to 16. That's a cloud and the best iteration of Impel. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually looking forward to playing some Impel again. That was, that was really cool back in Season 25. I should definitely do more of that this time. So I might main DH actually. 
in the farm and impale. Especially if the extra tankiness you get now from Altar. That'd be kinda cool. Did I finish that thing? Yes. Putting off so much DPS to reach 10k armor. Yeah, I saw some Storks actually playing like a low-life damage reduction by injured build with barriers and just like ignoring armor. Kind of interesting. But if you like free damage reduction by injured rolls and resilience, you do make up for it and more. Just to make sure that you never <laughs> drop your barrier or else you're dead. So that's kind of interesting. Yo, Meta Merchant, by the way, thanks for everyone, dude. Appreciate it. Oh. I should pop a pot. See level 98 Zork. What 98 Zork? Would you like something appraised? What are we running? We're running 15s. But I'm fishing right now. I'm waiting for a good. Uh, good attempt. Oh, we didn't get the Bloodseeker kills. Nineteen Sork. Okay. Is there like anything interesting in that run? I guess we can just see. World first sorcerer. Eight minutes. Are we sure it's world first? Okay, it's just a it's just that old life build again, right? So he has 30.6k armor and low life. Interesting. He's going for like Omega tanky setup. I saw one guy who didn't actually go for armor at all, I believe. Or maybe they did. Okay, this is... Wow, interesting. It's not actually spiders. This is bandits, cannibals. What's the type? And he does it in 8 minutes, that's crazy. Oh, actually, okay, I, I guess he can't play the spiders, right? He's gonna, like, out and die. <laughs> so he has to play something else. It's actually kind of funny. I think if, spy if uh, the Sorks go to the spider monster set, they would probably be almost on the barb level. Look how much time he has. Okay. I was 9 to 10. Uh, I did notice a jump there, yeah. I would definitely also find like 7 or 8 or 9 for the most part, brother. It wasn't like too crazy because my build is strong enough to like also do 10s somewhat comfortably. But it, it, just, it did still down a lot, like from 9 to 10 or from 8 to 9 as well. Oh, Empires, goodbye.
Is this team doing R class variant? Do you know what kind of what tier is there? I think on the Max leaderboard, at least yesterday or something, when I checked, there was no Zorg build that was not ball lightning on leaderboard. <laughs> so I have no idea how the other builds fare. Let's check that out a bit. So I do not find L1 because I can't complete the run if I find something that is not skellies and spiders. He's already lagging on this pull, man. It's like five enemies, man. Why is he lagging on fucking five enemies? And I was like eight or something. This is insane. Selig is not useful on Rogue now. so much food today here. Yeah? Get a sandwich by Anini. I guess since you have like another minute to wait. It's a fat sandwich by the way. Now you saw the 24 earlier. Wait, is he running the ice armor on Sobel aspect? He doesn't have Metamorph. How is he at Sobel all the time? Are the orange biscuits still in the kitchen? Not orange biscuits. Dude, what the fuck is this bread? It's just like broken. Okay. I bought like some weird bread from the supermarket. There was like some huge, like baked bread. Like a fluffy one. And that has been repurposed to a sandwich. Yeah. It wasn't good bread. But it will do. Okay, what I got? Nope. Okay, more sog action. The ones I hated, I was doing the start of the season. Ah, the orange biscuits. Yeah, I mean, no one is eating them. <laughs> I guess it's time to throw them or something. I gotta say, I was so hyped to play Ball Lightning like last season and this season. And now that it has been like this absolute like dominant Zork build of all time, even surpassing Blizzard probably. And everyone and their dog has been playing it this season. I really have like no will to try it. <laughs> <laughs> God, I feel the same. <laughs> yeah, two meta for me, man. Nah, it's kind of nice getting the shrine there.
Oh. Wait a minute. Do it do you get more DPS when there's chilling wind? Do the wall lightings last like a duration or do they last a certain amount of spins? Here. Yeah. Let's see. I know blade turns and blades and that's a certain amount of spins, but I don't think it helps you if that's shooting wind. I wonder if it does help you on build wall lighting. And there's no Sadek here. There's no Sadek. It's just a barrier that I've built. You just need to make sure that you press one button every three and a half seconds. More like three, three point three seconds, I guess. There's like three times snakes in a row, or four times now. <laughs> Does it do more damage when you have lower health? No, it's just for the defense. There's damage reduction while injured, and uh, compared to Diablo 3, in Diablo 3, there's also these low life builds of Shimizu, where you actually get more damage out of it, and here you just get more defense. Um, the main advantages in Diablo 4, there is nothing that forces you to heal up. Like in Diablo 3, you were forced to pick up health gloves. And this does not exist in Diablo 4. In Diablo 4, they made it health potions. There's no mandatory life per hit or life on kill or anything. And, you know, those things are also easy to avoid on top of this compared to Diablo 3, where it was kind of easy to get an item head life per kill, for example. So in D3, I really like these low life builds because there was like a challenge to playing them. But in the outer four, it just seems so boring. Especially like people going in, being low life already before the run even starts, which is which is ridiculous. You don't even have to try to get to low life without dying. You just go in with low life already. Right? He, he has like low life already, right? When he goes in. You look. <laughs> it's stupid. You don't even heal up when you go in. Okay, build is uh, nothing special, I guess. So there's exploiters, and what is this? I think this is uh, Stormswell, this exploiter. This is Disobedience on the pants, actually. Bits of fate, okay. Raymond, wow. Raymond is kind of impressive. Shaco. Is this... This is conceited. Tarasha, Ball Lightning. And 40% crit, okay. Raymond or Tabot was pretty wild. Now he's having normal pants, no Tabot, and he's wearing Raymond. That is kind of a strange choice. Oh, could be good. Let's do it.
Yeah. Maybe I have to play the red spiders, man. Maybe the poison spiders are not good enough, but that was kind of shitty start. It's also not a great map. No double packs, yeah. Here's one finally. Yeah, that was really good to him. I think I just stuck. Okay, any more? Okay, can we combine these pulls? Let's see. It's a call me. Imagine a death shot now. It would be like unplayable. Should we try only? Let's see. Probably not worth it. That's nothing, man. Just a waste. That uh, actually helps a bit for the small guys. Also, these guys just get stuck here. I think the AI bugs out or something at this corner. This guy's just standing there. Very weird.
Ich bin gemisst von geil, ja. I think I played as much better than last time though. Just like the map didn't really allow me to like make his pulls properly. Okay, maybe I'll try to play the blade shift, but not with death trap. This could be a strat, potentially. Okay, two minutes. It's probably not even two minutes, actually. Yeah, I have to do like more. I'm gonna try and blade shift one then after this. I don't see how long I need for one guy. I can. So I can try to consume and strat. Oh, he came alone. It's like over a minute per blood right now, it's crazy. It's a barb though, I wonder if that barbs are like tankier than the others. Look, it's like the easiest 1v1 ever, man. I <laughs> didn't even have to kite him. Two minutes off, I guess. Doable. New sigil round. Do we craft a new sigil now? It's 10 30 pm. Ah, uh, we can do one more. Is there more videos to watch? I'm kind of in the mood to watch more stuff. While we're waiting for the timer. <laughs> um, let's do this again. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, we're gonna try this, but no death trap. Let's see how that feels. Maybe this is fine. It's ridiculously hard. Yeah, 15 is hard. 15 is like some breakpoint, so if you can do a 15, it's sick. But yeah, probably it won't go higher than that for me. I'm not sure how much I want to keep fishing like this. But I want to do a 15. It's possible. Did using Windforce not work for me? 
Uh, it doesn't work with poison in humans, so it's really useless on this build. But I wanted to try eagle horns though, I forgot about that. Oh! Okay, okay. Round two, is this, it's literally the same map I just had. It's kind of funny. Makes it kind of hard to pull stuff now though. Oh, maybe not. Can I find anything? Wait, is it cold spiders? Oh no, it's it's cold spiders, I think. Okay, I gotta be careful. That was a good new kid, though. Reset. I need you guys. Dude, I'm not getting any burst of random procs. What's going on? Something is really weird. Like I'm not getting any procs, even though I feel like I should have. Maybe I was just not hitting anything or something. I don't get any combo points or so. Really odd. Like where am I pressing random procs? Three times in a row I used poison and beer. Didn't get any proc. But I should have guaranteed. Yeah, I have. Eight hundred lucky hit. It's very strange. I think someone is bugging out somehow. I'm not sure how. We actually had on a timer on this. That's kind of strange. Six pack.
That's why I feel surprisingly safe right now on this map. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the days actually. I think it's just like casually dazing all these spiders. So it's not that bad. Master Greedy. Ah, I'm standing in the spider rush trying to finish off the last elite. But the round was basically over already. We had four minutes left only. And this is at the, t the time when I kind of need to spawn the Bloodseekers already. Ah. Well. Yeah, stay too long. It's really, it's really weird. Like, I think something is wrong with Bursting Venoms. Like, I was looking at my combo points during this run. And when I have a coordination proc, I have guaranteed Bursting Venoms. Supposedly. Because I have 900% lucky hit chance. I only need 666 to proc a Bursting Venoms guaranteed on every single target. In silence, I shoot into the pack and I don't get a single Bursting Venoms proc. Like, even when I have only 3 or 4 combo points, you know, I should have, like, you know, 100% lucky hit or so, so I, sh I should have something like, you know, 1 in 7 targets, procs the Bursting Venoms, so I should have a pretty decent chance anyway. When I shoot into a pack of 20 monsters, I should see a Bursting Venoms, almost guaranteed. And sometimes I, I shoot in there, and I'm pretty sure I get my, my combo point procs on Condemnation, and I still don't see Bursting Venoms. I'm not sure why. It feels really off, sometimes. I think 15 is doable on TB, or is Pencil working out better? Yeah, the two builds are pretty close. Everything is a bug. Yeah, I can't tell for sure that this is bugged, but it feels really off. It could be that there's some, some kind of like limit on how many bursting venoms can be procced or something or so. Or maybe like it's like too fast paced and something sometimes it doesn't register. That I'm actually getting my call points. I don't know what it is. Go for the rest of my build real fast. I can do that. But um you better watch very closely. Oh. Okay. We could actually check. I can close this stuff. I recommend pen shot over to be. Nope. But it's a bit safer and easier, I'd say. Why is everyone watching Chinese videos all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah, it's like a bar to clear the tier 24. That's it, pretty easy, basically.
Okay, let me open the next one. Wait. This one is actually over, right? Oof, man, my sigil powder. Ah, uh, it's a 54. Okay, let's craft another one. We can go a bit more. Billy, Billy, Meta, they came from Torchlight. <laughs> What's going on in Torchlight exactly? Oh, Does she be a decent option? Um, for TB, yeah. For this build, no. Because you don't really proc a Shiraz enough. Okay, let's check our bot actually. Um, so, this is from before. Like a way to make this larger without making full screen? Apparently not. So when I see like what I just talked about with the bursting venom procs. Like where are some of these situations where it's just like was completely dry on procs? Oh wait, this was the next one actually. So watch out. Here I got a condemnation proc, right? We got two common points at once. Yeah, I see it. Boom, boom. Actually, is this a condemnation proc or is it just like the attack speed I have? Yeah, it's like one frame apart. Literally one frame apart. So this must be a condemnation proc, right? Now it's there. I shoot. Look. And not only that. Look at the combo points. This is a con this is a condemnation proc here. I got three at once. Actually simultaneously. Then to Look, there's no bursting venoms at all. Even though literally my first common point was a coronation proc. You see this? There's nothing. And it should be guaranteed. It should be four pools or something. Look, there's nothing. Like, what is going on? Okay, I'm trying to understand why I didn't get a bursting random prox here. I have a 900% lucky hit. This means my 15% chance is 100% chance. And it, it, it didn't proc. You can see this again. You see, okay, we can, we can watch it again. So look at the common points. I have three common points, which means I have three or more. So you only have 9% 9, 9 lucky hit when you get a condemnation proc, when you have like the 22 common points. Look, I have zero, I attack, I have three common points. This means I proc condemnation, I have 22 common points. When I have 22 common points, I have 100% guaranteed bursting venoms. And then I fire the pen shot. Look, here, here comes the poison imbument, and now comes the, the pen shot. Boom. And it just procs nothing.
Like, I'm not tripping. It's actually just not proccing sometimes. And I don't understand why. It's the same map again. Watch out, same, same spiders again. Let's go. I wonder if I can replicate this on the target dummy. Uh, what's the time sim of this? Can someone clip this from Twitch, maybe? It's uh, in the last run I've done, with 8.22 minutes left. That was the situation that I just saw here. It's the run with the cold spiders and the skellies. I need a clip of this. Yeah, I'm talking about bursting melons. And I, I don't understand why this is happening. Hello, Choi. Many eye shows correct like a hit chance, but code wise, you pass a point where it basically resets the numeric value. Yeah, maybe I'm like overkilling. The lucky hit, but on the other hand, like when I tried this, for example, here, multiple testing dummies, 22 call points, look, I should get 5. Let's see. Well, if I hit all of them, I'm not sure. And then we'll get 3. 1, 2, 3. This one didn't proc 1, even though I hit him. So that's again. Look, 1, 2, 3. This one in the back just doesn't proc it. Again. There's always those three here. What the fuck? It seems like it can only proc three per attack or something like that. But even then, I should get Bursting Venom's procs there, so I'm not sure. Maybe try to go this way. Yeah, look, one, two, three. What if we do this? Ah, uh, wait. Let's move the trick shot. And look, now it's in one straight line. Because this guy gets hit. Uh, this guy gets hit before this guy, usually. And now it's gonna be one, two, three, this triangle again. Okay, so it seems like there's only three procs per attack. Were there stairs? No. Look. This was just like a normal corridor. Okay, thanks, Kalaran. Dude, it's the same map again. Four times in a row now. People leave. Yeah, if it's max 3, I don't, also don't understand why I get 0. So I wonder if sometimes, like, Condonation maybe just bugs out and just doesn't, doesn't actually give you, like, the common point benefit that you sh should get or something. Any hey, lucky hit in the game uh, from the Kinetic Star Gym is a visual bug. It could be. We could remove Connect Starter Gem and see what happens. I was thinking about doing that. So let's see how lucky hit is then. But right now we're constantly getting... Uh, like these three, like the first three are... like I don't think this is the case. Because the first three are always a Bursting Venom's Proc. They have only 304, so there's only 45% chance now. If I shoot, it won't happen, I guess. Look, it's like one, two, and that's it. It's even like different guys. One, two, again. Ah, oh, three up there. So you see, the Kani Stratagem is working. If I put Kani Stratagem back, I will get one, two, three. Because those are the three, first three hits. Yeah. Exactly like this.
just gonna do this a little bit now. Look here, there was no proc. I mean, sometimes it might just be that I don't get a coronation proc. That's not... Like, let's just see if I get, like, sometimes, like, just no procs. Basically. Of course I should hit a target. He got nothing. He got nothing. Yeah, I'm trying to, like, kind of, like, overdo it with my shots, you know? I'm trying to do, like, at least five, six attacks or so, so I have a pretty high chance of fucking combination. And even if not, I have, like, six common points or so. So if I take six common points, um, how much is that? It's still 180%, so it's like almost 30% chance per hit. If I hit like five guys, that should be at least one pool or so, on average. Almost two. It seems like sometimes when I do this, maybe it depends on when I press my buttons. Maybe it depends on... You know, when I press poison view or something. Okay. Bad map, but I'll try it. Also have only seven potions. It's like worst map, so I'm not sure I can do this. Can do some big pulls somewhere. Yeah, some elites.
Anything else here? Pretty good actually. Pretty bad start, but maybe we can catch up. Now one or two packs like this. Some stuff. This is a vampiric. So I have huh? Okay, this could be huge actually. Ah, didn't get a poison frog, man. Okay, and Blaster is carrying though. That was huge. He can't spawn tornadoes. Because <laughs> I'm too close to the wall. That's hilarious, man. At least he has the same problems as us. Oh my god, it's fire old man. It's a tanky boy. It's gonna be really tight. Coming alone, all of them. In the damn frog. I don't think I have to damage to kill him in time. This guy's a tanky man.
Oh, maybe. It's a rogue. <laughs> My hands are sweaty then. <laughs> okay, I got a 15 down apparently. And this was. Oh, we got our rank up to 14 now as well. I didn't expect it on this map, man. It's literally a worse map. And the start was really bad. I was like, okay, I was gonna, you know, experiment a bit, try it out, and it actually worked out in the end. <laughs> Yeah, this was Fist of Fate setup and Blade Shift. I think the DPS is a bit higher with Blade Shift because you just have faster cycles. But sometimes it feels really scuffed to play it. But in terms of, like, I guess DPS output, you can make the pulls and stuff without puncture. So that works. Ugh. Good thing I actually did another... Uh, <laughs> it was actually a decision I just opened, right? Did I reset this? I think I just opened it, right? Or maybe one reset. <laughs> yeah, this is all the XP. This is what we got here. We got like 13k or something. 14. Yeah, this was really close, man. Like, how much? Two seconds left? <laughs> oh, 31k. Okay, no much. Yeah, not bad, actually. Get the new elixir on Tuesday. Yeah, true, but it doesn't help me with this build. I need to run iron skin to hit my armor cap. I have Shaco equipped and no disobedience. I didn't I also need to don't need the lucky hit really. Like the lucky hit doesn't really do anything on this build. But the elixir is sick for TB. It's really good. It's basically two elixirs in one. Huh? Well, Fifteen complete. Uh, now I'm running 16, I'm not sure, but... I think it's enough pushing for now. <laughs> Maybe we're going to chill out a bit, guys. We did a 15. Yeah, this means that 16 is definitely in grasp. Maybe 17 as well. Like, if I have, like, a, f a few more double pulls, like, basically there's always, like, these, like, elite packs of, like, three packs. And if you can combine two of them at once without much downtime for pulling is really good, but in this map it's really hard to do because there's these long corridors and sometimes there's just like a bunch of trash monsters in the middle. But in the big open maps, very often you have like, you know, one elite pack in this corner, one elite pack in that other room, and you just pull them together. And you have like six elites, seven elites, and this is how you get the progress. But yeah, I need like almost a minute per Bloodseeker, man. It's crazy. <laughs> and I got, I got very lucky as well with the Bloodseekers that they just immediately split. Like, I was trying to do this concealment strat, which so far I've actually not even tested. But apparently, if concealment, you can split them much easier. But they just came to me one by one, basically. My eyes can only watch so much. <laughs> What's the new elixir on Tuesday? It's 15% life, 15% uh, lucky hit. For Tristan Blades, that's like insane. The old tank T16. Yeah, I mean, the monster damage doesn't go up anymore at this point. So the monster damage is like stable. It's just that, you know, more and more life. And 15 is kind of like the breakpoint where it gets hard. And then there's like, you know, slight scaling after that. So I can do a 16 for sure. The Rogue Seeker seemed a little less tanky. Yeah, maybe the Rogue Seeker is actually less tanky. I'm not sure. Like the Barb was kind of tanky. Or was it a Druid? Yeah, Druid that kind of does the constant barriers and stuff. You have to eat for the barriers. 
And then Neko gives you like the, the Curpify all the time, which is annoying. And also, I think one or two times I actually turned around and accidentally accident shot at the Bone Prison <laughs> because it targeted the Bone Prison. Like, if that happened like one more time or something, I would have failed to run. <laughs> no, I'm not running Exploit on Boots. I have Ravager on Boots. I think Exploiter is not really useful. I have one here. But I don't think this is the play, really. <laughs> Yo, I know none of this gift stuff again. It would help a lot on the bosses. I I don't think I don't think it helps that much. It does give you a bit of a DPS. I mean, okay, you could actually have a second pair of boots, I guess. That has and, and swap it, I guess. You can do like a, a swap for the boss because I don't need Ravager really on the single target. But I think you still want to have it because some of these guys actually stun you and stuff just to be safe. The thing is that if these guys go in unstoppable, you almost do no damage anyway because you lose like half of your additive. Like, look how much crowd control do I have? I no, this is all damage. Yeah, 380 crowd control. Yeah, it's not exactly half. But it's like at least 40% or so of my total additive that is just gone. So, yeah, okay. It's fine, I guess. It's still, it's, it's probably like a 15% DPS upgrade or so going exploiter. So it's noticeable. But I mean, how do I get a pair of boots that has the same stats? I actually have two or three pairs of boots that have the same stats, but not this combo, I believe. Let me check those other boots. This is Fire, Cold, Poison. Fire, Poison, Light. But this is Rolled. Um, here's Fire, Light, Poison. We could take this one, actually. Fire, Light, Fire, Light, Poison. It's actually... I have the, I have the boots. And I guess we don't care about the Evade here, so... We could do a swap, actually, for Exploiter. It would probably save me, like, 5 to 10 seconds per Bloodseeker, to be honest. Yeah, why not? It's a bit scary, like, if these guys actually see me and, like, nuke me for some reason. On the other hand, I mean, the base cooldown is 7.3 seconds. We get minus three, so it's four seconds. So I would have to like proc and die within two seconds of using it, which is relatively unlikely, I guess. If I do one v one bloodseekers, rich rest one on the boots. I have cold and shadow here, so I need fire, light, and poison. So yeah, we can use these boots, yeah. Is that light enough? Uh oh. The lighting is not enough, I think. 65. Uh, yeah, okay. Lightning obelisk will destroy me. Everything else is fine, I suppose. Yeah, lighting and shine is also kind of dangerous. Such a low lighting roll. I guess I don't need movement speed, really, for the Bloodseekers. Yeah, I don't think I have much of a choice. I guess it's going to use those boots then. Maybe I'll try this tomorrow. Can stop off a uh, fist of fate for the bloodseekers. Um uh, not really a reason. I mean what what do I get? I guess I could actually do I could do something like inner calm, to be honest. Yeah. You could swap to like a inner calm glove. And as long as I can just face tank them, I would probably have more DPS. But yeah. 
I could put inner calm maybe. Expectant I think doesn't work for poison. Inner calm does work. Might be an idea, but the daze is actually not that terrible. Elements is, Elements is too weak, I think. Elements is just 15% overall. Like, even with, like, plus 4 ranks and attack speed and crit. I mean, crit does barely anything for Rapid Fire, because Rapid Fire already starts critting 100% after, like, a few arrows, basically. Crit roll on the gloves just makes it two arrows later. Nah, yeah, I'm overlyzed, days, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that's good is, like, the 80% additive. Because it double dips on poison. It might be an idea actually to go either like rapid. You could do rapid as well instead of inner calm. Rapid will always work. So we take these gloves and we just you swap them in for for the bosses. Yeah, we know the mirror, so I just did a fifteen. <laughs> GG. The days is good, but the unstoppable for so long. Yeah. The days does make it kind of safe though, because like in between, it kind of like gives me like five seconds of them not doing anything, and then they do something for eight seconds, and I can maybe pop the potion if I have to or something, and then they do nothing for five seconds again. So it's kind of nice to have the days on the blood seeker sometimes, and without the days, I will basically not activate the boots, right? Could, I could run Pain and Graves. Okay. Yeah, but for real. Like, I don't actually see them, like, at all with anything. With, besides. I don't, even have to, I don't even have to slow, I just realized. If I don't go puncture, I don't have slow. It means I don't get the damage reduction from slowed as well. It's like 20 something percent on the Bloodseekers. But if I only want them, I don't need us. But that's something to consider. I don't have slow right now. I only have to slow from pen shot. I'm gonna try the Night Stalker Shadow build. Oh, you mean that build? The extra shadow step back seems like it would be good for anything hardcore. Yeah, this is this way. I mean, you run it mostly because of close quarters combat right now. But for the Bloodseekers, I don't really need it. You know, if we do, it, we're talking about like doing a gear swap for the Bloodseekers to speed up the fight at the end. You can definitely kill them a bit faster. And you see, I had like three minutes of Bloodseekers and almost failed. And this was like a best case scenario almost. I had like 1v1, I didn't have to do any kiting really. So this was like almost as good as it gets. For the Bloodseekers. It's nice to have extra unstoppable with Tibots. I try to use my Shadow Step regularly for Tibots. I mean, every 4 seconds is a bit tight sometimes. I had no Shrine. I had a really good Blaster Shrine actually. I had a Blaster Shrine, and the Blaster Shrine actually did work. The kid like five leads on me in like not too much time. Could drop pen shot for smoke grenades. Oh, that is true. But then I need to like also get three points somewhere if I do this. I could remove agile, but I kind of like the the toughness I get there. If, if I can do a respec, I can take out these two points. Put in a smoke grenade. 
stuff though. Doing that. I mean, I have to like run away when the Bloodseeker spawn. I have to like run away. I have to do this swap here. And then I have to do one, two points here. And then take out this point and put it in the smoke in it as well. Yeah, we could get like the extra nuke there, 25% damage. It might be worth it. Even if it even takes me like a few seconds to do this. I think Neko hits a cla it's a wall at tier 15. Yeah, tier 15 is a pretty tough wall. I've seen like tier 14 Infinimus clear like a while ago, but tier 15 is like, you know, a whole different beast. You only need two points. Yeah, I think I want to get... Uh, it's a 10 seconds cooldown. Uh, maybe... Maybe I don't need the extra countering. Yeah, maybe I just do those two swaps. I like... Like, basically, let's see spawn. I do uh, this. And then... Ding, ding. Ding, ding. So, this. And then we play. That might work, actually. I just need to be, like, really fast at doing this. Because if the guys are actually like only CCable for 5 seconds and then 8 seconds unstoppable, then I don't need to include them reset, right? I just smoke grenade them whenever the unstoppable is gone. We get a 25% extra damage. So that is pretty good actually. And this also devalues exploiters again. Because then I don't even have the smoke grenade thing, I don't have my damage while damage against guard control, so maybe I don't do an item swap after all. And I keep my res up as well. Use Conceal. Yeah, I want to use the Conceal anyway to like potentially split up, because apparently Conceal allows you very easy to sp split up the Bloodseekers. So basically that's why I was swapping it in. To try to pull them. But they just naturally came to me. Ravenous and the Metamorphosis are literally the two best vampires for literally every build on every class. Okay. I'm using Umbers, yeah, I have Umbers on the amulet here. Get Lilith on level 35, Rogue. Uh, nice. Rob cleared tier 20 earlier, yes. There's also a Chinese part of the 24. That's kind of crazy. Ah. <sighs> I don't want to do. I don't want to do T sixteen today though. We're gonna do T sixteen tomorrow. Maybe it's gonna like chill out a little bit on the sorg or something, guys. I that's my Zorg. Yeah. I'm gonna show on a Zorg a little bit, guys. <laughs> the free PTR, I actually need to install it. I don't see 25 being done anytime soon. Yeah, 25 will not be done without a major <laughs> nerf to how much what was there. Like, we're talking about, like, an incredible nerf that is probably not happening. Get those hot. What do you need? 
Yeah, where are we at actually with our character here? Level 29, about to get a second thing. Okay, okay. Have we done the... I think we've killed zero, right? So we have Adamov unlocked? Yes. Not that good Hemomancy up. Of this free, free, free. Yo, domination is something we don't want to run, right? So let's remove this F. Dude, it's actually such a good power for Sorks, right? Because you freeze so easily. Or you stun, and I can't run it. Oof. Big oof. And this is not it. All right. So we have something with divinity, so there's something that needs a lot of divinity here. Anticipation. Oh, I guess it's 20% CDR. What do we do? What's the verbals in 4 minutes? That's 5 minutes of whispers. Sixteen point five K blood. Yeah, I've, I've still, I don't know. I've been doing so many whisperers and leveling characters and stuff. It's kind of funny because I don't even farm this uh, blood harvest event. I've never really found this blood harvest event, and I still have like so much. It's pretty hilarious. Playing with a controller. Nope. Last time I played a controller game was Vampire Survivors. Actually, where's my controller? I'm not sure if I have it here. I hope I do. But when I ever play Vampire Survivors, I actually saw it on Steam earlier. Because I had Steam open from PoE Blasting. I was like, huh, update queued for Vampire Survivors. Maybe I should play it sometime. So you can tell me it's kind of awful right now. Yeah, Vampire Survivors is fun. I agree. Ah, uh, what can we do? Armor feels great on controller. Yeah, I saw her here. But I just don't like playing with controller. You know, I've never done it. I never owned a console. You know, I'm not I'm not made for that really. <laughs> and I don't think I'm gonna start now. How's that harvest thing? We got a barb for ARZ. I made the uh, Kratos barb and the uh, double swing barb for ARZ. If you wanna play those. But most people just play Hoda, so I didn't make a Hoda with it.
wouldn't have made it without you. Uh, the normal whistles will disappear now, but it's fine. I don't know what to put as my enchant slot there, by the way. Hmm. Any recommendation for TB? AOZ push, you're stuck on all 9. Uh, I tweaked the setup a little bit. After the stream, I'm gonna go and actually update the Maxwell guides. I was playing with Shadow Step instead of Concealment. I mean, it was not a major change, but it did make it a bit faster and smoother. You should not get stuck at level 9. I was going all the way up to like 14, 15 with it as well. I didn't actually clear, I think, those tiers, but it's most definitely doable with TBA. But it's just like, you know, practice, I guess. Uh, to maybe try to use the Lucky Hit Elixirs, they're pretty good. Unless you need to run like Iron Skin or something for the survival. And close and lots of life, yeah. Uh oh. Let's realize you're playing a Sork now and there's like more. Aspects and stuff. Actually, a huge ever living here. Happy Where's the ring? But I have no idea what I should use. Ice plates. Kind of strange. It's a good single target damage aspect to swap in when you don't need this pen shot to split. Uh, if you want to do like an either swap, you mean at the boss? Um, well, inner calm, I guess. Inner calm or elements might be the two best options there. Oh, I just realized for the first time when you have unstable currents active, it's like... You know, glow. Cool. Welcome to Sork. <laughs> I'm not planning to play ball lightning though. Let's see how this will go. We knew if it's the fate will be so popular finally. Yeah, it does seem to have enough merit to actually be used after all. I was usually not really like a fan of the item. But it does work. The change they made to like this damage proc was actually sound useful, at least on this poison build, for example, because of the, you know, there's like a bug where poison double dips on percent damage. 
So we actually kind of get a bunch of extra damage there. Plus the proc itself being like, you know, that's really strong. I mean, for non-core skill builds, it's actually a, a good item, I'd say. So some domain tunnels here, yeah, just as well as yeah, shines. And it's been so long since I uh that was another character. Feels strange. Oh man, we actually had to palm this uh, under the claim as well as we're gonna get uh, a cursed touch. And he might want to have a cursed touch, I guess. Will be easy to grind a glyph first on all of us? Yes, of course. But the thing is, you don't really get much out of it. And it's really invest a lot of hours to level up the glyph. It goes very slow. I mean, it's better now, I guess. If you can farm like at least tier 7s really quickly. Smothers Embrace good? Nope. What variant do I use for PvP? I, <laughs> I've not done any PvP really with the rogue. That reminds me, I still need to get my PvP uh, season journey thing. With the necro somehow, I'm not sure how. Yeah, hardcore PvP is not happening. There's no people. Apparently some people try to snipe me sometimes. But they never met me. Main domain tunnel farm as a sock is just the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> These chain reactions, dude. Look how fast this is. And Bolin's arc is pretty crazy. Well, it's crazy as the Hold of Ups, though, to be fair. And Hold of Ups are not even bugged. It's just ridiculous. It was like half a level here in like a minute. Patch was yesterday, yeah. Huh? I just didn't play it today. And I guess a lot of other people also hadn't seen the patch yet, so. I hadn't tried it at all yet so far. But it turns out, pretty good patch. They just need to keep going. Thanks, TD. <laughs> we have one point again. We 
Ich wie du das mit Mana kostet, ja. Ja. Challenge Schein would actually be pretty sick for uh, extra crit chance or elemental aspects. Yeah, there's no command for the T15, it just happened like earlier. Not sure if anyone clipped it or highlighted it. Would be cool to have some items that drop in AOZ that could only work in there. Oh, it would be very difficult to design such items, I think. It would be an interesting concept, but I think it should be... It should be not an AOZ. I think it should be like maybe something... I don't know, maybe it could make it an AOZ. Or like, you know, such a content. But I feel like the AOZ does the one thing pretty good, which is just like, you know, measuring how far your build can get, kind of. I mean, okay, it's likely gonna make adjustments around it and stuff, but realistically, it's, it's kind of an like interesting, like, you know, build contest, I guess. And if you add, like, these kind of things to it, it doesn't do that anymore, but it has, like, another purpose, which is just, like, giving you cool, interesting stuff. The problem is that I think that it's gonna be, like, very annoying to actually, like, deal with that in practice. If you have external items that work in there, but then you, like, come out and you have to, like, change your items again. Like, you know, all that bullshit, that sounds really annoying. There's the resistances, and, you know, these kind of problems as well. Like, if anything, it should be, like, something like, you know, imagine, like, the vampire powers, but only for AOZ. That could be something, you know. Like, you can, like, you know, ramp them up, and you can select a few power-ups that you have in there, or something like that. That would be more interesting, probably, and more, uh, you know, in line with like using your character anywhere. How come new Sork? I haven't played a Sork yet this season. I'm just like chilling now before I go offline at some point. <laughs> I've done my work for the day. What basic and core I'm using, this is uh, Arc Lash and Charge Bolts. Way too dank, yes. <laughs> Pretty wild here. It's like every minute is like half a level. What do you mean of tier 15? Well, if you haven't been paying attention before lately, there's a new in-game system called Avatar of Zero. That uh, it's like pretty high end, has 25 tiers. And this match should be the tier 15. Which is probably one of the highest rogue clays, at the very least for hardcore, I think. I should go back and try a 14 again with the setup I have. I wonder if it's like so much noticeably easier.
My group is uh, 14 right now. Yeah, I mean, Aroko is not going to be the highest on hardcore overall. Bob success, you know. But, yeah, I think it's definitely pretty nice. Crazy man, Sorg is flying in his levels. I think those ice plates are pretty useless though. They don't have here. I didn't rip. I just did my work for the day, I'm chilling a bit. I've been like try harding for eight hours. So <laughs> if I only played it for a bit when it came out and didn't find it fun. Uh, if you start at level 50, then that's a bit early. The game has gotten a lot better since it came out. Is it possible to complete tier 25? No, it's not. Let's try to get some crackling energy, perhaps. But for us, we need crits, so I don't know. <laughs> we started aspect worked at full health. I would make it really ridiculously old powered actually. We have to like mega nerf it if that was the case. But yeah, I personally don't really like started aspect. I guess I guess it's like a hardcore thing though. Like I like to make my character single tanky and I don't like to like even drop any kind of life. All of the other characters are dead, man. All the rogues, all the barbs, the necro, even the necro is dead, man.
What damage does Coin scale off of? I think it scales with the monster level and all of your basic damage multipliers. I'm not sure if it scales off your weapon though. I guess we can try at some point. Actually, before I do all this bullshit, can I just like get like Chain Lighting and Shound or something? Get some Crackle in there. Let's try this. See how that feels. That's also only on crit, right? And here's Crackle. Feels better. I think that this ice plate was doing nothing. Not surprisingly. Now we have crackle. Yeah, the ghost walker, and then we can start flying. We have ghost walker. Get slaughter, okay. I've been running endless mana bloodlands but this is Black River Sack Ring. Yeah, I've been playing Bloodlands and I don't think you need Black River. So if you have Litter's Wall, you have lucky hit chance to restore resource. And you can also get that mod on Glove. You can have a Glove that has like attack speed, crit, bloodlands, and restore resource. And even without that Glove mod, it was feeling okay just from the little wall. And then once you have the Glove mod, you're kind of fine. And I was actually able to run without Tibbot's Will. Like, if you, you can do Tibbot's Will and it solves all your resource issues with Metamorph. But even without that, I was able to run the Blood Moon Reaches for the 70% extra power power damage. Oh, here is uh, Bloodseekers, by the way. Let's go. It's kind of funny to find Bloodseekers, I'm not like turbo one-shotting you. But it's too tanky, man. Are they following me, by the way? They follow me, right? It was like, try to kill them with fire enchant. I wonder if like regular Bloodseekers can still spawn with Vampiric, just out of curiosity. Glass Cannon? Yes. Set across the whole game, no suppressor? No, suppressor still exists. Oh, you mean like, okay, so the only Bloodseekers can, okay. Like, all Bloodseekers cannot spawn with it, I guess. Yeah, fine, I guess. There's a focus. Do you, I think I want to use a staff though instead of focus. And I explicitly stated that throughout the entire game, okay. 450 DPS. Meteorites fall around. How, how is Meteor actually? If this burned for 460 damage.
No, oh, hey, Nate. It's not Superman. Got the glyph in your saucer at 100 and in rogue level 65 if you don't have it. Why is that? Because it's per character. The glyph is per character. So you don't you don't get to keep it on like you know swapping your build. Let's try this again. That's really bad. I agree. I mean, they want to do this like the insane grind of the glyph, and then he can't use any other characters. It really demotivates me to like you know try other classes and stuff right now in the avatar. On the other hand, I mean, I just don't really level up the glyph at all. That's fine. I just like level what I get basically from randomly blasting and pushing, but yeah, my glyph will not really progress anymore from here on. the implant build and the equipment loadouts. Yeah, I wouldn't actually be surprised to see that coming in like season 4 or season 5 of loadouts. Like if they do like this codex rework, like they said they're gonna do like a codex rework, right, and everything goes into the codex eventually, all the aspects and stuff, and once you have that, I think the, the way is paved for like loadouts. Like if extracting legendary aspects is not no longer a thing, and like the cost that comes with like switching items and aspects, it's just like removed from the game. But they can easily just do loadouts. Right? So, I guess at the very latest, like the season 5, you're gonna get loadouts. That'd be cool. If basically everything, be like, if basically everything in a slot becomes kind of like a kind of cube power more than an actual item, right? Oh, they're not ripped now. Never mind. Yeah, by the way, if I rip on this sock, that doesn't count as 50 subs. I just realized. That was obviously only an abattoir. <laughs> just saying. Oh, no! Scaff. <laughs> <laughs> I am running without elixir right now, though. So. Can we leveling Sork? Because it's Omega Fun right now. T15 is done. T16 tomorrow, I guess. Well, if I can do a 16, that would be sick, actually. 16 on Hardcore Rogue, man. Doable, doable. I love that Ian follows me and comments on my Twitter posts. Yeah, he's... <laughs> very enjoyable, actually. He's like blasting Avatar and like, you know, doing some comments. I need to watch his stream. He was streaming apparently the other day, right? I haven't watched it, actually. I want to see, like, you know, how he's doing. the classes of Avatar. Well, Barb wins, Zork close behind, then there's a bit of a gap, then come Rogue and Necro, and then there's another gap, then comes Druid. You got a T4 on Eternal with Druid. Is he on Eternal? 
Is Abattoir an Eternal? I thought it's only a seasonal thing. You must be playing seasonal, I think. I also thought he's still on Eternal, but Avatar is not on Eternal, is it? Oh, level 40. Dude, levels are flying here, it's crazy. I started at 29, right? Feels like I just spent like no time on this. Just like half an hour casually <laughs> running around with a Zork. We like almost ready for Nightmare. Yeah, I also initially thought that uh, he played Eternal, but I guess he made a Season 2 character at some point. Druid again. Seems like if he likes Druid. And if you want to have fun leveling up, you just make a Zork and run down my tunnels. Just like insane, everything's boom. <laughs> But a good unique bow for rapid fire. Uh, no. Why Sork? Because I want to play charge bolts. This still, mate, this is still the first pot I'm running right now, right? It says like five minutes left or something. Insane. Do where to put all these points? Let's do this. And it would be nice if there was like some way to kind of like pick up this crackling energy with like a utility aspect or something, you know, make it easier. Oh, it's, I'll go for that for sure, man. Looks like resourcefulness. That's 50 max on. be kind of useful actually. Should we spend wearing all balls on normal levels? I would not do it until, unless you really want to get a specific aspect. Or you really need an upgrade in a certain slot. If you are full, I would say just buy some keys at least. The uh, whispering keys. Yo, hello and see you, man. I'm also going soon, actually. It's gonna get my sword like if like another one or two doubles or something, so we're like, kind of ready for nightmare.
Fuzzy fire explosion. Fire ball enchant. Level 15. It's usually always what you go for on a sword, just level 15, fire ball enchant, and it just blows up everything. At least for the early levels, to be nice. Good plans, capstone. Yeah, I can probably go for capstone. I'm gonna do it next time I log in on a sock, I think. I'm not in the mood right now to get a capstone. Just doing like another few rounds here, and that's it for the night, I think. Just trying to kind of chill out now after the push on Rogue. <laughs> It's gonna be so weird getting like cursed shrines again, man. When I go click on shrines, regular dungeons instead of avatar. You missed the druid. Alright, maybe we're gonna level second druid later in the season. We'll see. I'll be out to do another druid, I think. If I don't feel like doing more abattoir. I played a lot of Sorks now already, and Necros now as well. Druid is still like my definitely by far least played class. Do you have any issues with latency rises in AOZ in tier 15 plus? Yeah, when I, mean, I used Death Trap, I started lagging out. It's kind of dangerous, so I didn't continue that. Without it, I mean, sometimes I get some slight lags when there's like large density, but it's not too bad on pen shot. It's only a problem for ball lightning, I think, for the most part. I need to try. So when I have slaughter aspects, uh, four. Seems like I lose my slaughter aspect even when I have flame shield up. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, 30. Sort of a press barrier. Oh, it seems like barrier works. Okay. You can protect your slaughter with barrier. I guess flame shield should also work then. Oh, that's cool. Just want to confirm that. This isn't so really bad, actually. Yeah. Well, 77 is the best way to boost your damage for endgame. Oh, you start leveling Nightmare Legends. In, in Nightmare Legends, I level your glyphs. 
Cliffs are kind of important, you want to max them out. And then on the way there you get a bunch of gear. But you can also start farming materials for uh, Duriel and then do Duriel rotations. Duriel drops a bunch of good uniques. Especially Tibot's Will, there's something full of classes, but there's others as well. Try to get like, all these uniques for your build, basically. Also from other builds, uh, from, from other bosses, I mean. And um, yeah, there you go, I guess. I think I'm gonna do last one now, I guess. Would have the double swing bar by OZ to do a new patch. Uh, I've done it already. Up the um, double swing guide. Or like the uh, planner. And also, we call it a build guide for it. Which I think is not out yet, but soon on YouTube. But the planner is updated, you can check it. I didn't change that much, honestly. I just changed the skills a little bit. I have like a challenging shout and iron skin and. I think I put back Anemia as well. So we're pretty much ready for Nightmare, I think, at this point. I have 8% armor on this character. What? I've never seen a one digit number. Members of Monaco selection. That's how that's done. I wonder how much it actually changes my my armor now. Fourteen percent damage reduction. This thing has plus five hundred armor. That should be useful. And also some risks. This arm is also very outdated.
Mario mm, 36 for the armor instead of 8%. It's actually uh, something noticeable. We're also getting some res. can put like one cold, one poison, one shadow. Then you'll be ready for a nightmare, I guess, tomorrow. I wonder if Alan has been in here and talked ever. Good question. I don't know. If you would like go on Twitch, perhaps. <laughs> It'll be funny. Maybe in disguise. Maybe he's here right now. Who knows? Uh, I don't know what to put in my weapons, actually. Like... Hmm. No, I can't do overpower, I can't do dots. I can't do any of those crit stuff. Yeah, crit with vulnerable, I don't have vulnerable. I don't use basic skill. I don't use ultimate damage. And I have barriers. Dude, I literally have like, nothing to put in my weapon. I guess the next one will be Sapphire. Crit against crowd control. Dude, I'm not crowd controlling. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't have any gems that fit my weapon, dude. What the hell? Okay. Made damage in Satellus gem. Yes, man. I wonder if they're gonna do a gem rework actually. When they do like the itemization rework, I guess they do. It's definitely needed, man. This is scuffed. <laughs> if anything, I was gonna put Topaz now for like the one time I'm gonna press my left click at some point, I guess. Okay, how's this here? I need one and one to have everything. Okay. Anyway, we're gonna go. Opens our steam, everyone. We go to the capstone next time, and I'll do this. As many fine pieces, rare and be. Huge, thirty-eight percent armor. Is this video stack? They're actually gonna have something like 50, 60 percent. Insane. Yeah, we know it's good night. Good night, YouTube. Hope you enjoyed it. Light keep you. And let's face someone.